so par or should i say bone saw <laughs> welcome into this chapter of one piece <laughs> welcome in guys uh to one piece chapter 11 12 we have the legendary par vision here again today uh you know he's here every week believe it or not uh but yeah we're here yep. to talk about one piece and mm -hmm, uh mm -hmm. before we get into it par how was your day yeah. it was uh the so far so good you know it is 420 i made some promises yesterday on stream and uh delivering on them you know yeah okay oh, you know what i forgot it's 420 yeah. um so since it is the legendary 420 i will take a nice sip of coffee yep 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 i like the v oh thank you yeah yeah for the last name the initial yeah. the middle name by youtube I, I love v's i don't know why dude yeah that's why we collab because I got the vision, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got the will of cool. V, bro. The you will know of V. Is. As long as it's not two V's, no, none of no will of VB, you know. Just the oh, will I was of gonna v. say like two V's. I was like, yeah, yeah, VB. Yeah, oh, god damn it! I the hate only that girl. Two, the only two V's I accept are the double V's, the W, you know. Yeah, <laughs> I remember. Um, what's it called? Like, the only reason I used to like VB is because I used to think she was kind of cute as a kid. Uh -huh. But, like, the more I grew up, the more I realized how annoying she was. And I was like, yeah, it's not worth it. Yeah, yeah. So, it's, it's really so when you it. when you were younger and you Luffy punched Vivi, were you upset or did you understand? Like, No, I understand. She, she was annoying. Ah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Even yeah, as yeah. a kid, I was like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Fair enough, Luffy. I'd punch her too. Ah! <laughs> you know, yeah, I was ready. <laughs> I, I always laugh. Uh. I don't even, sometimes I don't even see the context of it. I just see that GIF online and... Like sometimes I look at how someone uses it, and it just never fails to make me laugh a little bit. Yeah, <laughs> like, Luffy punching VV is great. No, oh, yeah, yeah. And then I look at the context, and sometimes like, oh, you misused this one. But like, I think Brago retweeted something and used that GIF, and I was dying laughing. <laughs> like, I forget what he was talking about. I think it was a basketball. The context of uh, Luffy punching VV, it was because VV thought she was alone, right? She was like, "How am I gonna fix this? What do I do here?" Just she was like going on and on about that, right? Yeah, it was also Luffy was like, you have to accept like with the responsibility of that you're taking and you want to do a revolution, uh, you're accepting war. And if you accept war, people have to die. And that's what mm, the people yeah, who yeah, yeah. she was worried about, um, like not she was like worried about them dying. She, Luffy is basically like they they know what they signed up for. You don't like you, do you yeah. get and then boom slap him in the face <laughs> it's good it's a good punch a good punch yeah yeah and i think i think like the underlying tone is like more people will die if they don't have the war which was like the underlying thing which also like reflects on wano and stuff which is why i like i i like when um we, it, like we talked about marine fort a few weeks back but like all the war arcs um something feels nice at least in this series you get the world aspect yeah and like growingly so like when we got wano we got like the admiral's perspective on like what's happening there like should we go should we not like garb other people and like even at the very beginning with with one piece like um talking about like all those perspectives is as trivial and and like um like oda didn't do it as much as he does now but back then it was it was kind Dude, of back a, then i used to look forward to it man at the end of yeah. every arc oh you get reactions from around the world bro mm -hmm, mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. we haven't really gotten yeah. that here in the final saga i mean we have by by like by switching perspectives but we haven't actually yeah. gotten like you know makino's reaction to blah 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 or you know iceberg's yeah. reaction to loopy's bounty or anything or even like we're random marines to. talking about them yeah we're about to that's We're the hard to. aspect of this chapter, you know? Yeah, yeah. And speaking <laughs> of hard aspects, dude, Yamato in the cover page, man. That's what I'm talking about. Uh, so, Kinemon is giving her some money. And apparently, the letter says parting gift. Yeah. So I was confused at first, hmm. and I think I'm still confused. But yeah. I think I was wrong the first time. Okay, wait, wait. Mean. What did you What did you say? So the first time when it, like the way the translation reads, it says, consider this parting gift payment for a favor I must ask of you. And so I I thought if Kinemon's giving a parting gift, I thought he was parting and he had a favor as he left. Oh. Like, you know, this is compensation because I'm leaving. Like, you know, back in those times, if you left your like, you know, like your thing, you don't get a severance package, you know. But back then you had to pay like, OK, I'm leaving. So like this is like my apologies almost right for whatever yeah. so that's what i thought 
But then I was like, wait, the title of it's the Oni Child Yamato and the Holy Inari Shrine Pilgrimage, which is she, if she's making a pilgrimage, that means she's leaving. And I guess Kinemon is giving her a parting gift payment for her pilgrimage. And then while she's on the pilgrimage, I'm assuming Kinemon also has a favor that he's going to ask of Yamato. And in compensation for that favor, here's the parting gift, you know? Yeah. Yeah think that's the more yeah, yeah yeah that's the conclusion i came to but now i'm just wondering why like why go to the inari shrine right like maybe yeah. he wants yamato to clean it up maybe there's beast pirates there yeah because it hasn't been like well, the inari shrine is what exactly we don't know <laughs> we literally don't know we've never seen the inari shrine i think there was a week where me and you tried to look it up and we couldn't mm. find anything about it so Probably. it's actually like an untouched part of Wano that we haven't seen yet, which um, yeah, that's kind of why I lean towards the fact that maybe Beast Pirate Remnants are there. Like maybe mm. we'll see some of the Toby Ropo because we saw like what King, Queen and Baba Nuki at Udon Prison. Like we don't know where yeah. the rest of those guys are. So there is a chance that they could be stationed at a Nari Shrine, just, you know, recouping, you know, gathering up their strength before they leave again. And then Kinemon's like, hey, can you get rid of them? And then Yamato's mm. like, love to. I don't know. What if, what if this is the original name of Onigashima? No. <laughs> yeah, right. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. I was, you know, because we don't know the name and maybe. Yeah, we don't know the name, like, but it, but the thing is, I thought out about it. Picture. But it's like they sunk Onigashima though. Like if it was Onigashima and they're like, hey, go visit Onigashima, it's like, well, yeah, do it in water. Yeah, well, yeah. you saw who threw it in water, though. Like, how, how did that happen, right? Like, did yeah, Yamato do I was it? Did Momonosuke that, do like, it? I don't, I what don't know. What a weird... Because that was the first image of this series, right? It was the underwater... Yeah, sinking yeah, Onigashima. Yeah. So then it's like, wait, how, why did we skip the part of how they did it? I'm confused because, like... is Maybe it's the same thing as the Thousand Sunny with Brooke. Like, Yamato just ran it and someone just pushed it along ice. Because Yamato has that ability. And, like, they just... Whoosh, yeah, I could see up. that. That'd, but I mean, even then, like, another thing about Onigashima that I actually, I think is just dumb. I, you know, Wano, not not the brightest thinkers over there, but they literally just pushed Onigashima down to the ancient city. Yeah. So if they ever break the border, Onigashima's still going to be there. Yeah, they should have, like, if in my scenario, Yamato should have kept going with the ice onto the ocean and kept pushing it over. Yeah. Which, you know... From a like a engineering standpoint, that's not working because the ice would not be. It would just break. She would have to. She would have to goon all over that ice, bro, for like weeks. Like Aokiji would need to help at that point, right? Yeah, we need like an ice age over there. Yeah, but I, I mean, on the, the easier one would just be Momonosuke, you know, just lifting it and dropping it. I mean, he can't lift. I mean, maybe in like the month or weeks. That's how long has it been? Like a week. I think it's been since a month. A month? Like since oh, the straw oh, hats oh, left? A month since Onigashima, I think, right? Yeah. Because they've been chilled for like a week straight. How and then a week after the until they got to Egghead? Maybe. Okay, but like the reason why I'm saying since Luffy left is because we saw Momo not able to fly by the end of it. He just ran across the country, remember? Oh, like when they were departing? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, he wasn't able to, like, fly, so instead he just sprinted as a dragon. Well, was... it's not like he couldn't fly. He said he was scared. Oh. Yeah. I guess you're right. But even then, like, during Onigashima, he was controlling the clouds by the end. He was, like, he was still, like, doing it manually, but he was still doing it, though. He couldn't float it, though. I thought it was that he it was just sinking. It was just falling. No, oh, no, no, no. He he actually, um, what's it called? He started, like, tugging it on his own. Like, all the flame clouds became his, so he kind of was floating it. Yeah. And then even then, like, huh. even if we want to say that at the time he couldn't do it, like, yeah. two weeks, I mean, with this new body, with training Dang, from somebody who knows the Seiryu model, like, I, I think Momo yeah, could do it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and Momo had a hot... Oh, Momo fought an admiral, too, since and, then. And plus, like, when you think about it, like, that was Momo under duress, right? That, that was Momo yeah. day one, day two of, of, you know, becoming this adult. Yeah, you know, give, give Momonosuke some time. Yeah, he could definitely do it. Momo is also technically like a prodigy because he learned oh, very from much. Zoro and Odin, has Odin's blood, 
Kinemon, one of the, you know, yeah, we meme on him, but technically he's one of the top swordsmen in Wano back then and now. So it's like, he's, you know, Momo, Momo had, uh, you know, quite the, quite the resume on his. Oh, his yeah. Back. And yeah, now he has what, eight. like all the scabbards training him? Like yeah, you have what? The, the, the Minx, yeah, the scabbards, Yamato. Oh my God. This dude, yeah, Momonosuke yeah. is going to be a monster. Like, if there's ever a One Piece 2 or a Two Piece, yeah. Momonosuke would be like a, a Yonko or like world power. Yeah, yeah. And and again, like, it's not just in a bubble. He also demonstrated it against an admiral. How many people can say that? That's kind of it's kind of crazy. So, you know, actually, yeah, I, I agree. Momo probably just lifted up solo dolo. And he's you know a, what, he's dude? A Giga Chad now. Like, the fact that he's only eight years old mentally, that, that might work to his advantage after a while. Do you think Momo be like the kid already? Of, uh, Yonko. Is Momo already stronger than his, like, most of the scabbards? Do you think Kinemon can beat him? No. Dang. I mean, yes, Momonosuke doesn't have hockey, but, I mean, that body plus the, the fruit, like, I, I, I think he's stronger than the scabbards, That's to be so honest. so wild to think about that Momo is stronger. Like, like, I know a lot of people, like, yeah, obviously his dragon form, but, like, also his he's huge now. Like, he is, he is, like, three Zoros tall now. Yeah, like, well, like Zoro, like, like hit him on the chest and he's like, dang, I want to fight this guy. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, he's, yeah. he's just innately strong. Yeah. And then so you then add into the, like, like, the fact that he's a kid, so he kind of just kind of throws things to the wall. Like, I, I feel like he is just powerful. Is So Momo is Toby Ropo level. Yeah oh shit that's kind of cracked yeah like he i mean he, i i'd say beyond toby ropo level but yeah yeah it's just it like i guess i'm just hard to wrap your mind around because we had momo as a kid for like 10 years and then like he's this dinky like in your mind narratively he's always a detriment right no offense to momo but like he's a kid right and then now it's like wait hold on momo's in the equation now that kind of means something this and is then, like He's when you think about it, commander. you made, like, the whole thing was like, oh, Kobe, you know, 40 days, Kobe became a monster. He has hockey True. now, he glowed up. Dude, Momonosuke in, in two weeks? I don't know. I don't want to see what's happening with this guy. Like, True. Ryuo, the land of Ryuo, right? Yeah, like, yeah. All of his mentors have Ryuo. Yamato has advanced, con bro, he ha honestly, like, I'm not going to lie. This might sound bad, but if I had to choose between training with Rayleigh, and training with all the scabbards in Yamato, I might, I might, I might pick Wano, dude. I'm not gonna lie, I don't know. Well, but but like, then again, like I was never like, a big Rayleigh fan, so you know. No, no, but here's another bias. Choice. What's up, Kobe or Momo? You have both of them in front of you. Which one are you training? Uh, I like Kobe more. You like? Oh, okay. I, I, I like both. Okay. I feel like I'm gonna really like Momonosuke too in the future, but uh -huh. right now, I, I like Kobe's determination. Yeah. So yeah. E Wait, even so though like, my morals don't line up with Kobe's, I I really like Kobe. Kobe's seventeen now, right? Kobe, yeah, he's seventeen. Yeah. And then technically, Momo was twenty. I was just thinking, like, Kobe, like we always talk about, like, end this end the series, uh, Kobe, right? But I was also just thinking about it, like, yo, Momo versus Kobe right now would be crazy. Momo versus Kobe. Yeah. Like. That might be insane, like Kobe fighting a dragon and like he would be able to box it. It would be like a good exhibition match, you know? Yeah. Because like who would, would be win? Like, I feel like it'd be extreme diff because like even though I think Momonosuke is outright stronger, I think yeah. Kobe's just like Luffy where he wouldn't go down yeah, easily. Yeah, like yeah. you could knock him down, you could overpower him, but I think Kobe's going to keep on getting up until you bash his brains in. Yeah, now I want to see what Odin said if he ever met Garp. Damn. Because that's probably what, like, right? Because at the end of the series, Kobe's going to be higher. I feel like we feel that way. But, like, then in that regard, it'd be Odin to Garp. And we've actually never seen that interaction. But they surely interacted, right? Oh, yeah. Surely, right? Yeah. Oh, like, Garp probably knows Odin. Wait, I never even thought about that. That's so cool. Yeah. Because, huh. like, you know, Garp one minute chasing Roger... He's probably chasing Whitebeard too. Yeah, he he probably ran into Odin. No way like, he did. Like the and way that was Garp he in his was... prime, dude. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like the way uh, Garp was reading in God Valley. Like it, he was literally like a fanboy, kind of a Roger. The moment Sengoku said, "Wait, why didn't you tell me before?" And oh he yeah, like... he's like a Roger historian, huh? Like you, you yeah. think he has like all the memorabilia? <laughs> well, like oh, you know how crazy. Roger... 
Roger was reading the story, like Whitebeard, it's like Whitebeard and a samurai. And you saw the newspaper and he's like, ha ha, that land of samurai, huh? I want one of those or something like that. He says some shit like that, I think. And you like know, chapter 965. So he, Roger, well, Garp probably read uh-huh. about Odin in the same way. Yeah, I was going to say like Roger's hat, you know, like the, the really like furly hat that he has after he becomes pirate. Yeah, game. yeah. Like, I wonder where that went, dude. Do you think Garp has it just like hanged up in his room? And then he has like dude. Odin's like loincloth. He has a Rayleigh's okay, eyeball. He's not a I, I don't killer. know. He's not a serial killer. <laughs> he has trophies. No, no. Like, Wait, also, like... Rayleigh has both eyes. Sorry, sorry. I, I, I'm just remembering the image where Rayleigh's crying and he has his eyes closed. So I just thought yeah, he has he a missing eye for some reason. Um, But Rayleigh has a scar in his eye, doesn't he? Just yeah, something yeah, like yeah, that? Yeah, he does. He oh, does, how about this? I'm, he has he Rayleigh's have... flesh. <laughs> yes and, and then gabon oh imagine like if there's like an you know how like garp was a, a teacher in school uh-huh yeah imagine garp teaches science and then he has like one of those skeletons in the back and he's like guys this is the, the corpse of scopper gabon <laughs> <laughs> and then and then we, we're all wondering learn? where he's at you know like oh scopper's coming scopper's coming it's it's like a nail or dragon you know scopper's coming in the next arc and then Sorry, we're gonna find out scopper's just dead he's just hanged you- up in the classroom when they so cool. donate your body to science and they have a skeleton, it's not there to be like, look at this old dead person. It's like, no, 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 no. It would be like a fun reasons. fact, you know, like, oh, like we're going to use this to, you know, to study the anatomy of the human body. I'm just but also, guys, a... this is Scopper Gavin, let me tell you. I'm just great. imagining a school, like, you know, having a skeleton and buying it for the express person purpose of being like, this is Christopher Columbus. Like, no other reason. Like, no, not no, no, for no, science but hear me out. He's teaching Marines though, like yo, like this is a bad pirate. Don't be a pirate. So, you know what I mean? This is a bad skeleton. <laughs> Look, yeah, I gotta like, remember this. Yeah, 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 yeah. There's a reason why he's dead. You know what I mean? Like that, that would work, dude. If, yeah, if you I was don't a young end Marine, up like him. if I was a young Marine, I'd be so. In- Tell me, you wouldn't be inspired by that, right? Like your teacher walks up, and then he's like, "This is an uneducated bozo. Always go to school." Would would that not like inspire you to do well in in class? I think it would. I think it would. <laughs> if we were Marines, well, uh, th- that was like real world scenario, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like if we just walked in on our first day and it's like, haha, this okay, this well, kid. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like imagine this, right? Imagine you're taking a drug safety class, and then the uh-huh. teacher brings in one of those skeletons, and he's like, "Yes, this is the skeleton of a heroin addict because they're dead." Okay, but that's different. That's actually you could learn maybe. So- I don't know if heroin affects your bones like that, but like you could <laughs> learn something. They have, they have- <laughs> Yeah, here it affects the bones. The, the the skeletal structure is just like yellow or something now. Yeah, like when they show the cigarettes That's funny. Stuff, damage, they show you the pictures of the lungs, not someone's skeleton. Like, this guy smoked. Don't be like him. <laughs> like, don't don't uh, be like this guy. <laughs> oh, man. Oh Speaking of which, you know, th- there was a really funny comment I got the other day. Mm-hmm. So me and Dax Sake did like a two-hour video about like Logia Awakenings. Ooh, and we were, ooh, yeah, and then yeah. we brought up Smoker. And, you know, Smoker and Akainu were in the same conversation because, you know, they both smoke. They both have cigars. And I was like, I was wondering who the stronger Smoker was. And I was like, it's probably Mm -hmm. Smoker because he has two cigars. And then somebody in the comment section said, uh, I can't watch this. Who's the best Smoker? I had to stop right there. I was like, (laughs) Mm -hmm. I was like, and then now I'm I'm thinking about it. Like, yo, we're talking about heroin users, (laughs) dead skeletons. (laughs) It's like, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know how we got That's so funny. I don't know how we got to that part, but yeah a kind of is probably more smoker like the stronger smoker yeah you he think smokes so more intensely but he only has one cigar at a time you like like when you smoke if you light it up too much right you can scorch and i bet i don't think smoker can handle it like that you know because it I turns into a black fire. If he get oh, maybe his awakening is black smog. Like it's dark smoke. Mm. Yeah, it's more dense. Oh, but then wouldn't he be wouldn't he be Karasu then? Yeah, I was gonna say it'd be like Karasu though. Or I feel yeah, like there'd even just be like a smog smog fruit. Dude, Smoker's so, like in a box. Like as like he was the first Logia. He's so free form, whatever. But like Oda put Karasu here. Like he's not even fire. Ace is there. And then he's not like hotter. The kind who's there. It's like on all fronts, he's just like boxed in on just smoke. And like, I don't even think, like someone said, 
And one of my things is like, oh, what if his awakening is the Kumo Kumo, which I would have loved, right? Like the, I think his is the Muko Muko or whatever, like smoke. Yeah. But Kumo Kumo is flipping the letters. That's the clouds. But like the clouds, smokes and clouds are not the same thing. And clouds are water. So it's like, uh, then we would just be giving Smoker the most broken devil fruit in all of One Piece at that point. But I doubt that it'll be a cloud, cloud fruit. That would be, I feel like kind of groundbreaking. It'd be a good Maybe, Logia. Cloud, but cloud is just like water, though, you know, because then they'd be like the umi umi, you know. Well, yeah, to a lesser extent, though. Yeah, but we don't have any water Logi. We don't have any water devil fruits. Yeah, I guess so. The, the closest thing is huh. Monshuri's tears. Monshuri's tears. Oh, the, isn't that the what is it like the heal heal fruit or something yeah yeah like she yeah. can spawn water from her hands she doesn't have to cry she can just make it so that's like the closest thing we have to like what if it's water artificial water hers no no no. like like if there was a like a cloud cloud fruit what if the water oh. that inhabited the cloud was artificial see like i see the grounds of having one because then all you would need to do is tie the story to dance powder kid suffered in dance powder he dreamed of clouds and boom we made a devil fruit out of that dream right like that's so easy but that's like the that, i think that's why oda has centralized like that water stuff i'm it, like in a lot of arcs is interesting water facts that he throws in but um yeah, dance powder, Wano having all that fresh water. It's it's kind of interesting, so, but I oh, doubt there's gonna be a straight up water fruit. Another reason I brought up the the smoking thing too is because I, I I came up with the the kookiest theory on the spot, and I'm not I'm never uh -huh. gonna make a video on it. But what I do you like think those? about the thriller bark monsters or the Florian Triangle monsters being giant living cigars? Okay, okay. I, um, Sentient uh, cigars with eyes. Okay, okay. And and where, where are we going with these cigars? Huh? Uh, nowhere, really. I um, my, my, my thought is that maybe they're on fire, and that's what's creating the Florian Triangle. Okay, they're just if, producing if, infinite smoke. Okay, in the scope of the theory, right? So if we don't know where we're going, you could, you could make it a theory about maybe where it came from. Where did the cigars come from? The legendary smoker that was a part of the Joy Boy crew. Oh, see now you're getting you're getting legs yeah. in theory. Okay, yeah, okay, so legs. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So now, yeah, okay, you know sentient cigars from the previous smoker. Okay, people like yep. smoker. So now you got you got a demographic to for this. Oh, oh like, another oh reason God. why I brought this up too. But another reason why it ties to smoker and a kainu is because a kainu, current fleet admiral, he has one cigar. I think that smoker will become the next fleet admiral. He has two cigars. The Thriller Bark Monsters, there's three of them, so three cigars. Oh, and that signifies the yeah. her predecessor who is yeah. better than both. Oh, yeah, it's, it's, okay, uh, see? Like I said, That's I'm never going to make a leg. video on this because it's so absurd, but Hold on. I think it's a really funny thought. You just need one more leg to make a theory, and four, then you got something that can walk. But right now, you got two. It's not quite walking yet. You know? Yeah, like how do they, how do they come head. to life? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, if you said it's the previous smoker and he's of the joy boy area era then he's giant you got that that's starting you got you're at the, like a kneecap um how do they become sentient well on elbaf we've seen sentient shields they have sentient shields there the the new giants pirates have a sentient shield okay okay we got to the ankle part but we gotta stick the landing okay sentient giant cigar florian triangle why were why, why is there three well there are three gates of justices. So there used to be three uh, smoker. Nah, nah I, lo I oh, lost. Dude, oh, dude, imagine no, if the I'm... gates of justice opened. Imagine, imagine the giant cigar monster start walking around the <laughs> earth. That'd be crazy. That's all that was stopping them. Oh no, 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 no. Okay, okay. This is a follow up from the from the last video. They're not cigars. They're candles, Mister Three. Oh my God, Mister Three. <laughs> yeah. Mm, damn yeah uh, no 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 no. i like that more wait yeah you yeah, knocked yeah, out of the yeah, park yeah. par who is that the par no. the par vision the, the, the par paralysis vision <laughs> <laughs> because anybody who hears our theories are gonna be are gonna become catatonic <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> you're smoking that shit Caesar made on podcast. Uh, that's so good. Paralysis. <laughs> uh, so what are we doing again? Talking about One Piece. All right, let me see. Let me see. <clears throat> we got past the cover page, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So now we're on to the chapter, and uh, let me oh, tell you. I did you. have a question. Oh, what's up? Did, do you feel like? So, so when I read the the thing, um, I don't know if in your translations it said hard aspect asterisk. And so that confused me. I was like, did Oda put an asterisk? But it was saying, like, in astrology, aspect refers to angles formed by planets in relation to each other on a birth chart or horoscope wheel. But I read that. I was like, is that something, like, we know? Like, is that in the raws that, like, Oda was 100% referring? What if he was just saying the hard aspect? Like, is there a possibility that they just, like, associated aspect in a weird way? And, like, Oda didn't mean it that way? Um, I don't know. Because uh, a lot of the leakers I've seen actually did the same thing they, they didn't put the asterisk yeah. but they gave the whole explanation oh. and i think they said in japanese too and oh, not just in okay, astrology okay. so i feel like gotcha. in japanese this might be more like um streamlined like a phrase yeah yeah, yeah like a like an idiom or phrase okay yeah. Th that's what i was wondering because i didn't have the raws and i was like that's like it could just be aspect like it's the hard aspect of life you know or something like that like yamato Ooh. is a hard aspect of the pilgrimage but then when they said the astrology thing i'm like wait what birth charts are we looking at like what where where am i supposed to look at is it the gorosei are we talking about i guess we could be talking about the gorosei right obviously with the chapter title but the stars aligning the hard angles oh maybe it has to do with york's illuminati symbol right? we're getting a lot of uh what star related titles which makes yeah. sense. I mean, the Gorosei are here, right? Last chapter was uh. Okay, never mind. We had, we had the Sun Starfall, Shield, though. Yeah, yeah we had Starfall. Well, sun, That's sun's it. a star. Sun's a star. Yeah, but the Luke. Sun Shield is in reference to the Giants more than the Gorosei. Yeah, but I mean, it's a reference to Luffy, and Luffy's technically our star god. Yeah, you know? star Something, boy. Some, something's going on there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know what's not going on though? What? That giant, bro. Where'd he go? This is like the same shot we had last week. But this time the giant's not there. Remember the giant? They're like, oh my god, he's so big. And then you could see him like standing above everything else. Yeah. And now he's just he's gone, dude. They I think they use the word Titan, right? He's he's a Titan over the island. It's like, damn, dude, like and then then like is Aaron here, you know? Like and, and they also had giants already on the island, so it's kind of offensive too. Cause like, yeah, maybe yeah, he's like bigger titans. than the giants, dude. And then oh. now he's just gone. And isn't it crazy that he's bigger than the giants? You could see him towering over the island, and then now nobody said a single word about him. Not the Straw Hats, not the Marines, like, nobody. I mean, not just Did this he ever first exist? panel. Yeah, yeah, not just this first panel, but, like, the entire chapter, right? Because we left the break, and we all were like, I'm sorry, Joy Boy. Oh, my God, what does Dude, that mean? the oh robot is such a meme, bro. <laughs> Remember when he first woke up when Luffy was fighting Kizaru and then we're like, oh my god, he's gonna step in and stop the fight or something. And then we cut yeah. over like 20 chapters, not 20, like 10 chapters later. And then he's still like sitting there like, oh, like what the hell is going on the with this guy? Like, he's paraplegic. Yeah, we, we there was a good chunk of time where I was like, maybe he doesn't have legs. You know, maybe he needs a wheelchair. I, I mean, I don't know, dude. Like the guy's not moving. Yeah. And now he's just we... gone. They did say the word standing, but like, what would they know? They can't see him apparently from this angle. <laughs> like, so, yeah. Yeah. So maybe he still doesn't have legs. Uh, yeah. But like, and, and then the fights going on. And then, you know what's even more disrespectful, I guess? Oda gave us that map last chapter that like lined out where everybody was. Yeah. And like in this chapter, we didn't necessarily get an update, but I would like to know where the giant went in this map because like that map, you know, kind of didn't put the giant imagine the, the robot chapter, is in the middle last chapter and then if oda were to give us an update the giant would just be gone like no x anymore it's just he just forgot to i'd be so confused like yeah I, the giant is one of the more confusing things of the chapter because they should be seeing it and it should be doing something because it's spoke and is no one is it when it said i'm sorry joy boy did no one hear that it looked like it was inside of his inner thoughts, though, because it had like okay. the do 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 like on the yeah. on the bubble. So it could yeah, have been yeah, like yeah. a voice of all things thing, or it could just be like in his head. And then even that, it goes either like, way. Normally, we would have like in that scenario where a, like a giant sentient object decide to speak, we would have Luffy be like, "Ah, what is that? Who's talking to me?" He yeah. Like, like, so that, that, that's why I think it might just be like um his inner thoughts, which yeah, is kind of yeah. lame. I mean, but you know, it it is what it is. What? Like, also, like a minor thing it, okay if like, I, I don't like him anyways i don't like giants dude visible off of the island 
no matter how much you dislike the giant, wouldn't Luffy look like? Wouldn't Frank? Did we? I mean, the giant no, should did. be like literally less than a kilometer away from Luffy, right? Yeah, and he should just be like, "Wow, robot!" Or like even Frankie. not even that. He would be like, "Wow, it's the robot I wanted to work a minute ago." You know what I mean? Like, yeah. He saw this thing and yesterday he, and thought it was really cool. No mention. Actually, the Gorsei, who have probably fought this guy before, don't even say anything. I mean, I, I, yeah. I said probably, but that was 200 years ago. We, we don't we don't know what their circumstances yet. I mean, maybe they were there. Maybe they weren't. But either way, you know, it's like it's it's the robot they didn't want Vegapunk messing with. And this guy yeah. standing up and you're telling me none of the Gorosei say anything? None of them. Yeah, or yeah. or the Vegapunks, because they care the about Punks this either. Name. You know what? The most egregious one, actually, you know, besides Luffy and everybody else, Saturn. Saturn climbed the clouds. Yeah, I'm skipping ahead a little bit. Saturn climbed the clouds. So, you know, he had a great view, like, oh, <laughs> he's, you know, he's going up. Oh, my God, a giant robot. Nope, none of that. <laughs> none of that, dude. What yeah. the hell? And, and what is going on with this robot? He's in the best position to be, once he sees it, because he's in the best spot, but he also has the best ability to communicate. He could tell, yo... We have like code red. Yeah, 9, code robot. Like, yeah, code marriage law is ending today. Like, I th <laughs> code this thing Olympus is a, <laughs> has fallen. Yeah, Guys. yeah, like a crazy name because last time this giant made it there all on its own. They could not stop it at all, even until the end where the own giant thing fell. You would think that they would treat this as like the apocalypse. Like this is like. If Godzilla had armor and and th thoughts, you know what I mean. I don't know if Godzilla is sentient in the movies, but but my point is that this Godzilla Iron is Giant gotcha. And so like, it's kind of weird. It's kind yeah. And Vegapunk, my man Vegapunk was saying like this dynamic power. I don't know what it is, but I'd love to know. And then they're just like they don't care about Stella dying. They don't care about the thing. The, apparently, as far as we know, by this chapter, this Denden Mushi is broadcasting the worldwide thing. It's just in a room chilling by itself, and we don't no bodyguards, no protection, nothing. Like, <laughs> there's a lot of goofy. Going there's on. a lot of goofiness here. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. then Edison jumps off the cliff too, and oh! then. <laughs> and, then <laughs> and then you'd imagine he'd be like, "Oh my God, what the hell is that?" You know, like God damn. <laughs> Giant robot, Yo, man. I, when we were memeing on it on stream yesterday, I could, we, we did not take the giant, uh, legendary iron giant angle. Edison, my man, jumped off and just didn't say a word. Di apparently closed his eyes too. Like he didn't decide. Yeah, to look dude. Down. Nobody, nobody knows where this guy is. Well, okay, what, what if we feel really silly come next chapter though, and it comes out the robot actually has a invisibility function. I mean, but it, they still recognized it. You know what I mean? Like, last chapter, they were like, Alert! There's a giant robot Ooh. in the middle of the island. What if it's like, um, there's a character from Bleach where whenever he turns invisible, he erases his existence from your memory. All right, that's just not fair. That's just not <laughs> yeah, yeah. fair. The, the robot like, turns invisible, and then everybody's like, huh? <laughs> huh? What were we talking about? This is not fair. <laughs> like i know like superman isn't fair but like a giant robot with so much mystery and then just like <laughs> yeah he just pops out of your memories I, it's like a sugar thing i forgot the guy's name it's like, ridiculous. I, they called they called him v the vanishing <laughs> oh that's that so good sounds so annoying <laughs> like <Yeah. laughs> what's the point <laughs> In, in, in a in a 1v1 battle it makes a lot of sense but you know yeah in one piece it doesn't actually yeah in this moment like, i would want to <laughs> hear the coherent dialogue of alert there's a giant robot it goes away it's like what was i talking about <laughs> <laughs> yeah. no and, and then luffy luffy like um every time the robot pop, pops back up luffy has like a groundhog's day moment where he's just like enthralled by the robot yeah he's like robo no skate <laughs> how do i get this guy to work dude yeah maybe that's it I feel like now there's, cause it's great. It's honestly uh, in the entire conversation, it still hasn't sunk in that like nobody has mentioned this giant. Like, I feel like if I was there, I, that's all I would be looking at. You know what I mean? It's like a Gundam, but it's huge. It's a building that moves. They don't even have planes. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> surely this would catch everybody's eyes. And yeah. then, oh, let's not forget. Let's not forget the 
the probably the biggest problem is that there's a giant vortex bringing everyone into the island to see it. You know, everyone's going towards the center because this my man Jupiter is like, hey, look, free view of the legendary iron giant that nobody sees. Yeah, that's uh, you know, and then huh? Yeah, uh, yeah, it's, it's so strange. If you were a marine here on Egghead Island, before we go on, what would you be? What would you want to do? Would you want to do the Buster call, fight Frankie and his group, fight Luffy, or fight the pacifists? Like, like, wh where would you want to be stationed here? So, like, realistically, if I had been a marine, like, like. In the real world, these Marines are coked up fucking on every goddamn drunk. There's no way, like, these dudes are alive through all of this. Even just, like, the they just saw, like, the entire island go from bouncing, like, it's bouncing to now they're getting nuked by their own people. Like, there's so much shit that's happening. And then once you get off the island because we just evacuated, nope, a giant worm is sucking you back in. At that point, like, if you experienced even a fraction of Egghead, you'd probably die. And then so for me, if I was there... I like you can't even be with this with the gore state because if you look at them they insta kill you like <laughs> right because they... <laughs> so like there's no real sucks, good man. spot to be on, on the I feel bad you're for some of the marines dude there yeah you're too weak to be there and then if you find yourself strong enough to be on the island it doesn't matter because Luffy's shaking in the whole island or you're getting sucked in by your own team or you're getting exploded by giant man-killing robots. Like, th there's no real... Like, I maybe I'd start digging. I think digging... No, but there's a digging. worm, dude. <laughs> there's a worm. <laughs> Dig a hole and just live under there for a little bit till the coast like is clear. Swimming. I think swimming... Oh, but the sea beasts. No. <laughs> like Yeah, that, sea beasts and plus, like, the water is, like, super cold and volatile. Oh, it's a winter island. Yo, this is a death trap. Yeah, dude, I, I, I've i said it before. I'll say it again. I say it proudly, man. But if I was a Marine, I'd probably just be dead. I'd be on yeah. the island, you yeah. know, thinking I can take down a, a named character and then I'd probably just get killed. Yeah, no, I mean, real realistically, like, I don't even think yeah, I would die from, just, like, that's how it go. wounds. I think I would die of shock because, like, the if you're just a normal dude, nothing on this island, you, uh, the summoning circle. No, no, all of a sudden now black magic's the thing in your world and then this white goofy kid is bouncing the yeah islands. and you know what dude I, I don't blame like some of those Laughing. marines who are like shaking you know like oh oh my god it's it's yoko luffy it's like no dude i'd be scared too like yeah if you're not a part of the straw hat crew if you don't know luffy luffy's horrifying like what he's just <laughs> he's laughing, laughing non-stop you got the red eyes just in the sky everything's bound dude this is like a nightmare. They, there yeah. needs to be like a, you know, people are saying, oh, we need a new One Piece, like, fighting game or whatever. You know, give us a One Piece horror game. We need it in the perspective of normal people. Every yeah. arc from the eyes of the citizens. <laughs> like, like Dragon Ball Breakers, but actually good. And with One Piece. Oh, my God. That would, I would watch that. I, you know, like an, a documentary on, on the Egghead arc. <laughs> <laughs> so how did it make you feel and it's just like this dude just like it's constantly shaking and you never know when the island starts moving so no. you just gotta move before and then luffy can be like a jump scare too because like one minute the laughing like ha 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 and then now it's behind you ha, ha, ha. it's just luffy's <laughs> everywhere bouncing around laughing at you yeah that'll be scary yeah, dude yeah. and then yeah, he just spiders, like kills you spiders like, horses warthogs uh boars whatever a living worms. skeleton yeah, a skeleton, like, they're, they're, <laughs> this shit is terrifying. This is scarier than Thriller Bark in a lot of ways. Because yeah. some of the zombies were chill, you know? They were kind of, like, you know, they weren't, they weren't the scary kind of zombies, right? Because they didn't bite you and turn you into a zombie. You had to, like, They just actually done. bit you. Yeah, they just, that's it. This is, this is a, a few leagues above scary, you know? And then this there's Pirate like, Hunter Zoro, who's over here cutting people in half. It's like, yeah, I don't know, man. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah, the thing yeah. is, too, is like, if you're a Marine, you're probably keeping up with the news reports. You hear that the Straw Hat crew, you know, they beat Kaido, they beat Big Mom, Doflamingo, multiple warlords. And, you know, when they beat Crocodile, you looked at the report, and you're like, okay, that's Smoker, actually. You know, Smoker did that. Yeah. And then you go to the, all the other reports, and you're like, okay, maybe that was uh, accidental. You know, the, the, the team threw the fight. But then after they get so many accolades on their, on their list, it's like, okay, no, 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 these guys are the real deal. <laughs> you know, like, they, they get really scary. 
Yo, I just thought about it. Like, like if if one of these marine guys was like friends with like smoke, like a smoker marine guy who went to Alabasta, and they have the decoration of being part of the crew that liberated Alabasta, and the, you know the rumor on the street, the Straw Hats were there, right? So like they know that. And like, but for those Marines, they were chilling. They didn't do shit, right? In the long run. So like, th- like that guy's kicking back at the office. Like, yeah, man, it was so easy. Like, warlords, simple. Straw hats, <laughs> crocodile, even... ah, no diff. And then so like one of those Marines, he's like, oh man, the straw hats. I heard that they're. It's not that crazy. Like the Kaido stuff. I'm sure it's a misunderstanding. The news, whatever they spun it, and then he comes like that motherfucker was lying. No, ima- imagine he justifies the Kaido thing. Like, oh, Luffy didn't beat him. Have you heard about those really strong, mysterious samurai? <laughs> the samurai yeah. that live in Wano. Those guys are powerful, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Give they're, him the Kaido hype. They're, they're just like looking for swords. They're like, oh, we're good. No samurais. No, no. Uh, <laughs> like, that's so funny. Dude, man, that um, Akainu hype on the samurai is so hilarious, though. I still think about that sometimes. Yeah, we need an explanation for that, for sure. Like, Akainu, at some point in his backstory, we need to... Like, did he meet Odin? Like, we were saying, like, Odin met Garp. Did Akainu meet him as, like, a young lad? And, like, he was just terrified? Like, that's kind of funny to think about, too. Imagine the, if the giants were the same way. Big Bomb was like, if I had the power of the giants, I could rule the world. And then we get to, yeah. we get to Elbaf, and they're all bozos. I mean, that's what we're expecting. But, like, hey, the Giants are pretty surprising, you know? No, right? I, yeah, They're actually, at this point, I'm not expecting it. I'm expecting them to be, like, absolutely insane, which uh, brings yeah. us to our first thing here. So, Venus runs around the island. He defeats all the pacifistas. Pretty crazy. Like, it's just one-shotting yeah. them. Yeah. And the way he's yeah. holding his Within sword minutes. in the first page, it kind of reminds... I, I know it's not, but it reminds me of Brooke whenever he does, like, his three arrow notch slash, where he does, Ooh. like... Phew, phew. So yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. it's another thing that could time to Brook, but you could just say he's sheathing his blade because he finished his job. So it, it could go either yeah. way. Uh, but yeah, Venus is making his way over to Bonnie because she controls the pacifista. He wants them back on their side. But as he's heading to the ship, we also see that Oimo and Kashi are heading back to the ship as well, bro. Dude, Dorian Brogy, they they fended off Warkuri. They cut Jupiter. Who's to say that Oimo and Kashi will not take on Venus and look okay. I- I'm expecting it, but I don't know if I want it though. Like th- that's, I don't know. I don't know. Like you you see the aura that Venus has at the end of this chapter. Now imagine Oimo and Kashi coming in and just boom. You know what I mean? Like, I, I don't know if I want that dude. Like, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. It, I don't know. I don't know. It, it, Maybe you it was still racist. And I, you know, when you asked me this, I became a little racist. You know, I was like, "There's no way giants can ever achieve something on that level." But then, you know, the reminder is, it's like Dory and Brogy, we're just we're their captains, right? Oimo and Kashi weren't. It didn't. They never came off as like apprentices on the ship, did they? Did we ever hear that? I thought they were just like regular crewmates on the giant. They're just pirates. regular crewmates, but I mean, for all they, we know, they could be like the right hand men, dude. And but like maybe not right hand men, but of the giants, they had the initiative to take on the world government on their own, right? And then they got captured and they got lied to, and then they were guarding Annie's lobby for however many years, like 50 years or something like that. And it's like that doesn't sound like like complete weakling giants of the crew, you know what I mean? Not like Hyrudin kind of thing but Hyrudin was a kid right these guys are older and it just seems like if you're like a, a hundred year old giant i think uh, uh dorian broke you're like 160 right well if these are a hundred year old giants and let's not forget the youngest giants in the series are 25 years old the yeti cool brothers right and so they were kind of cracked they were they were they were putting the brakes on frankie and luffy albeit their bodies are switched Doro and, Ch- and sanji yeah, and 25-year-old giant. So, like, let's give four times the strength to, to Oimo and Kashi. Let's just do that. Let's just scale them up for fun, right? They should be lower than Dorian Brogy, but Dorian Brogy took on a few Gorosei at the same time, fighting them, tackling them. Not even, they're not even damaged at this point after a few blows. They they stopped Warkery's double-blade tusk attack, and they're fine. So it's like, it feels like they could do something to Venus. But you don't but, want it either, huh? You don't want it either. 
it makes no sense that I don't want it because it's like it would make more sense. But like because if Venus is clean house, right? He's the he's up against Frankie, Sanji, Atlas, uh, uh, uh the two giants. Did I say Sanji? Bonnie. Oh yeah, and Bonnie and yeah. Bonnie, right? But we don't think Bonnie's really that effective. She can't de age Saturn. I imagine that applies. She if she can now believe in Nika, maybe she's the most powerful ally too. But then there's Sanji who's doing pretty good against Kizaru and the Saturn situation. And then you have two giants with unmeasurable potential. And it feels like overall it's not in Venus's favor given Saturn's portrayal, but like, okay, it's Venus. If Venus comes out the way I want him to, cleanly, that puts him so far above every other Gorosei, it doesn't make sense. That's why it's weird, you know? So you think he's about or to get schooled by Oimo and Kashi? No, no, no. Can we just say two giants? I feel like it's more dis- No, nah, dude. <laughs> A second Can ago, we you, were, you were like, you were like, yeah, Oimo and Kashi got captured by Marines. Dude, imagine the Marines that captured these guys. Who are we talking about, dude? Are we talking about the three, the three admirals, man? I don't know. Who captured these legendary giants? <laughs> and then you tell me those legendary giants lost to the Frankie family? Oh my god. <laughs> Holy god. I tried to That's scoop crazy. past that side. I dude, to, pa I, dude, imagine Polly and the Frankie family versus Nasuduro. Oh. <laughs> the matchup of the ages. Oh god. See, like Oda's doing this cool thing where it's like I, I acknowledge the mixed bag of characters yeah. that's right here in front of Venus. That's cool. But it's also not cool because if Venus loses or not wins, yeah, I think it's not even just losing. Yeah. It's just not winning. If he yeah, doesn't yeah. We, win We have to this... dial that back. I mean, I'm, I, me and you know, but I, I know there's a lot yeah. of people who are really sensitive to that, but the Gorosei yeah. aren't losing because they can regenerate. So it's, it's, it's mainly about like if we could properly stall them, really. And we have yeah. been very successful so far. I, I mean, we're, we're looking pretty solid. Yeah. Like, not winning in this regard is, like, if if Venus was up against the pacif uh, up against 50 pacifistas and he took out, like, 48. Like, th you're not going to say the pacifistas won. And you're not going to yeah. say that he technically lost. He just didn't win. Like, there's still, like, where are the missing four? And it's like, oh, the one's over there. Yeah. One's over there. It's not like a full win, right? So that's what I'm saying. It's like, unless he wins here... It's kind of bad on him because it's like who he's up against a little bit. And and they have so much room to win. It's kind of crazy. You, you know, know what's what I mean? funny too? What's funny what? is that uh I think Polly would be would be pretty good against Nasuduro. Cuz he can hurt him. Yeah, he could he, he could just lasso him. <laughs> Maybe the Frankie family and Polly could uh, could actually cook this man. Oh, oh, oh my god. Wait. Doesn't the Frankie family have giants in it? Uh yes, they have two giants, I believe. Yo. No 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 no. Oh. Uh no no no. They're, they're not giants. Are they they're just not giants. Giant people. I think they're I'm just forgetting. giant people, or they're like hybrids. I remember I'm... that um Oimo and Kanshi were bigger than them. The Frankie oh, three demolishers or something. Yo, I'm just I was just thinking about the Frankie family getting scaled up. Kairiki <laughs> destroyers is what they were called. They're considered and, uh... giants. <laughs> Oh. Are, they, are they just people? Yeah, they're just people. They're just large humans. Yo, but they're oh, oh yeah, I'm looking at the picture. Uh, Oimo and Kashi make Power them look like these toddlers. guys. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Damn, dude. It's like in Dr. Manhattan versus a baby. Yo, Oimo and Kashi got aura in this picture I'm looking at right now. <laughs> yeah, if you like, you go to Eni's lobby, they got aura. <laughs> You're like, huh. and then do you remember? Do you remember like what they used to say too? What? Uh, they're they're like oh you th like let's get them Oimo and then Oimo's like Oimo because because <laughs> Oimo like means like or that's not the sentence but Oimo means me too in Japan or something oh. like that so it's like a little gag where o Oimo yeah, just yeah, says yeah. Oimo like a Pokemon yeah 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 dude I'm looking at this picture I'm scared for Nasajuro I'm yeah. scared dude <laughs> <laughs> oh this wait a minute wait when you really think about it Oimo and Kashi they survived a Buster call before. Oh, I don't cool. know, man. I don't know, dude. It's kind of crazy. <laughs> kind of crazy. Yo. And and they also have the blessings of Nika because they part. Didn't they party with them in Eni's lobby afterwards? Yeah. Or is that they did? Yeah, so they, they did party with them. 
They're Nika Nika banquet uh, uh, participants. Like that's a soft buff. If this was like an RPG, yeah, it would be like blessings of Nika plus fifty <laughs> all attributes or something for the next twenty four days. Yeah, like you get like a, a sliver of plot armor. Just they got that now, and it it it's gonna be used up against Nussadro. I mean, maybe we, we saw next we saw time. what that did to the Grand Fleet. I mean, ooh. You you, you yeah. see Leo and Sai? I mean, they went crazy at Marie Joie. True. Yeah. Once you got that straw hat name, you're kind of you're kind of set for life, dude. Because yeah. wait, Sai and Leo, Sai, Sai, uh, Leo made it back. We know that. Yeah, Leo made I, it back, so I bet Sai yeah, is fine too. Yeah, 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 and that's crazy because a holy oh and a holy knight was there. That's wild. Yeah, and all the Gorosei too, and they were they were in sicko mode, dude. They were over there fighting yeah. Sabo for a second. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dang, they were on so, high so, alert. So like. Like Dorian Brogy got that that you know they had that thousand chapter tax they 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 rose up they scaled up to infinity and beyond right but I mean I one think cost you we... the seven hundred chapter tax though yeah yeah so that like, means what that was it, like they chapter got... four hundred and thirty five ish uh like it's around three eighty eight they're but like Eni's lobby though yeah Eni's lobby is around three eighty oh oh my god they're just getting stronger then. Yeah, <laughs> more just chapters. getting stronger. Jesus, is this yeah, exponential? Yeah. I think God it damn. might be like thirty ninety ish where we see them. But um, yeah, man, like Oimo and Kashi, bro. Like, like I said, I think that they can actually do something against Venus. Do I want them to do something? No, no I never have I ever <laughs> asked for Oimo, Kashi, Dorian, Brogy to do this because. Like, they're getting scaled up, and we know the Giants are going to be strong. But at the same time, like, if these are, like, endgame opponents, like, do we really want Oibo and Kashi and the rest of them to, like, be doing this well? Like, I don't... Maybe it's yeah. just me, but... Like, you know, people yeah. look at Venus, and they're like, oh, like, this is, you know, Mihawk, Shiryu, Venus. Like, oh my god, it's the holy trinity of Zoro opponents. Like, they're going to be so powerful. And then, if Oibo and Kashi come in... And they, not, not like beat Venus, but you know, if, if they injure him or if they catch him off guard, it's like, dang. <laughs> I mean, uh, I guess I'll look forward to shoot you then, man. Damn. Okay, okay. Let's let's do one last mental game on this. Yeah, go for it. Take out Sanji. Take out Sanji. Yeah. Put Zoro in for Venus. What do you think happens? Zoro versus Oimo and Kashi. I mean, well, I guess we're losing a Nakma then, you know? Like, I guess that's over. <laughs> Goodbye, Zoro. I mean, Oimo and Kashi, have you seen these guys? Could you imagine Eni's lobby in a world where Zoro stops at Oimo and Kashi? <laughs> the whole Polly family victim <laughs> sort of stops there. Doesn't even make it past the gates, not the Bridge of Hesitation, whatever it's called. Up the Tower of Justice. No, 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 no. He wow, stopped by Oimo. Oimo and Kashi. Yeah. <laughs> So, like, it's crazy. That's how wild it is. And I took out Sanji, obviously, right? Like, if we threw in Sanji and put Zoro in that situation, then it's like Zoro's losing. But this isn't... This isn't... Z Z Z Venus should not be Zoro equivalent. You know what I mean? Like, in... I guess people would... Some people already have Zoro above Venus. Like, so it's not that crazy for a lot of people. But, like, narratively, you know what I mean? Like, in the position of villainry, the next villain. How crazy would it be if, like... Annie's lobby Zoro already beats King, you know? That doesn't make sense. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty. I mean, hey, maybe maybe we're going to learn that Oimo and Kashi trained up really hard during the two-year time skip. Maybe that's yeah, it. Yeah, they, oh, 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 what if they're like Roku Shiki? Because they experienced like Cypher Pole and they were mm. in that fight. So maybe they come out and they got Moonwalk and shit like that. Ooh, or maybe they went to their the, the Elbaf version of Ruskaina. Like, you know how like they already have big monsters? Imagine they go to an yeah, island with bigger. even bigger monsters and they're like, oh, yeah, oh. let's train up. <laughs> yo, that yo could and be that's. It. Wait, actually, now that I think about it, you just said the most important thing. To Oimo and Kashi, to Oimo and Kashi, the Gorosei are just field animals just like just the regular animal on elbaf right yeah <laughs> because that's what they said last time they're like man these these guys Ooh, take me back to elbaf dude <laughs> imagine if oimo and kashi hit this guy with like some fodder lines like that like oh oimo did you did you leave a dead horse laying around here pony pony they hit yeah. him with a pony yeah hit him with a so pony line no <laughs> whoa no. yeah like, like i said i like uh I could see it happening. Do I want it to happen? No, man. I don't. I don't. Yeah. I don't. I don't want Venus to be done like this, man. I think the nail in the coffin for me was just remembering that they're just normal animals on Elba. 
It's so they painful. just regenerate. That's like the difference at this point. They just like like Odori and Brogy are looking at Jupiter's like, man, what's up with this worm, dude? <laughs> like we keep cutting him back. It's like just the normal size of a worm. But worms back in my See, place, they don't regrow. <laughs> and, and the thing is, like, yeah, they don't take damage. But if people like Oimo and Kashi damage Venus to where he has to regenerate, that doesn't look good. It's like Dragon Ball Z, right? Like, yeah, Ma yeah. Majin Buu, Super Buu, Kid Buu, they regenerate. But yeah. is, is Hercules landing that damage? Is Yamcha hurting him so hard that, you know, Majin ooh. Buu's like, ooh, let me come back to life. You know, like, no, yeah, dude, yeah. that doesn't happen. You know, yeah, like, the only, only the way... top tier is like, you know, Piccolo with a special beam cannon you know go tank super saiyan 3 you know ultimate gohan and goku can do like nah dude like yeah. if, if they have just any bozo coming around here damaging majin buu to where he has to like put himself back together that doesn't look great on the on the yeah. rap sheet even if you do regenerate yeah yeah and it's a gray area because like satan was a gag character but his way to win it and i love that part of the story where he tried to win over boo by becoming his friend and caretaker and like i mean after him. trying to bomb him yeah 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 but like you know it's boo versus tnt oh boo you know boo literally doesn't care about that right so for satan it's like he scraped his knee and and he's just like oh but you could be my caretaker right but the whole, my point is is like Satan at least is a gag character, and so obviously we're not gonna see him hurt like the boo like that, right? And his method of winning had nothing to do with fighting. Whereas in the One Piece world, like it's not that they're not gag characters, but there's we're so far from Annie's lobby, Luffy. And like Luffy, there's a reason why Oda had Luffy jump over all of any's lobby straight to the rooftops because if luffy ran through the bridge and tower he would just steamroll them and if you were to make the point of like any's lobby luffy to like now luffy it's comical to compare something that luffy didn't even see like luffy brought back these giants just because they're huge right like he didn't even know them he never even saw them at any's lobby he jumped over everybody so it's like that's why it's like it's weird because yeah they're not gag characters but they might as well be regarded as such to the gorosei because it's also another look look at it it's like these guys are like the janitors of the gorosei like where the gorosei are they're the employees and they're not even getting yeah, paid they were just the to. gate guardians of any's lobby <laughs> and like, and now oh, that man the lowest rung of their employee is coming up and is a contender that's disrespectful yeah <laughs> and, and then they, they like i said they, they launched the frankie family like it's not like they put up a really good fight either yeah it, it's like if john the giant were here and then he steps in and fights the gorse so you know what i mean I and it's like that. oh he got the giant tax you know he's a giant so he's just like you know 50 times more powerful yeah yeah we, like, have dang. we seen him do do we see him do anything or was he just in the early chapters when they announced the bounties and he's just sitting there like super big I oh, oh we saw him during that and then we saw him at marine ford and whitebeard one shot him oh, oh that yeah, was the yeah, first yeah. person like that whitebeard like took down right now they were like oh john like, the giant's gonna go fight whitebeard and then he grabbed Whitebeard's his face like, and slammed him or turned yeah him i think he out. i think he i think he slammed him yeah Did i he? don't remember which one Oh it yeah, he did because, cool because Whitebeard threw his uh his Nagitana up in the air, and then yeah, he yeah, hit yeah. him, and then he caught it like like that. Damn, yeah, that was cool. Yeah, yeah, he flexed on him, dude. Yeah, yeah. See, and and like we can give John Giant that respect. He's a Whitebeard victim, and that's what we should be saying about Omar and Kashi. We shouldn't be respecting them for taking down the Gorosei, even for a second, even for ten seconds. It should be that they lasted 10 seconds against venus you know like that's the respect we should give him we're not giving john giant respect for being a giant or whatever no he he was the first victim of whitebeard you know after coming out of retirement that's crazy not a lot of people can say that actually there's only one person who can really say that and that's john giant Shout funny enough john giant. this ties into the next thing we have to talk about okay. because john giant was actually a vice admiral oh wait wait was he let me see let me see <laughs> He was either a vice admiral or he I was a, a, vice admiral, a captain. Because uh, comments called me out saying on, on Twitter, they were like, well, Par, there's actually more vice admirals. The entire Giants crew. Yeah, he is a vice admiral. Vice admirals. Yeah, and I was like, my bad. My bad, guys. Yeah, I'm sorry. But... <laughs> vice admiral, sorry. <laughs> These VAs, man, I was... I, I don't think I have enough anger left in me anymore. It's I, I've mellowed out. I, I, I sat with this for, I think, um three days now, three, four days. <laughs> and... 
all the anger that was in my body is just it's it's left. Dude. Man, Frankie. How Frankie's... many chins did we count before and how many chins after? <laughs> how many what? How many chins does he have before and how many chins did he does he have after? Is Hopefully he still the same Cincinnati? amount, dude? Hopefully the same amount. <laughs> the thing is Oda doesn't he even just looks like a loin. <laughs> he just looks like a loin in that second panel, man. Yeah, yeah, and Oda doesn't want to even give us the aftermath. He hit him in a in a text bubble <laughs> in the ground. Oh no. Yeah. Um. You know, but hey, on the bright side, did we know that he had a mecha arm like that? I thought yeah. it was someone else who had a mecha arm. No, it was him. Oh, but did we know it had thruster? Yeah. Oh. It was when he fought the uh, the sea beast because we saw steam coming out of it. Uh, see, I thought the I thought I the mecha arm. I was like, I feel like I remember that, but the steam. I was like, oh, that's no, Par. Cool. You know what? We we could just ignore it because you know why? Uh, the arm is broken. Yeah, Frankie Wait, it broke. It, that's what it looks like. It looks like Frankie smashes through the arm, dude. Do you see he that? Made him a cripple again. Look, look, the arm like has that little effect around it in a circle. Like it, it's like no. it's done. It's yeah. cut or it destroyed like or whatever. Frankie targeted the arm too. He you know, targeted because... the arm, broke the arm, knocked him in the face. Like it's it's a it's a double disrespect. I it's it's embarrassing, really. You would think Frankie would respect a fellow like like cripple because technically Frankie without his cybernetics is just front end skin. You know and what? I, think I want somebody to that. chop off Frankie's arms. You know what? I'm I'm on that agenda now. <laughs> because Frankie did... <laughs> I would just say Revenge. I would just say... <laughs> Revenge for, for the Red King. Because doesn't isn't Frankie? No, his backside. He's just a butt cheek. Because technically, the only natural part that he got after he tackled the train, his whole front is gone, and all he has is the skin on his back. Yeah, so his that's back all is that he's left. So technically, his whole front side is his prosthetic. Someone should go take that away from him. Tell him, show him how it feels to have their their prosthesis removed violently Dude. like this. This is rude. And, and you know like I, I i don't want people to misunderstand me like i i love that frankie won i knew that frankie would win we, we've talked about it time and time again like frankie is gonna win these fights you know frankie versus the vas yeah he has this especially with bonnie yeah. beside him it's it's done like frankie was always going to win but winning in one hit is crazy yeah. and, and and not yeah. even like a like a one hit kind of thing but this is just a strong right frankie has like a bajillion more abilities that are way stronger yeah, Brad he has like the beam, that sword General Frank, thing. yeah, the V-Saber. Like, he has so much more in his bag. Yeah. But this guy lost to a simple, strong right. Well, that's like, crazy. Yeah, yeah. Because the, to remind you guys, we had, me and Sai had like a literal 90-minute conversation about various matchups that the Vice Admirals, we thought that the Vice Admirals can take, whether it be the Straw Hats or other like people i think for some reason we threw in giants i don't even remember why we threw in giants in the vice out because the giants weren't there but we were talking about i think maybe we we're talking about saul or something um yeah saul because he was a va yeah 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 and so we were saying could saul beat these guys and you're like i think maybe two or something i don't know but you said jimbei would be like three and then we were like how about sanji and we were like probably like all of them like four or five like you'd be able to take on if jimbei is three i'm misremembering the numbers but the point is yeah you confidently were like, yeah, Frankie could take on like one to two. One to two doesn't mean one tap one and fight the another. It was like a, a like a, like all like at once, yeah, like like a like a rooftop situation, you know? Yeah, and and it's not Frankie just clobbering this dude. It was like we like even I, you know, you guys want to say Admiral General, whatever, but like I was like, yo. I think that these vice admirals, if they can one tap a pacifista, a mark three pacifistas, which is what we had seen, then yeah, I think that they could handle them. Not anymore. Like I had my hopes up. I'm, I'm but... fearful for all the VAs, dude. Imagine, like, like imagine if this was like, um, so Red King is brand new. Yeah, we didn't know about this guy before this arc. Losing. But imagine this happened to a vice admiral we've known about for a long time. Like, imagine, T -bone. what's up, T Bone. Yeah, imagine this is T-Bone. Imagine it's Momonga, Dalmatian, Doberman, Garp, Smoker. Smoker's a VA. Doll. Like, like put any other VA here that we've known for a while, and it's like, damn, dude, like, one strong right? Maybe Red King's, like, the <laughs> weakest VA, but I don't know, man, like... That's the sickest name to give the weakest dude. That's crazy. 
one yeah, strong right yeah. like if this was like a frankie v saber i'd be like oh yeah of course yeah frankie v saber yeah. radical beam oh my god yeah because that's what took down sasuke i would have loved it i would be like oh yeah that makes sense yeah respect on frankie respect on this guy cool cool yeah. no a strong right dude one strong right dude didn't yeah. senior pink take like a bajillion of these it's it's yeah 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 yo you're dude right. senior pink hype like senior everybody frankie's ever boxed oh my god they're they're way stronger than red king like it's not even like i don't want the frankie hype it's like no no the vas are ass bro like it's so like it's hard to defend these guys really and and like we're, we're talking about the frankie thing in a bubble but then we also see bonnie the, the yeah. youngest supernova the, a literal 12 year old just touch and they know what her powers is, are she's not an unknown pirate she's actually the target of their mission right and Posky now fought her earlier too <laughs> and so like you would think okay these vice admirals know roku shiki anything you know the minimum you need is to not let her touch you and you did the one thing within seconds not even a scuffle not even she didn't even blitz you no you saw her coming up at you because that was my slander from last time or, or a month ago 11 11 or yeah, yeah yeah that chapter was saying that the reality might be that these vice admirals are so weak that they couldn't damage the ship so they had to turn around and fight instead of just taking down the ship which they were just posted up at they were leisurely like hey yo where do you think you're going they were like bouncers at a club and it's just like okay if you couldn't take out the ship you fight the people but now we know how weak you are because you can't even fight the people and it looks like like pomsky got destroyed the other guy guillotine is a spectator and then and then like i i, I was thinking a world like okay maybe Sai, maybe we're being too harsh we don't know if red king's out for the count and it's like okay if he's not out for the count he has no arm he this is what happened after a strong right what happens if he gives him a strong left what if he starts mm. keeps on going <laughs> like honestly <laughs> I, I will say this though at least he didn't get done dirty with the beans left. That would have been bad. The beans left? Are you talking about Usopp? No, no. Beans left is Frankie's like weakest attack. Oh, is it? It's where he does the. Up? It's the one where like his hand goes down a little bit and it shoots like a little machine gun at you. Like imagine that oh, was it, dude. That would have been I, yeah. You know I what? Like, I, you know what? Upon further inspection, I, I'll take the strong right. Yeah, that's fine. Is is wait is Beans left stronger or weaker than Usopp? So Bonnie His turned that guy into a kid. <laughs> we we got to move on. I can't, I can't speak on that one. Um, <laughs> Dude, yeah, All Bonnie right. turning into a kid is crazy. And, and the thing is, is that, like, you would think that being a vice admiral would exempt you from the kid list. You know what I mean? Like, you'd have enough hockey to resist it. You know, you Ooh. wouldn't be affected by it. But no, dude, you are. Like, imagine Bonnie doing this to, like, any of the straw hats and it, it works. It's like, damn, like, really? Well, yeah. Like, imagine she does this to like, Robin or Frankie, even. Scenario. It's like, dang. In a fighting... Because they just... Get, like, yeah, in a yeah, fighting Bonnie situation. Earlier in Egghead, but that wasn't, like... They weren't antagonistic. Like, their sole mission is to take Bonnie and literally kill her because she has... That's all they're capable of. That They literally said that. And they, get, uh, they got the approval. And this is, this is their first thing. The Straw Hats would never. But also, thinking about it, Momonga, right? It was Momonga who, who took Boa off yeah, of... Yeah, uh, Momonga. And so, like... I think one of the things she was saying was like, ah, you, that's how you're a vice admiral because he found a way, even though he like basically admitted that he would fall to her, to her uh, beauty, he stabbed himself. It didn't like, sure. In today's timeline, it's like, ah, oh, you hockey list bozo, bro. But like back then, okay. Oda gave him something, gave him something. And it was cool. It was, it was cool at the time. He, boom. You can't get me ha and cool because hockey didn't exist then hockey exists now hockey exists so much that like batman on wano had it hockey exists so much that like i think someone said the fodder and film z all had hockey yeah. like and the vice admirals are supposed to have like we known this for so long from marine for that all the vice admirals have some form of hockey and they trained it enough they're kobe kobe is like down here in the kobe's right not even a va yet dude and he's up here with the hockey and it's like that's not just him there's yeah. others oh yeah here's a good one prince Groose, rear admiral 
like if this happened to Prince Goose, I don't know if there'd be any Prince Goose fans out there anymore. Like, uh, like no, no joke. Like, yeah, that's crazy. This just happens yeah. to be like when I expect Bonnie to go into a fight. I was expecting either the Nika Future or something along the lines of NDE, or you mm -hmm. know, some new aging ability that she has that's just based in combat. The, the Glock, like she just yeah, like dudes. dude, not the, not then. She just tapped. This is a this is a basic attack like like no like this is actually a basic attack it worked on vegapunk she, she did what to him what a non-combined 80 year old like 90 year old apple lobotomized pencil stick legged motherfucker who's doing in like that's just the craziest comparison this guy got the same treatment as an actual geriatric dude Who's, who is so geriatric that he split himself six times to get shit done. He can't even eat poop or sleep on his oh, own. And man. this guy can't even do that. It's, it's, yeah, 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 And, yeah. and like, we can't even that say that Red King or Pomsky are, you know, they don't have some sort of, like, experience on the battlefield. Because look at them, dude. They're old. Like, Red yeah. King, probably 40. At least 40. Pomsky, at least 50. Like these these guys have probably been around a battlefield or two, and this is how they're performing. But I mean, to be fair, we could say the same about Yamakanji, right? Yamakanji on Amazon Lily. Mm -hmm. But then again, you could say, oh, you know, Blackbeard's there, Boa Hancock's there. He's not winning no matter what. But, you know, I I'm just saying, like, I'd rather fight Frankie and Bonnie than Boa Hancock. Like, I, I don't know. Yeah, and also, like, Boa is. I, I don't think this is crazy. I think Boa's on a different level than Bonnie. Yeah. Like, no, like same. combatively, like, there shouldn't be, like, a pair. Is a literal 12-year-old too strong because, yeah, she's has, like, some training, but, like, she's never... Like, the way Kizaru treated her was just, like, a chi literal child's play. He didn't even dodge. He was just like, oh, like whoops <laughs> like she like swung something at him and he, and he like casually dodged it's not that big of a deal and you know i yeah it's kizaru but bonnie and boa are not the same thing yeah their powers are in a, in a lot of ways but like if you told me just... that this was a captain and not a vice admiral i'd be all for it captain yeah. rear admiral commodore i'd be like wow okay yeah yeah bonnie could do this but a va being done this dirty is kind of insane yeah. like and then no, 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 go on. No, go for it. I would say, like, give us a two tap. If Frankie had to use two strong rights, oh my god. Like, like imagine first strong right, you know, the guy gets hit, he gets knocked down, the guy's like, I'm not done yet. And then they go in for one final one, and then this happens, I'd be like, oh, okay, yeah, respect. You know, two strong rights, A1, I'll take it. Yeah. Didn't happen, and, dude. And one I'll, tap, one tap, boom. And I realized that, like, this chapter really put in perspective why there's some funky things going on. Because when we really broke this down, something that I just now realized, these guys... Vice Admirals two years ago, right? Yeah. So when Buster Call, five Vice Admirals, I'm pretty sure Oimo and Kashi were terrified, dude. The little runs on Eni's lobby. Oh my god, five, five Vice Admirals. <laughs> They're like hyperventilating. Like everybody, oh my god, Buster Call, five Vice Admirals, right? That's how far these dudes were back then and oimo and kashi are there and now they're fighting the gorosei or they're like we're 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 almost scared for the gorosei because of those two giants where vice admirals like you have to recognize how stagnant this day would be in comparison to these characters that just rose up way beyond you know they're fighting way above their 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 weight class and pay grade right now and the vice admirals are like they they I don't, I don't even know like what like what they would have been doing to justify this on all these years like i would need garb to come out like oh those bozos they were just they were just embezzling the, the world no government. battleship these... bags man <laughs> yeah yeah like i would that that would be like a like if garb if kuzan was reading the news to garb all oh, l here kid law you Oh, but let's not forget about Egghead. Look at what your grandson did. The casualties. And he just lists out the nine vice and then, and then And then they both look at each other and they just bust out laughing like, yeah, that, they, they had that shit coming. They like, send these guys over here? Come on. I wouldn't need that. That would be <sighs> so funny. Kuzan so Garb sad. just like in the middle of it, they bonded over how trash these vice admirals are. Oh my God. And then Garp has the, he's like, damn it. I came to Hachinosu. I should have went to Egghead. Shit. Like because surely he got a call here too right it Garp? was just a he 
Yeah, he got a call to Egghead too, right? Didn't Doll say that? No. Doll said that or Doll herself has to go to Egghead. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Damn. Wait, they should have... Why didn't they call Garp? We could have well, avoided... Well, so he's probably old and retired, right? It's like why why Sengoku and Sudo are just chilling at uh, Marineford. Yeah, but... Or Marine HQ. It, if they were... Call, because at that point, they were calling reinforcements because Luffy was there, right? Yeah. So, like, if they knew Luffy was there... It's kind of like it's a little bit like. But I guess it's one of those things where, like, if Luffy's causing a ramp, like causing a ruckus, you wouldn't call Garp. Yeah, Garp but, like, would probably would... just let him go. Okay, but okay, okay. I think we can agree that there are better vice admirals than these nine at this point. With this betrayal, there's probably vice admirals that could perform better, right? Or do you I... think all of them besides Garp are just this this level? Honestly, at this point. I don't want any of my beloved VAs to come here. No, because I'm thinking, I'm thinking, let's just say that there's like, there's Garp level. Then there's like the, the VAs that we're going to see later on. Like the ones we know, the named ones that we like have kept in the story. They're not being treated like this. Then there's these new dudes that Oda just threw in for, you know, for these scenes to wipe them out. It's not as hurtful as Momongo or Strawberry or whatever, right? It's just these random Red King. Cool. Cool name, whatever. All... Like, oh, like, imagine. Let me, let me choose their names. Like, oh, imagine if Doll dog took dictionary. a strong right and she was done, bro. Like, yeah, she's not. She's not. The, Oda drew her in a different way. Like, we know this. Introduced differently. Talked to Garb differently, right? And so the reason why I'm saying that is like, like realistically, that like then, like they a Yonko is there. They're calling reinforcements. Yeah, they have Kizaru, but like then they called the the bottom. They I guess they open called and then the worst vice admirals called in. It was like I'll do it, meaning that a bunch of people were like Luffy, no, she not paying me enough for that, right? Like I that's wish we kinda... could see the the reactions from the other VAs. We we need some VA commentary here. Like we need yeah. um, Onigumo talking about this. We need Cancer <sighs> talking about it. I would love a where's like Cancer, a side, bro? Side story for uh for for the marine side of from what oda is telling not like a random author oda like license it to them i want oda to you know if he goes on a, he drops a, like a project for a little bit and then he just writes a marine side of all of these events that'd be sick that'd be good i'd love that yeah i'd buy oh. that up yeah yeah i would i would eat, i would do weekly reactions to that that 100%. would be so sick yeah oh man oda if you're I know you watch this, Oda. <laughs> yeah, Oda, since you're here, <laughs> can you please do it? <laughs> yeah. uh, but so the one VA you kind of mentioned earlier, the one VA that doesn't do anything is just guillotine. He says, uh, cool, stop, man. this is hard to watch. And uh, honestly, man, like, I think he should save face for the VAs and just not do anything. Like, does he sit down or does he run away? What's the appropriate response? Does he just like, I don't does know, he maybe verbally concede? <laughs> Well, then again, maybe he's emboldened by Venus showing up here. With, oh, with Venus here? Yeah. Yeah. But then, like, I get, oh, no, he can be there. It's not yeah, like if up? he looks at Venus, if he looks at Venus, he doesn't. Uh, oh, your mic cut out. Just, oh, it did? Oh, okay, there you go. You're back, you're back. Yeah, yeah. Um, go for it. I was saying that it's not like if he looks at Venus, he doesn't just explode. So, like, I guess he could tag. But then... <laughs> The Venus guillotine tag team. The, the last yeah. thing us VA admirals, uh, VA yeah. fans have to go off of, yeah. What if he goes down and, like, Kizaru and Saturn, you know, the way they said it was, like, Shaq and Kobe. He's like, Kizaru and I got this, right? And they were standing, like, like yeah, this. Yeah, wait. <laughs> you know how we have the, the panel of um Venus just standing there, like, all scary. He has the crazy yeah. shading. Dude, somebody Photoshop, <laughs> somebody Photoshop guillotine in there, too. <laughs> Yo, that would be great. Yo, the memes off this chapter were awesome. I think they're always awesome, but this one hit, hit different. And, like, that would be... So, I saw someone do the Venus thing, but it was Eustace from Curse and Cowardly Yeah, I saw that one. I was like, wait, that's so good. It's so close. Oh, man. But now, yeah, add Guillotine to the side, and it's just like... Get, and then He's just ready to go. Him. Yo. And then, and then he goes down in Legend. Like, I... Hopefully he lives off of Egghead, but it's like, yo, yo, that Kitin kicked it with Venus, bro. He's he's not like the rest of us. And then VAs. add in like, like a dialogue like box where where Frankie's like, oh, this hockey, someone go get Luffy. <laughs> and then they're just talking about guillotine. 
<laughs> Quick, yeah, call yeah. in the monster trio. We need Zoro here. Where's Sanji? Oh my God, Guillotine has dude. showed up. If Gu Gu Guillotine could be like v Venus's next Kobe. Oh, like like yeah, Garp Kobe, not the Kobe Bryant. Like Kobe, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Maybe Venus sees how well Guillotine does here, and he's like, "Wow, I need to promote this man." Yeah, 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 yeah. He I, becomes I need to a train cipher him. Pole. Yeah, cipher yeah. Pole. He becomes cipher pole. Maybe he makes Guillotine a celestial dragon. CP negative one. Oh, yeah. Yeah, personally, uh, personally promoted by a Gorose member. It's oh, like how CPG. how Mihawk took in Zoro. Venus yeah, is gonna yeah, take yeah. in Guillotine. Yeah, yeah, and Guillotine's haircut cuts the ground when he bounds down because it's like a. Oh, maybe, maybe if Guillotine has conquers hockey, the little blade on his head will, will amplify it, and then it'll just send out slash waves instead. I. That. Yum. <laughs> Yum. <laughs> Ate a it up. Yep. Ate yeah. up that theory. Love it. Love it. <laughs> nah, could it I left me speechless. Yum. <laughs> yeah. So uh, we go on a little bit and we see Vegapunk, the, the dead Vegapunk, talking about some coffee with the other dead people up there. It's kind of like heaven, really. Speaking yeah, of yum. Speaking yeah, speaking of, of yum. yum. Yeah, yeah. Coffee's good. Uh, you know, now that I see Vegapunk, Shock, and Pythagoras here, it feels like the airport from JJK, which. It's kind of like a reference of dead people. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, yeah, yeah. maybe that's what this is. Maybe it's just heaven. They're just uh, chilling in heaven right now. Yeah, yeah. The, uh, Josh from Volley 1, his, he came on a stream and he was saying that this visual could be like the the digital digitization of what it's like to be in punk records. So when they sync up, mm. this is what it looks like. And so, um, like, they're not, like, they're conscious, their flow state is there. It's just they're digitalized in the thing. And I, I like the idea, and I yeah. I boosted the thing, and I think we are on the same page on this, where, you know, not even talking about the Recycle Kerr guys, not even talking about that kind of thing, but, like, Stella being alive is feeling very real to me. Like, uh, like yes, Stella's body died, in my opinion, with the heart thing. That was Stella, but, like, in some shape or form, there's various theories. I have my own that I, I'm posting up soon. But in some shape or form, he's not dead right now. Like, he's somewhere. I, in, yeah, same. I feel like he's going to come yeah. back to life. Because uh, in this chapter, Ben, nobody talked about Vegapunk. Or Stella. York, yeah. nothing. Edison, nothing. Atlas, nothing. Lilith, nothing. Like, nobody's even acknowledged what's going on. I mean, what well, York, York has, but that's a little bit different. Okay, so so I I can so I told you this off call during the month, but I was saying that I think that the way they sync up is dying, um, which spoiler for the video is that I was saying that once they die, they sync up, and so during the break month, I was looking at the chapters to try and see if there's any way we can see that like information because Stella himself has the ability from what we had seen the way he explained it he constantly gets updates it's the satellites that have to sync up once a day that was in chapter 1067 so i was going off of that and basically looking at the dialogue to see if there's any moment that stella himself had information or sounded like a different satellite after they had died right and I'm not going to get into the theory part right now but i didn't have this chapter obviously during the break month but this chapter is so helpful and, like, if I wanted to support that theory, what if Edison jumped off to explode himself to join up with the other? He's like, oh, shit, maybe maybe this is what we were supposed to do. And that's kind of what York uh, and Mars' conversation was. Like, it's like, don't you Vegapunks have this similar, like, thinking pattern? Can't you think, tap into that thinking thing? And maybe that's what happened to Edison. Maybe he's like, oh, wait, I'm supposed, this is part of the plan. I was supposed to knock out and then go into the thing. And then that's the interesting part about the earlier thing. They emphasize that he's not fully dead yet. But also Edison didn't play a role up until now. And then his role was what? Jumping off, not telling anybody and just hitting the, the lap, the, 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 the frontier dome. And it's kind of interesting because it's, he says like damage 78%, but he's not full. He's like they literally bandaged him. I don't even know if he's a real person because the one time they had his eyeballs pop out, and I was like, maybe it's just comical. But then they also wrapped him up. I'm like, but and they never showed him like spark. They kind of showed him like crack up and like break. So I don't even know what he is. 
But maybe it would be kind of crazy if after Edison blows up, we see him like enter in in this video. That, that would wouldn't be... be bad, but it would be like, wait, what is Edison supposed to get for us, though? Yeah, I would. I, that's the thing. Like, because Edison said he's going to get us an invention to help us get off the clouds. He doesn't say that verbatim, but he insinuates yeah. that like, hey, like you guys aren't going to make it. I'm going to go do something real quick. See you in a minute. Yeah. If, yeah, he, so, if like, he gets uploaded to the cloud, I don't think he can really help out when it comes to yeah. the thousand sunny getting off of the labo phase it was interesting because when it came to like why dying would be a part of syncing up that's where that's where as far as the theory goes i didn't go to the dying part i was talking more about like the idea that stella is alive and that the stella we see might not be the stella we see and then the end part is like maybe the way they sync up is dying but the one the two weird parts but the one i bring up right now is like york still being alive like if if york knew that they just need to die to resurrect or whatever and that's not an issue then she wouldn't be that she would operate way differently i feel like her plan because she was just like don't kill me or whatever um she wouldn't be worried about those things if she could just re-resurrect and that wasn't an issue but and what, and if, what, uh, if, what if you resurrect but you don't have a body you need a new body and that's why york doesn't yeah. want to die though she's like hey like if i die i'm going to the cloud but i'm gonna have to make a new body and the vegapunks so, probably aren't gonna make that for me at that point yeah yeah so so that so you, you actually hit a good part of one of the the things the reason why i was uh i like the idea that they died was because um the way the video is structured is we had an end point in chapter 1089 when all the straw hats regathered and York is calling the Gorsei and everyone, the satellites, everyone's together. And we left off of a bunch of disjointed parts. And one of the disjointed parts is Brooke. Brooke left Nami, Edison, S Shark, Sanji to go into his astral projection form. And at that point, Shaka had died. And we and Stella, Stella and the other satellites were like, like Pythagoras had just died. So then it's like maybe Brooke interacted with them. Like that's where I was going, but it was too headcanony for me to like completely f buy into that route. But the ultimate thing is like Odo would create some kind of reason for Brooke to have gone into astral projection. Is it, it just search and like finding things? Because my normal level idea is that Brooke is the one who told Stussy and uh jimbei that they were being attacked so because stussy and jimbei were in the weapons room which we re revisit in this chapter and from the weapons room they probably got all the bubble guns that we saw all the seraphim encapsulated the only one that we saw without the bubble gun was or with the bubble gun prior was lilith because she carried one over but nobody else had a bubble gun so it makes sense if brooke maybe told them but the maximum idea is that when shaka and pythagoras died brooke somehow interacted with them because he's literally dead so then on the way to punk records he might have learned something interact with them told them something i don't know um there's also the weird thing where i think brooke can also i have to double check this but like he can also interact with other vet like em lifeless things or like corpses so like maybe like technically he didn't need to return to his own body it was just more like that's what he decided but I think technically he could have went to Shaka's body and then he could have just revived that as Brooke and nobody would have known. Um, and I was thinking like, maybe that'd be like a funny gag. Like if Shaka just got up cause York said he's definitely dead. But, um, but it is interesting with what you're saying right here with this, with this panel. Of yeah. Like... I've, uh, I've always been of the mindset that when the Vegapunks died, they just got uploaded to the cloud. Cause that's, mm -hmm. that, that correlates with Vegapunk's dream. And plus he has the no me, no me, no me. He's talked about the internet before. So yeah, I, I do I agree oh, no. that they're all like they all will still exist. That's why I was never fearful for Pythagoras or Shaka. Like if they mm -hmm. die, you could just make another one. Like it's not that big of a deal. As yeah. long as one satellite survives, I think we're fine. Mm -hmm. Or punk records mm -hmm. even. Like punk records, for all we know, could be like um like Sky is Skynet a good way to put it? Yes, yeah, Skynet. It could just make a new body. It could just be like, hey, like we're all dead. Okay, let's just give it like a you know, five years. Our new body is going to be cooked up and be better yeah. than ever. Yeah. I mean, it's also a question of like, it, it's a weird thing that like, again, we're too diabolical for this verse, but why didn't Vegapunk put himself, clone himself into Seraphim bodies? Like the most durable. He, he doesn't even need to be. Isn't combat. that it's usually what evil scientists do too? 
or not yeah, evil, like, like just scientists in general, like like Orochimaru. He's like, hey, I yeah. want that kid's body, so I'll be really powerful. I mean, Frankenstein, right? Yeah, like, Frankenstein, even. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, he Frankenstein the Seraphims essentially. And Absalom like, did that. Moria did that. Or yeah, it was like Moria, Doctor Hog, back in Absalom. They're like, oh, like you know, the, the biceps of a lion, or biceps of a gorilla, chest of a lion, or just something ridiculous. But yeah, yeah, jaw, jaw strength of a lion. Yeah, biceps, skin muscles. of a crocodile. I right? thought it was, yeah, skin of a crocodile and something of an elephant, like the something of an elephant and elephant biceps that's what it is yeah yeah yeah, yeah. it was some absurd ridiculous like honestly at that point you probably would just pick one and you'd probably be better off like yeah. <laughs> that sounds kind of painful mixing but and matching i feel like i remember him being constantly in pain for some reason but like i, I don't even remember like maybe dr hogback fixed that i don't remember but um yeah like it's kind of weird that he never because we don't know the nature of these clones it's feeling more and more that more of them are humanoid than not but some of them are robotic so like and yeah the seraphims i get it guys they're expensive but at the end of the day like he these are his satellites right like he couldn't have i don't know i don't know it's weird it's a little weird i feel like yeah i mean but you could just say that at he never one? expected to get into a fight though yeah, but at least one. One of them being a Seraphim. Maybe he can't afford six, but one? Not even like a Seraphim. I would have just made like a really cool robot fighter body. Yeah, Akuma. Like an Iron Man body. We, he made a 50 Kumas. Why not just put one of you into the Kuma? Yeah. Easy. Yeah. Easy. But like, life is cruel, be... Par. Yeah, I guess. I guess. So, can't have it all. Yeah, you but... can't have it all. We do. I don't. I'm curious if this struck a chord with you, What's given up? that you are, you know, a cat lover. Vega Punk said his tongue is as sensitive as a cat's. Does that mean anything to you? No, not really. It's just an idiom. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Yeah. I mean, it's it's nice yeah. though. It's nice. I just want to ask the cat expert. Yeah, so, the, the cat expert. Um. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Mars and York, they show up in the room that the broadcast took place in or is ah. taking place in and yeah, then yeah. without a moment's notice <laughs> Mars just destroys the room uh, we don't see how he does it you know for all we know this came out of his bosom uh i'm yeah. assuming it came out of his mouth obviously but we don't see it i, I mean you know he just blows everything up and this beam looks really cool because kaido's yeah. uh we, we compared to kaido's kaido's is like you know on stream we yeah it was, it was like a straight beam you know boldly shaded and everything but it didn't have those um like hamehameha spirals around it yeah but this the, one the did sparks of power yeah it looks really cool man what if it came out of his eyeball like he was like and then hey yeah it could it could have came out of his eye but then i'd argue that uh you know we're, there should be like a second beam here for both of his eyes like cyclops no, but it's one it's because like you see how his face is yeah he's he's not like a human anymore he has eyes on i forgot what it's called but um, he has it on one side. So when York says that's the lab, the eye that's facing there just blasts out the <laughs> the laser. So so you think he like turned his head and it's like boom? Yeah 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 yeah. I mean, if it's not the mouth, I would like it to be the mouth. But a good yeah, second the mouth makes most be, sense. Yeah, the good second. No, no, good second is Kamehameha. Like he straight up just did this. Ooh, <laughs> you know what? You know what I like more than mouth though? What? I would like it if it was like um any fantasy anime that you guys have probably seen where like just magic circles pop up in front of them and it just shoots oh, out that would be sick like a, like a magic sigil midair just boom yeah. that would be okay, sick okay. that would be sick oh yeah maybe oda didn't show it to us because it's a magic circle yeah there could we go be. and it could like, be an ability oh, that, that all the gorosei have that'd be sick yeah yeah wait no because this would fall into the play of like these are not the gorosei's powers Th that's emu's powers like emu is just like this is just one of the constant states of Emu, just blinding light. Like, oh, like, what oh. if this is a Lucia beam? Like, wait, hold on. That's kind of oh, crazy. Oh, that'd be sick. Wait, wait, what What if this was, um, what's it called? Like, you know how there's the Roku Shiki? Imagine uh -huh. the Gorosei have their own version of the Roku Shiki, and this is just one of their six powers. The Shiki Shiki. The Go Shiki. No, yeah. <laughs> the, the Go Shiki is just the five Shikis, the five powers. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that could work. Yeah. The five powers. The five powers. Water, air, fire, no, energy beam, <laughs> energy beam. <laughs> oh, yeah, do you think this is? I mean, I guess you know, laser beam, fire. Um, what do you think this is? If you had to just take a stab, 
you know, I, I mean, my fault fail safe is always elemental hockey, but as, as this is laser fire, like electricity. I'm going with it's laser, laser. I don't know. It's not fire. I don't know if it's fire breath because like I don't we already gave that to either. dragons. We gave that to dragons. Like, what are we gonna oh, give? Oh wait, uh, I don't know. Look, like, if, if you look at the panel where he pierces the the building. The uh -huh. building has like these cracks of like like these sparks running through it. Okay. Okay. So at first I was like it could be electricity, but then again the building could just be cracking. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. The lightning around it may but that's not that's It's not, not like exactly. lightning lightning though. Like yeah, every yeah, beam yeah. in the anime has that effect. What Except if for it's Kaido. Ka Kaido's fire breath did not have that. That was the main yeah. point we were trying to make earlier. Yeah. So it's not like but a bowl of breath. Multi-elemental. What if it's fire with electricity around it Ooh, that would be sick yeah like dual colors mm -hmm. like um final hamehameha yeah 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 wait what mars is the fire planet actually right mars mars is was was godhead of what what was mars godhead of i forgot war no, no. that's warkery warkery dang i'm forgetting now justice mars is... mars or justice... so so Justice and Justice is actually Warkuri. He is the yeah, like the yeah. god of war. All the right, god of justice. Um Mars, okay, so agriculture is Jupiter, finance is Nasujuro. Environment. Environment, okay. I like I, okay. I remembered all of them except for Mars. Yeah, yeah. Uh, um the cool thing with Mars though is that if we go to Itsumade lore, I think he did yeah. have fire. But also he mm -hmm. could like, you know absorb the souls of the dead so maybe it's that maybe it's like a cold mm -hmm. beam <laughs> so i looked up mars like you know how i forget you know how each planet has like a symbol and it's like something like water planet and whatever i forgot what mars was but is this funny because i looked it up and the symbol apparently on google translate just goes to confusion it's just the confusion star which obviously is not the one it's like some kind of element i forgot what it is i'm so i haven't been um on top of the names like that kase oh wait isn't that fire i'm pretty sure that's fire uh, kase, kase one piece yeah oh not one piece translate funny enough when you look at the itsumade he has like this green aura around him in some uh mm. like yokai drawings dang do you think he's gonna have wind then? Because isn't green usually wind? Oh yeah. Could oh be. wait, no, I, I was in... just thinking of, like the souls of the dead. To be honest. Yeah, yeah. I was gonna say in Jap, at least in Japanese stuff, like green fires, dead, dead souls. Yeah. Apparently, it's... the Itsumade is all about plague and disease. So maybe this is a disease beam. Disease beam would be kind of cool. That would be sick. Not gonna lie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Imagine he hits you with it, and then ah, oh, god, ah, COVID, ah. And then you start dying, yeah. Just hit straight up with COVID is crazy. That's, oh no, uh, it's the Black one. Plague. <laughs> oh man, I mean, but it's then interesting that when be... you look at it because this is a really clean beam. Like when he shoots through that building, the building is still there. Like yeah. it's still there. It, it's like an actual clean surgical. pierce. Yeah, it's like surgical. Yeah, I just double check, triple check, just to make sure I wasn't spinning out of my butt. But Mars is the fire planet in Japanese. I say. Yeah. So and then we brought up this debate earlier, man. Bolo breath versus the Mars beam. I think it'd be I think it'd be even, to be honest. Ah, yeah, I'm, ah, like I It's so different, right? Because like for for if this was Kaido's Bolo breath, giant hole like the building would be gone. But Mars yeah. is like it's all about that piercing strength. So I don't know. But are you on the camp that Momo's Bolo breath is weaker than Kaido's Bolo breath? Yeah. They're not the same Boro Breath, right? So I put Venus extre like m clashing with Kaido's, but cleaning Momo's. Yeah. I, yeah, I would agree yeah. with that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But if but I don't know, maybe it's just the 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 like I don't know if it's cuz we're old, if we're of another old generation, but Dragon Ball really did something with those energy beam blasts. Like I I would. I feel like Gen Z doesn't wouldn't appreciate it as much as just seeing two beams clash together. I don't know if that's a natural like. Primitive... No, no, it's a natural thing. Okay, okay, okay. It's, it's, like... it's a natural thing. I promise you, everybody loves the beam clash. 
that like Pokemon did it. That shit was like crack cocaine for us kids. And I feel like nowadays it's not as there. Like if if a Pokemon battle had a beam clash, it's S tier fight, like almost out automatically. That's how they started cheating some of these fights. They gave a beam clash to like Squirtle and stuff. And it's like, all right, come on, Vine Whip and Bubble Beam does not make oh. a a beam clash, okay? But yeah, Squirtle sucks, man. Like that's like the worst Pokemon out there. It's not supposed to have a beam clash with anybody else. <laughs> <laughs> that was that what? was that was Michelin star like the amount of glazing that I could do for that for it, I'm just gonna say it you can't cut this out we that was an incredible thing that you thought up to make this connect back after that you, know, that, you were cooking in the I was cooking room. I was cooking dude yeah dude, but uh, that's that I That's don't know how many people will know this. I'll probably just put like a sensor beat, but I had to use the bathroom in between that moment where Par said that sentence. So that's why we came back yeah. to that. But also, um, I love Squirtle. I actually like Squirtle more than Charizard. I'm not, like, I'm not a big Charizard fan. Like Blastoise over Charizard or just Squirtle over Charizard? Uh, Squirtle over... I mean, evolution to evolution over... Ah, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, so Squirtle over like... Charmander. Um, Second form, second form. Yeah, all the way up. Dang, and then blast toys over charizard i'm not i'm not a charizard I think, guy i think a lot of people think i think squirtle squirtle and bulbasaur i think a lot of people might have it over charmander char uh char uh charmeleon is and, and the middle ones is the weird one it's like yeah, you can the go either ones are bad way. Yeah, and then I think that's where Charizard gets the most stock is the Charizard Charizard, where it's like people have Charizard over everything, which is I think you know, I, me, I like Charizard, but I don't like Ash's Charizard. Once I found out Ash's Charizard is like the smallest one. <laughs> yeah. See, I was okay. like <laughs> I I really like um the Mega Charizard or Charizard X or whatever they call him now. Uh-huh. Like like the the, Wait, the black the evolution black with one? the purple okay, flames. Okay. Yeah, I like that. I think that's what sick, but I'm just not a big fan of the red one? and orange. What's up? What about the? What about the? Isn't the other form like he loses his legs or something? Does it? I don't know, man. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I don't keep up with two Pokemon. Forms, right, the X and then the Y, and then X is the blue one, right? And then Y is the one where he like he like loses legs and he's just floating, like like Latios, I think, a little bit. I don't see it. No, I see oh, the red and I see the 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 black one. Mega forms. I don't. I don't see the legless Charizard we're talking about here. Oh, it's not legless. It's just the other. It just has like arm guards. Why do I remember? Oh, maybe it's because the eight bit version, like the the profile thing, makes it yeah. look funny. Maybe that's what it is. Yeah, I, I think for me, I played on Pokemon Showdown. The reason I don't like Charizard is because like I don't like the color schemes. I think the orange, yellow, and blue just doesn't go well together. That's why I do like the, the the different evolutions of it, like the black and blue. I think that's way better. You know what I will say though? That color scheme for Charizard looks better in their homeland. In like in the volcano, it kind of works, you know? Yeah. Because everything's orange and yellow. But like you bring this, you bring this out to like the ocean. It's like what are you, what are we doing? And also Dragonite. Dragonite being that color is kind of goofy. I like yeah. the blue. I like the blue better. I don't know what happened in that one. That one was the weird one, you know, to me growing up. I was like, what? What do you mean that's the same thing? It's not close. That's Charizard's dumb cousin. Like, what are you talking about? What's that's going like, on here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Man. Yeah, Pokemon. Uh, But wait, why are we talking about Pokemon again? Marcus, Mars, um, and Kaido? Oh, Beam Clashes. It would yeah, be, Beam it would Clashes. Be, yeah, no, no. It, Everybody okay. likes Beam. Dude. Every single it, guy likes a beam clash. Don't even. Okay. 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 Every okay. single so guy. You said something. Guy. Do, but do you think it's you know? Do you think we're just sexist and it could be? Girls oh no no like no! It girls too? like it too. So, sorry. Oh, oh, when I say when I say guys, I mean all of humanity, dude. Like yeah, yeah, yeah guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Guys includes the girls. All yeah. of mankind. All of mankind like, likes beam clashes. It's it's, yeah, a, dudes, it's a proven fact. In our vocabulary, is you could be a dude. You know. You yeah, know? I, I yeah. include everybody in that one. Yeah, you, you listening over there, you could be a dude. It, it's like when you address dude, a group and you say guys. It's yeah, like, yeah, yeah. And yeah. then there's, there's girls in the crowd, yeah. Yeah, no beam biggie. clashes. I'm not splitting I, hairs. I, man, it is universal, right? Yeah. That's kind of sick. We should, we should like, as humanity, like, like, do something with that. You know, like, try to recreate. Like, imagine if the U.S. and China got together every four years not the Olympics, but maybe it replaces the Olympics. Instead of having people compete or whatever, we just military guns up against each other. Boom! Mm, and then we just yeah. like watch in the middle of the... I think everyone, like, 
it would it i'm not saying it's better for humanity but it would be cooler i i think i've talked about this before it's like the 10th time i've talked about it but i really think it'd be cool if we settled world wars with presidents clashing boxing, boxing yeah matches. like boxing or just straight up like ufc matches like oh you know yeah, president yeah. trump versus uh putin and then they hop in the ring you know they, they're like steroided out of their mind just going absolutely crazy like you know we want to win so bad we gave trump like a robotic frankie arm like red or even a red king arm oh my god and then putin has the power of like he's like absalom he's got like you know bears and gorillas inside of his body yeah, yo yeah, yeah. that'd be so sick man or I it mean, could be like terraform think... mars where um, we, we come up with like superhuman serum just so we can win these fights. Yeah, yeah. that'd be a one, bro. Technically, we're one living piece in a bad Loki. timeline. One Piece Loki is kind of like like when you were saying like Moria had a scientist and that was his. You know, they used zombies. You know, Caesar used poison. We talked about it earlier. Poison gas is kind of W. You know, comparatively to the other other choices. And then there's Vegapunk who makes child child soldiers you know each to each their own um and then queen covid right obviously you know and you can choose your winner but some have better racing horses um and and for more of those conversations i said like oh i brought up 10 times you didn't bring this up 10 times on these these calls you brought it 10 times in the 50 50 you know, well, well, yeah we did talk, talk about, about that all the time though like yeah, i, I yeah, talk yeah, about yeah, this yeah. in my daily life i'm just like i'll sometimes i'll turn to my wife i'm like babe just imagine just imagine <laughs> <laughs> just, just, just imagine if if uh if we settled debates on a one-on-one -on -one fight with presidents Okay, and so the most important question to respond here is what did, what did your wife say in response? Or what does she normally respond to your intrusive thoughts of human uh, experimentation? Usually wars? just scoffs. Oh. Like, I just usually laugh. get a lot of scoffs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Gotcha. Uh, the, the last 50-50. Oh, Sai, yeah. you again in your silly ideas. Like yeah, that? It, it's uh, <laughs> one idea I bring up a lot is the Alice in Borderlands execution. Okay. Where where like a la like if you lose in Alice in Borderlands, what happens is a laser beam comes up from the uh, comes down from the sky and just executes you. And uh -huh, I was like, man, uh -huh. I was like, wouldn't it be beautiful if every bad person in the world just got Alice in Borderlanded right now? Okay, okay, okay. Interesting. But that's about it. Gotcha. And I gotcha. usually get no response for any of those. I I don't know Sad where this is a trope, but I like it when a trope a character like is joking about like some evil plan like they're a good character yeah and then that then they end up like there wasn't a joke they were they were telling the truth the entire time <laughs> like it's like low key i don't know i can't think of off the top of my head one like that but like i think sometimes in the sherlockian type stuff like if the evil person's right there and it's like haha yeah or like i think scooby-doo did it a lot right like the villain guy was like super obvious and he's just like man if only those villagers paid their taxes but it wasn't me who's kidnapping all the villagers it, uh, that well, i have no motive for that it's like, we usually no, get two just... characters like that per episode in scooby-doo so you know it's yeah, like yeah, 50 yeah. 50 so you, you know it, yeah, yeah. it keeps your anticipation there and sometimes it's done well or done not super goofy, but goofy enough where it's like, uh, that's a that was a good one there, guy. You know? No, I like that. Yeah. I yeah, mean, I'm yeah. writing a I'm in the middle of writing a book and one of the villains is actually yeah. like that. Ooh, I'm gonna like yeah. this book. Dang, it sounds like you're writing this book just for me. Oh my god. No, yeah, I mean spoiler, <laughs> but at the end of the book, when I reveal uh -huh. the villain, I'm gonna show his basement. And his basement is just a torture chamber with a lot of main characters that went missing oh shoot wait oh that's insane setup it's for a nice a epilogue two. yeah yeah you could bounce a lot off of that oh so it's kind of like it's kind of like it's getting to level six impel down yeah and then you find In like a, way, a yeah. crocodile a jim bay and then like it rocks is there like oh I, that'd be sick like i've been imagining this scene for a while it's like yeah like at the very end everything's good all the all the good guys are chilling we say goodbyes and then we visit this one guy's house and as you leave the scene will go down to the lower levels of his house like the main character leaves the house whatever the guy closes the door and then after he closes it you go down to the basement and that's where you have like all the torture chambers and all their friends just down there dang i was like that, that would be a beautiful scene i love it can't wait to read this book then I'm gonna have one day right right I, i'm estimating four years Ooh, ooh are you would you say i'm taking you're... my time like oda or not like oda what do you mean does four years mean four years yeah 
Oh, okay. Yeah, four, four <laughs> yeah, years. I'll probably release it, but I, I'm you know, cooking it up right now, writing the first couple of chapters and uh, I think, just storyboarding a lot. I, I think Oda's lack of time comprehension is the greatest, um, greatest clue we have that he is inhuman. If there were ever a claim that this man were like a fourth dimensional being, it's because he's so bad. He's at so bad with time. times, bro. Yeah, yeah, and that's like the next dimension could be time. And so for a being on that level, time would just be like they tell you five years and it's like, well, five years hasn't happened yet. What are what are years? You know, yeah, what I mean? dude, like, Oda said that one piece would be over in four years. This is year four. Like we <laughs> are in year four. So one piece should be done. <laughs> you know, like yeah. this this year, one piece is over. Yeah. yeah but, but, like, and then Oda's like, hey, guys, also, I'm really bad with times. So it's like, OK, yeah, he, he yeah, knows yeah. he knows it's a joke. The bad and like, you know, like. I'm not. I don't want to jinx anything. You know, shout out to him on the note on the thing. He said the maintenance is just what he needed on this chapter. Yeah. Or, or this break month, but it's like even with his health situation, it's kind of like his health. Like he has some devastatingly crip. Like some people have what he has and is not. Not. I'm not saying successful. People different metrics of success, but the amount of activity that this guy does, like kind of eclipses most of humanity like i think he's definitely in the 99.99 percent of like what someone does in a day constantly over the us quarter century like he has a he's probably if not like in the top 100 of people if not maybe like top 1000 because i'm sure there's other people billionaires whatever right but like the amount of health stuff that he has it's almost like he low-key disregards it too and he just yeah what's diabetes what's uh, eye problems seven years go by and then his man is like what's wrong with you 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 could just ask for a break and get it fixed and he's like oh yeah sure and then he just does it <laughs> oda it's you're like, rich just just take a day off yeah yeah and then he's just like oh yeah i guess i can i guess five years is much longer for you lesser fo-. like he's talking to us like giants low-key like the way oimo kashi dori brogi they would talk about like a hundred years going by it's like that's nothing. That's kind of like Oda a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Five he just years, doesn't guys. care. Yeah. Five years, guys. And it's, it's like, like free oh, written. yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Have you watched that yet? No, I haven't. But I've seen a lot about it. Lot, it's good. I think it was topsy turvy a little bit. Like when it came out, people were like, we'll watch it. Then there was like a dip. And then at the once it finished, I guess, or like the. Is no, the I anime, think it, like, I think end? like episode seven. Yeah. Something like that. Like as long as. as Week to week, there was like an up and down or something, I feel like, because the end part was way louder and everyone's like, go watch it. And I was like, all right, I'm going to put it on the list now. It's going to be J- reading JJK and uh, some of these new things. I love how different Free Run is. Yeah? yeah? Ooh, ooh, that's a high, that's high compliment. Because, you know, like for, for fantasy anime, usually the whole story is the adventure. For Free Run, mm-hmm. it's like, the the post scenes like you know new game plus that's what it is Ooh. it's like it's like dlc content for a game Ooh. and it's it's okay, actually really it. nice how they tell their story oh wait i because because I you only like see like snippets of like the main story through uh, a certain pov and like gotcha. it's snippets and it's it's really nice it's, it's a beautiful anime i love it i love it yeah like i i know a little bit about but not enough to like know anything about the story or the plot. I just yeah. like seen visuals and I think I know a name or two. But like um what you just described plus what I know makes no sense. So I'm yeah, so Yeah, no. I don't want to so spoil thrilled. anything, but just know that yeah, Hamlet yeah, is yeah. good. Ah, dang, and you don't want to spoil a series and you ooh, oh, well we're on a call, so that makes sense. But dang, I'm I'm Yeah, okay. H- Hamlet is good, bro. I don't know. This is going up on the list now. Ooh, top. This is this is cracking three it's, now. It's one of those series where I saw the trailer like a year ago, and I thought uh-huh. it looked awful. I remember making fun of it. I hated I the I soundtrack. I hated the the art style. I hated the the way the characters looked. And then I started yeah. watching, and I was like, "Damn, I was wrong." I'll admit, I was wrong. It's it's actually pretty solid. Dang, but dang, yeah. dang. And you know what? Uh, who else was wrong about something? York and Mars. They destroyed yeah, the room, but nothing happened. Mostly Mars. It's mostly Mars' fault. Let's not put the blame on it. This is the one thing we can't blame York for. Yeah, York she is actually did... adorable in this chapter. Yeah, yeah. I love, I love York. This... I hope she becomes a celestial dragon, man. I'm rooting for her. I, I don't, I'm not going that far, but I, I think, like, this, like, last chapter, remember, I was, like, saying, like, 
Why was she so scared? Couldn't she figure out well, how can a Vegapunk not put two and two together, right? And it's like in this chapter we saw uh, Kaku and Stussy figuring out like, oh, it's probably the Gorosei, right? And yeah. then we like Luchi had like that implied that Luchi didn't know that that was the Gorosei, and in those seconds it clicked. That's the Gorosei, right? And I was like, York should figure out. She talked to them, blah 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 blah. And in this chapter. It's not that it just redeemed it, but like also just the information, what was said, like I don't know, just the progression of it. I I reread this uh in my stream two or three times over while I was reacting, as opposed to after, because I was like, wow, this is really important information right now. Um yeah, it was interesting. Mars was the funny part of this of this section though. York, I'm surprised by how audacious she is. Like mm -hmm. everybody up until this point was like super, you know, respectful, like they use honorifics and everything. And York is kind of just like throwing it out there, you know. Yeah, like yeah. I'm, I'm actually impressed. I would say impressed and surprised. She even commands. She even yeah. gets. Uh, and Mars, uh, you know, he he kind of heeds it too. He's like, you know what? Maybe I am <laughs> going too wild here. He doesn't yeah. say it, but you know, like he he does stop in his tracks. And then she says, yeah. "Of course, I know exactly how to stop this. Besides, we don't want to rack up any more sins. Our relationship is already troubled enough." Which I think even now, after sitting with the chapter for like less than a day, um, that line is still as mysterious as it was when I first read it. Um, and I think on Twitter, same thing. People are like, what is she even talking about? And the only thing that I could connect this to, or uh, actually not only thing, but the immediate thing I connected this to was the word sins was the same thing that Vegapunk described in 1069 that they, to the mother nature, the unnatural status that mother nature, um, w uh, could not forgive or something like that because of this sins of having these dreams of another person. It was something like... What was the exact line? Let me let me not butcher this line. It's also one of my favorite chapters, so let me just be right about it. It says, uh, Every devil fruit is a possibility for human evolution that someone desired. If only I could be like this, if only I could be like that. All of those powers represent the many branches of future of humanity, but that unnatural status is loathed by the sea, the mother of nature, a fitting punishment for its sin. Those with powers exist in different dimensions dreamed up by someone else before them. And then he goes, this is only my theory, but he says, see, so you see, you don't even need to debate whether any God exists or not. Isn't it just a fascinating world? And the important part, obviously, is the a fitting punishment for its sin. And it's like, so in this regard, he's talking about the evolution, the devil fruit itself. Like, it's kind of weird what that sin part was. We don't really know what it means. Why is, is Luffy sinning? Is Luchi sinning? The Gors say, are they sinning? But they don't have devil fruit, so maybe they aren't, right? And then we go back to this line that York is saying, like, they already racked up sins. And it's between their relationships. So, like, why is that? That's such a weird nuance conversation in the thousand plus chapters of one piece i feel like this is one of the most like cryptic weird lines because it's like who else like there's a lot of sins between a lot of characters what what happens when you rack up too many sins york like i didn't think that you what, what does it mean to rack up too many sins right it, and and i also want to add another thing as, as the uh the audacity part right like luchi was terrified when Mars came down, it like Luchi looked like he saw God. It looked like Luchi was scared for his life. He was like basically begging for Kaku, whereas York is faced with the same person, if not more aggressive, because York doesn't have like immediate allegiances, still a Vegapunk to them. And yet she takes this command and says that. And then Mars's only reaction is question mark. Dot dot yeah. dot question mark. And then just changes topics. Like, I think I sent something above. And I think this is like, uh, this is one of those panels we need Sandman to step into. To be honest, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so someone send this to Sandman. Yeah, I don't know. yeah. This and it's the other part is it. Uh, I'm assuming your translations too. It's quotation sin, so it's very specific. Oh, it's not in quotations no. on yours. Oh, see, that's what I was asking. In so the, there are in the four chat. different translations I read. Okay, only two of them mention sins. T and when Ooh. TCB does sins, they're the only ones who actually put the quotations on Quotation it. Words. Okay, okay. The other one says sins. The other one says, uh, "If I cop, uh, if we, if we keep causing problems, it'll be harder to hang out with you guys." And another one says, uh, "You know, like 
let me see. I'm trying to pull it up now. Yeah, because I'm wondering if is it like the hard aspect thing where it's like an actual idiom that like is maybe it's less known in this regard, right? There was another one that I think Sandman pointed out with um with Kizaru, right? When Kizaru was on the ground, he pointed out that that line about saying that um I am wounded, like I'm like the wounds are really deep, you know, like that was an idiom that Sandman pointed out. Um and in this regard, hard aspect, the chapter title seems to be an idiom in that regard, like some kind of phrase that's known. Yeah. Maybe this is a phrase that maybe it could be lesser known. It could be a phrase. But the main thing, if the quotation marks aren't there, then that's important. But I would imagine if TCB used the quotation marks, maybe it is an idiom. And there was a, there's the another biz, translation right? that just says uh, it, it, it actually flips it over entirely. Oh, and they whoa. say, hey, if you have to be careful. If something happens because of you, then you'll have to deal with me. Whoa, whoa, wait. Oh, Which is so like the we, complete opposite. And, and you know, I don't like it's hard for us to use Viz as the arbiter of truth here. Yeah, Viz, Viz is like, a rough one. I, you know, send it to, like, that's what I said. Sandman or anybody who speaks native Japanese uh, could definitely clear this up yeah, a lot more. They usually wait after, obviously, the official translation. So, yeah, the, where, Viz, Viz will give us more weight on one side. I'm assuming it's going to be on actually, this. Sand, we can send this to Sandman now. I mean, he actually uh, reads scans. He reads scans, but does he tweet about the scans? I think he does. I feel like he did. My, my, my days are really scuffed. I feel yeah, like yeah. he does. Uh, uh, I, don't, hey, I don't know. I don't know. A great resource. Uh, thank you, Sandman, for being in the community. Um, great guy. If this was t this cannot be used in the court of law, we're, it's 420, guys. It's 420. Yeah, four twenty. So another sip of coffee. Imagine, like in, like we were talking about off call a little bit, like the legal stuff, you know, spoiler stuff, whatever. Yeah. Imagine in the court a lot. You know how like they pulled up tweets in the police. They pulled up Sandman. Shit? And no, they put up this thumb. We see the thumbnail of this video, and it's like a quote of me and you saying like, "I think Sandman reads skins." <laughs> like, no, yeah, no. they use it against Sandman. Send yeah, him, yeah. send him down to Impel. Yeah, yeah, I'm trying to like put in a bunch of audio clips. So I'm like, don't use this legally, blah blah blah, and then to, it has they have to stitch it in the worst way to make it. That'd be coherent. so funny. No, I apologize. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Whoo! What's the next hey, thing Sam, that happens? I'd offer you a place over here if you needed escape. I wouldn't. <laughs> oh damn! Please don't stay at my house. Oh, okay. That, uh, well, there you go. <laughs> so. York, you know, York and Mars, they're doing their thing. And then Mars says, I sense a voice from a small life form above. And then she's mm -hmm. like, oh, you mean punk records? Don't tell me he hit the snail in there. And then he goes up there too. And he's like, hey, where's the entrance? And then he flies up. And I really wish we could see where the entrance is because I don't know how the hell you enter punk records. Like, it's it's weird. It's like this, like, this tilted ground, right? Well, and, then, and then we like see at the very end, it's just like a dark room. But it's like, dude, yeah. like, what does this look like? I don't know. It, it, it kind of looked like an access door to a, an attic. Like, it was just like a Maybe, pull yeah. door. And like, but then that, like, how did in bird form, did he transform into human form, grab onto the latch, open it in, climb up? Or was the door big enough for a giant bird? Like, did Vegapunk make this accessible? Like, is he is he making it all inclusive for all creatures of all sizes? I don't think so, because movies? Mars is in his normal form at the end of the chapter. At the end of it, right? So then then you, you're left with a comical situation where as a bird, he flies up to the axe store, he clings onto it as a human, and as like an old geriatric man just dangling a thousand feet in the air, and he just pulls himself up like, like a prison Iro, right? But yeah, it's super interesting. I just noticed... I don't know why, but like uh, Mars did the blast and then York tells him to stop. But while she does that, she picks up a bazooka. What was she going to do with this bazooka? <laughs> I didn't even register. I that. guess she was going to destroy the Denden Mushi, which is which is another reason why, like the translation of she's like, hey, you'll have to deal with me. It's like it's so interesting because it's like, I guess I could. I mean, it fits. Yeah, because I, it, 
it, that's the only panel where she has the bazooka. Yeah. <laughs> like, after that, she goes like, "Oh, the dead name is shipped like this," and and it does. Uh, people are saying that's a Illuminati symbol. I'm like, he, she's just making a triangle. Oh, uh, I was pens. wondering what people would say were saying that they're like, "Oh, like, did you see the Illuminati in uh, in the chapter sign?" I'm like, what? If what you, she what did this, if she did that, then I would I would be like, okay, Oda's saying something, right? If, yeah. If did did this out of nowhere, but it's like it's whatever. It's like a triangle. How else would you make a triangle shape? like in your hands if you're trying to describe it right she just did it like more girly i feel like more girls would do it like this that's like guys would do this right like this is a triangle girls no right? I, I i do this you do this yeah i, I do that i i didn't think what? about this one really i feel yeah, like I do, overlapping I thumbs is just more I feel like, maybe i feel like more I mean, when, when, I, when i do this i think of like dragon ball z like the the fusion thing so I, yeah, I like touching the I mean, tips. There's also like this. Like some people. I don't do know who this. the hell does that. Yeah, no. This is like the in the in the thing. This is the this is the actual like Illuminati. Oh. Thing where, like yeah, they'll say like oh the this is when uh when um Kevin Hart uh, sold his soul and you see like all the rappers or whatever all these celebrities you'll just see in a music video they'll do this and then there's like satanic shit in the background. The CD they sold their soul. They didn't do this before. Now they're doing they it. They did it, guys. Like, he yeah, yeah, sold yeah. out. Yeah, yeah. The, the Vega, oh, Vega Punk. Oh, get it? He sold out. He sold his soul. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a good yeah. one, bro. It's a good one. That's I a know, good one. Thank, That's a good one. Yeah, I never, never clicked. Never clicked. That's okay. Famous. Yeah, yeah. You got past the vision. That one. Just like this small voice from uh, everybody on the island, right? Yeah, this small voice. Um, so do you think it's like an actual voice, or do you think it's a Din Din Mushi? Well, so, or, oh, sorry, uh, sorry, sorry. That, that's like a that's <laughs> repetitive. Um, redundant. Uh, do you think it's actually like the sound of the Din Din Mushi or the voice of all things? Is what I meant. Yeah, yeah, I knew what you meant. Yeah, but good clarification. Um, so a lot of people don't know this. Uh, found out on my stream, but I've talked about this. This Den Den Mushi that's being discussed here. It was introduced to us in Film Red, and Oda made seventeen-page notes that the director was supposed to follow. In my opinion, he went off script some of it, but most of it was fine. He introduced all the things. Film Red is fine. Whatever. One of the things he introduced was that this snail exists. This is how Uta broadcasted her concerts. And Oda gave the schematics. And so he gave us the full schematics. The eye is the camera. So understandably so, like whatever it sees gets broadcasted through an antenna. And then there's like an antenna at the top. And that antenna also has a video feed thing that shows what can be broadcasted. So it seems like a two-way thing, it almost feels like. But then it also has a microphone next to its face and its mouth is the speaker. So later on in the chapter, it seems like based off the dialogue bubble, there's a static like a uh, there's a there's a uh, a wiggly line from the part where it says I know I know that points to the Denden Mushi. So it seems like Vegapunk is his voice is being spoken right now via the Denden Mushi. So it seems like logically the voice he heard is just from good hearing, not from like a voice of all things in hockey. Yeah. Which is interesting because if it if it were like like a sentient thing like we were talking about like Zunisha or Legendary Iron Giant or whatever, like that's the kind of thing I wish if it were that way for like he sensed the soul of the Denden Mushi. I would have liked it if like Luffy like acknowledged it or something. Like Luffy's like, huh, I feel like I hear something weird up there. And then Vegapunk like is just like, oh, we don't have time for that right now. Like there's people dying like right in yeah, front of Yeah, please. <laughs> yeah, Get please me off this Luffy. island. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, and that would have been fine. And then we would look back at the line, and then we'd see that, and it'd be perfect, right? But now it seems to me like he just heard it. Like, it ought, like I would guess bird hearing. I don't know if bird hearing is a thing, but that's what it feels like to me. I could be wrong, but that's no, what, yeah, that's same. What I I feel like it's bird hearing. Yeah, like maybe he has really is good bird ears. Good? Yeah, maybe maybe that's a thing. Is, does bird do birds have good ears? I feel like it's better than people, right? Better than humans. I know they have good eyesight. Oh, birds have, in fact, birds have better hearing resolution than humans. So they hear mm, yeah, with much more detail. Ah, makes sense. That's... Par for the course, birds. Ah. Yeah, that's good, huh? That's a good one. Yeah, good one. Yeah, 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 yeah. Stussy. 
says, yeah. wow, what a relief. It's gone. Guess it wasn't interested in us. And it's like, damn, dude, Kaku, man. Mars really left this dude in the bubble, which, you know, I think it makes a lot of sense considering that, you know, he has to focus on the time limit. Uh, th there's no sense in saving Kaku right now when he can, when he can just come back here later. Yeah. Because ideally, like, they do want everything here on Agate Island, right? Like, they want the Mother Flame, they want Punker Records, they want everything. So, with that being the case, he will come back here for Kaku at the very end, I believe. But it still is kind of funny that Kaku was literally right in front of him. And he was like, oh, okay, I gotta go. <laughs> yeah. uh, come on, and York, also, let's, let's get out of here. And also, York told us all the key places that he needs, which is Punk Records, the first floor has the power station and yeah um she's york so there those are the three things the power station punk rackets in york so and and the broadcast the denden movie, yeah obviously the new new objective so given that he knows that nothing else is in the lab and the first he doesn't need to check the first floor then he doesn't need to check up here and what's funnier is that this is the most visible part technically stussy's in the fourth floor building a which is like the center part that has the open canopy because the uh i think s s uh hawk cut it or something the seraphims cut off the top beforehand and so um this is where luffy luchi zoro kaku uh s bear s hawk and shaka were uh i'm pretty sure yeah and so you know this is technically the most visible but yeah, like I remember, it's funny because we spent a lot of time after chapter eleven eleven talking about will Ka will Kaku die, and it was a question that you asked. But like to get to the answer, we had discussed so many directions on how this all boils down. And funny enough, th the discussion ended up landing on two very important things, which was. We were talking about, hey, the Vegapunks need to leave someone behind to drop the dome. We don't know who that is. And we were, I think we acknowledged that the map omitted where the some of the satellites were and Straw Hats, like, last chapter where they had the map. So it was like we didn't know where Robin, Stussy, whatever. But, like, none, none of them really fit in. But now we know Stussy was volunteering for this mission uh, to, to leave the dome up. But also, going back to where you asked about, is Kaku going to die? Yeah, it doesn't feel like he's in any threat. And now that we know he's not in any dangerous places as far as like the power uh thing or anything else there's no other person who can fight him other than stussy as long as he stays in this bubble i don't see a reason for mars to come back and like kill stussy so insane in such an insane way that he risks his lab and ends up killing kaku like i don't see a reason why kaku dies at this point yeah but um yeah it, it is an interesting thing uh thinking about how that line came off and now it's just like yeah kaku's probably fine it's it's good <laughs> yeah he's good he's super chill. and yeah it's so chill that kaku he, he has his arms crossed dude he's chilling yeah. over here he's having fun yeah yeah and but we should be worried about him yeah why, why? because my man has no chill he may be sitting chill but he goes, what in the blue blazes with that monster? Going off of what we overheard, I think it's one of the five elders. Go figure. What a repulsive transformation. That's crazy. Because he deduced that that's his boss. And he's still loose tongue, loose lip McGee over here saying repulsive transformation. That's crazy. Luchi would have punched, would have been like, yo, shut up. What are you doing? You know, right? Uh, I don't know. Because another thing I recall is that, uh, what, Lu no, Lucci was also, like, kind of recalling, like, Lulucci. He's like, oh, like, Lulucci is kind of, I don't know. Like, it, it seems like they both, um, not bad mouth the world government, but, you know, they, they both have the same thoughts. So I, I doubt Lucci would be like, oh, oh shut up. Didn't Kaku say, like, don't involve me in that conversation? Did yeah. he say something like that? Well, yeah. Yeah, so, like, when... When Lucci said that, right, he said he said he was just questioning, huh, I wonder if they wiped out an entire nation. It wasn't like positive or negative, but then Kaku, I think, was like, careful, 
you're that's a that's some dangerous line of questioning i that i don't compare that to this he just straight up insulted him <laughs> like there was he just said he's repulsive lucci was just like oh i wonder what the decision making was uh, the bureaucratics are too complicated for me my lowly yeah. my lowly operative self and then kaku was like hey you're you're questioning too much this is just straight up yo he ugly <laughs> and then he also added in the go figure Right, that was the that was a nail in the coffin. He's like, oh, obviously they would be ugly. Yeah, as you know? expected, just as I thought. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so Kaku, man. And the thing is, the thing is, if our assertion from last chap or last page is true, Mars has really good hearing. He heard that Den Den Mushi all over. You there. think he, he hears sure Kaku here heard. too? Yeah, imagine that. Like, uh, Luchi, Kaku realign re up, and then Kaku, Luchi's like, "Thank you so much for for saving Kaku." Blah blah blah. And then and then Mars just obliterates him. And then Kaku's like, "Why? Why do that?" And it's like, "I thought, go figure. I thought I was a repulsive transformation or something sort of like that." He he references this line, and Kaku's well, like, "To be you fair, heard that? <laughs> in in the other translations, they both say a uh, horrifying, not repulsive. Horrifying, repulsive. They're basically Sabo." Right? Then Sabo to their face, like, oh, it looks like hell up in here. Like, if you invited your friends over to your, like, your man cave or whatever, and they're like, oh, it's hellish in here. That's not a compliment, you know? And this, I, Sabo I don't know. Like, up... okay, so <laughs> if, if somebody described me as scary, like, horrifying, yeah. I'd be like, okay, that's kind of cool. I like that. But if they said, horrifying. oh, repulsive, repulsive, I'd be like, oh, damn, dude, okay. You know what I mean? Like, it, it's very different. I would much rather be described as horrifying than repulsive. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Fair, 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 fair. I'll, when I meet up with you, damn, Sai, you looking scary today. Oh, shit. Hey, thank you. <laughs> There's a reason I'm wearing all black. Dude, dude, these, this, oh, man, repulsive. I, I'm almost thinking about it now that I think about it. What if it's not hearing? But they have telepathy. What if, like, you know, like, we've been saying, like, the mind rope thing? Yeah. And a part of that video was saying that the Denden Mushis are super weird because, like, they probably use whatever this thing is, too. Like, that's innate in them. That's technically the lore of them. We, this is real history, guys, apparently. We used to think that snails that were lovers were forever connected. And so the idea, the myth was if you separated two snails that loved each other anywhere on the world, they would slowly go towards each other. Obviously, very easily not... Like, that's kind of easy to prove that that's not true. Yeah, people and, were dumb back then. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And that that myth is like, you know, seems like what Oda used for Denden Mushi. I don't know if he outright had said that. I think he did in an SPS, actually. I think he said that we used to think this or something like that. But um, it could be that maybe... Because he's has telepathy, maybe he's just hearing the Denden Mushi. That could be it. Yeah. Like, I wouldn't be upset at it, but I mean, I was like, yeah, fair yeah. enough. But but I would like it if it's just pure hearing, just for the idea that he heard Kaku call him repulsive. That I would like it just for that. Just or for horrifying. That. Whatever, you know. Yeah, just for that, that I would like the hearing. He's just the bird hearing. Better resolution hearing, you know? Yeah, Whatever I like that. Maybe. Yeah, yep, yep, yep. Yeah, I mean, Kaku, man. I hope he comes out and does something. Like, you know, I, I know Kaku isn't, like, the strongest fighter when it comes to, like, you know, fighting Zoro or Sanji or Jinbei, but, you know, he could give some of the weaker Straw Hats a run for their money. Like, honestly, I think, like, you know, Frankie versus Kaku would have been a great fight. You know, Kaku versus anybody else from the Straw Hats, amazing fight. You know, that'd be fun. That'd be a lot of fun right there. Like, like I said, he's not weak. So I, I, I see there being a lot of merit in releasing Kaku and even the Seraphim that are still captured with the Cypherpole agents. Like, if I, I was have... Saturn, maybe not Saturn, I would have left one Gorsu member with Luffy and then maybe have like Jupiter go and save Kaku and the Seraphim and get them back on our side. I think that would have been huge, you know? Yeah. Okay, so I... Great, I, I great management right there, min-maxing. Was that it's kind of weird because like people have always said to me, uh, whether it be videos or streams, it's like, but the Gores they care about the Seraphims. But then my clap back to that is they've never mentioned Seraphims at all in all of Egghead. Saturn never mentioned them as an objective when it's reiterated because Zaru never mentions them as an objective. They've never been in the, the cards for the Gorosei. So I think this is like the nail in the coffin for that. They're not even an objective when York is 
taking talking about all the objectives seraphims are not even a worry mars doesn't ask about them york doesn't even tell them but you would imagine hey the gorosei having the seraphim under their wing would be really useful we don't know if the seraphim fall into the same boat as bonnie's thing with the hierarchy chip because what vegapunk said that any like the kuma bodies are all under bonnie's control but we don't know about the seraphim outside of Esper, i guess because that was kind of vegapunk's thing it was like we i don't want you he was like I'm okay with you being killed as long as it's not Kuma doing the killing. Like that, and I'd feel yeah. bad. Yeah, but if it was another one of my creations that didn't look like Kuma, uh, who cares if to give you authority? That's kind of what I, you know, this uh, we don't know what the Seraphim situation is, right? Besides Esper, but imagine he falls under the pacifista uh, clause as well. But um, but yeah, they never went after the Seraphim, and I would have loved that, like you said, to to uh, bring the the seraphim back into the the mix now but then uh, talking about kaku's value one of the things that we found out after the time skip which is one of the only concrete things that we do know that has to have happened and i assert in my video is that kaku seems like he had to have fought s hawk and s snake at the same time because if s bear was locked up with luffy and luchi and s shark was with sanji he said he kept hold alone 2v1 two seraphims which leaves s snake and s hawk which means he fought those on his own he has the value of two seraphims alone yeah he got beat up but then we can also like you know parallel this out it's like we were talking about matchups against the vice admirals how many vice admirals does kaku take with how weak the vas are i think just <laughs> all of them to be honest dude <laughs> So, so that means two seraphims wipe the vice admirals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's kind of yeah. Crazy, I mean, I'm, I'm right? fine with that. I mean, that, that's just how it is. S Hawk, S Hawk versus nine vice admirals. Yeah. Who wins? Oh, S Hawk. One. one v nine. That's so crazy because we. I mean, okay, I, I I don't know, like. It, we also have this weird thing where we put Doll on a pedestal too. Like I, I don't know. I, okay, I, I okay. don't. Don't say I, a I, weird I, thing. Like it's just me and you. Okay, everybody's putting. No, doll on I a don't. Pedestal. Oh, I never have. Well, I don't really care for oh. Doll too much to be honest. Wait, but she one shot a pass. Like she's actually like she actually one tapped a pacifista with just a, like a kick. You know. Red That's King better than that the other vice. I don't know, dude. Uh, we know the pacifist is stronger than the sea beast right i mean yeah they are but like at this point like dude I i'm not trusting these vas anymore bro like you, you, you lost faith in all of them that do you, hard do you think i'm gonna be over here like oh doll's gonna bring it no dude if there's a va to bring it back it's garp who's you know technically not even a va not or even Smoker. doberman Doberman, the the one no, of the long I do, I, standing. Dude, I'm not expecting anything from Doberman. <laughs> They're in the doghouse. They're all dude, in the doghouse. Honestly, house. I like. So don't get me wrong. I still like the VAs a lot. Like these are still yeah. my boys. But yeah, yeah. yeah. When it comes to the them dogs. showing out, I'm yeah. not. I'm not expecting it, dude. Damn, I'm, I'm not expecting like the, the show out. Like they're your homies, but then when it comes to the the dodgeball tournament, you're, they're picked last regardless. Yeah. <laughs> oh, exactly. No. Uh, ooh. <laughs> dude dude kaku 2v wanting seraphims is pretty sick like i want to see that fight i'm sad that it's even if we end up getting it which is you know the point of that theory video it's not even a theory video it's just kind of like hey there's a time skip in egghead i'm pretty sure we're gonna have to add that as things that we have to review or revisit before egghead ends because i think it's important for the end plot of it but Kaku saying that he 2v1 Seraphims and that because that what that means is that he was chasing after Zoro who was chasing after S Hawk who was chasing after Shaka which makes no sense because Shaka walked ran whatever S Hawk got paw pawed fruit to God knows where I don't know what where he paw pawed and fruit him to but Zoro was chasing after S Hawk so that means he was chasing after a paw paw fruit victim or a uh 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 traveler uber uber passenger and kaku was trying to help zoro not get lost as usopp let's not forget as usopp because luffy asked usopp to do it and um so kaku was trying to chase zoro got lost and ended up in a 2v1 and ended up coming out alive that's kind of crazy in my book for kaku so i think it's it's wild 
a little bit that Mars is overlooking these assets. You know, these assets are big. I'm, I really hope that we either see that in the anime, like even if we don't see in the manga, I hope we see it in the anime, just like what happened during the time skip. Yeah, it, but it I don't could know. Be like it, it's like the shock factor, right? Because we came back and it's like, oh my god, like everything's done. So I don't know if they will. Yeah. But yeah, the only hmm. reason why I think that we will is because it has to do with Stella. Like th I think that Stella made like created a plan of some sort, yeah. which explains the weird things that we've been pointing out from chapter to chapter about Stella. For example, no one caring and a few other things. And I think that explanation lies in that time skip. If that wasn't there, I wouldn't think too much of it. I'd be like, ah, Brooke being Astroform. Oh, that could be explained in a panel, like a like a flashback, like the Caesar yeah, Chopper no. moment when Chopper is doing like just a one panel. Thing, yeah, I right? think we talked about this earlier when we first got this time skip too. Like, yeah, we'll probably mm -hmm. see this. Like, if if it is important, like if it turns out that this is all according to plan, then we will have to see it. But yeah, if this yeah. is all like uncalculated, then probably not yeah but, but we'll see, we'll so see. that's where it's like leaning i liking where we're leaning because yeah the calculating side that's cool if it is calculated it's mostly going to be better i don't think that it create more issues but i do think that it is a weird place to be where you know like kazar would bring up like the chessboard, right yeah and sitting on the board is three at minimum three seraphims and a kaku that you could let loose because it's like the gorse aren't turning down help they are, but they aren't, right? They're just taking matters into a hand, but like at the end of the day, I'm pretty sure they're glad that Luchi took on Zoro, right? And I'm sure they'd be glad if Kaku is helping take down the Straw Hats on the coast with Saturn, right? Saturn didn't turn down Kizaru's help. They literally told all the like what vice admirals below below vice admirals to leave, but they asked the vice admirals to stay. Saturn ordered them to kill Bonnie at one point, you know, aim, fire, blah, 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 right? So so it is kind of like Mars should have, I feel like Mars should have. I mean, he was a little hasty a little bit in this in this scene in the first place because he didn't even let York speak and he just went, ah. And then, and then, you know, he just blew up half the lab. But I guess we'll find out. I guess we'll see. Do you think that the Seraphim are going to have more of a role in the in the end of Egghead? Or I, I think we both are on the board after Egghead. They're going to be relevant. But yeah, until um, Egghead ends, do you think they're relevant? Nah. Oda took them off the board. I think, I mean, but but that's the thing. Like, it feels like he took them off the board so early that they could come back later. Like Kizaru, right? Like Kizaru's off the board, but yeah. I'm expecting him to come back at the very end. I think the Seraphim yeah. could be the same way, but I mean, right now nobody's focusing on him, so it's weird. The ultimate forms of humanity. Uh, like... I mean, it's it's weird, but at the same time, like there are bigger fish to fry. Yeah, but they could help fry those the giants. That's a fight I would like to see. Can the giants stack up against Seraphims, right? Because that's a good measuring block a little bit. Like, I mean, yeah, what, but, but okay, think about it. Like, right now, like, where all the Gorsi are and what they're doing, Yeah, they, we only have room for one Gorsi member to kind of do something else. And that's why I said Jupiter yeah. or maybe Warkudi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because But well, right Mars, now they're 2v1ing. He Mars? But he's dealing yeah, with Mars the Mushi. Here. He has, like, the most important mission. Yeah, yeah, but what I'm saying is, like, like the coordination right now. I'm not saying yeah. that it needs to change, but I'm saying, like, they have the assets, right? Like, they have yeah. the telepathy. They literally phoned in and insta-dived in on this. And now we don't even know their plan, but they all spread out without any communication, which is something I loved last time when, when uh, St. Venus just ran to the coast, took care of yeah. business, right? That was sick. Them all doing that, that's fine, right? York just divulged really pertinent information that all of them should have probably heard right and that would maybe explain why saturn decided to bring his sorry ass up here we don't even know how he got up here because apparently nobody noticed him right but maybe saturn hey hey like york also told us the sat the satellites are all right here uh, uh saturn do you want to take care of them since you're the godhead of science defense like they're pretty useful for defense right something like that i mean we still don't know what saturn's doing we still don't know what some of the other dudes are even like their play is what is warcree here to kill or stall is jupiter just eating shit like why did he just open his mouth and start vortexing all like when we saw him vortexing the main victims were the people he told to evacuate right well i mean like, what all it seems like Gorsi... right now is like what war could and jupiter are trying to stop luffy venus yeah, is trying to stop like... them from leaving with the giant ship saturn's trying to stop them from leaving with a thousand sunny like it makes yeah. sense like like i could see them getting rid of the seraph or getting the seraphim out again but right now like 
as it stands, everybody has their own mission, which is why like the only person I could free up is either Jupiter or Warkity, which would then become like or a Saturn. you know. No, Saturn. But be, then let me ask you this. Yeah. What's why did Saturn come up here? To stop the Thousand Sunny. The but, Straw Hats. Okay, so he's coming up here to stop the the, the Thousand Sunny. Okay. Yeah. But in that in that situation where it's Jupiter, Warkery, and Saturn. Yeah. Is is the discussion? It, I guess this discussion goes back to our zone in conversation, where it's like, does do does Warkery and Jupiter go look at Luffy and be like, I can handle that, or does Saturn be like, you can't handle that, but let me take care of their ship, right? And he left on his own. That's kind of what I'm wondering. Like, I wish Oda gave us their dialogue, but he's kind of like not like well, even right now. The thing with Luffy up, is that hidden. Luffy's not even really fighting though. Like he's just kind of fleeing. Like even in this chapter, he's kind of more so running away. And true, then you know, he turns true, around, true, he hits, true. he runs, he hits, he runs, he hits. So they know they're leaving. Like even Warkity said yeah. like, you know, like none of you are getting off this island. Damn. So Spider if, webs if you want useful. them to not get off the island, Venus goes to the giant ship, Saturn goes to the Thousand Sunny. Like if the ships aren't there, they can't leave. So Dang. it makes sense why Saturn is focused on that. And like, like I said, I could see them getting the Seraphim out, but right now, like nobody is available to do it. Mars, I think he could do it. He could free Kaku even. But right now, mm -hmm. that message goes out in one minute. Like there's there's yeah. no room for them to actually say, hey, let's drop well, what we're doing minutes, and save the Seraphim. Four minutes when he's on the, like at the lab, when he explodes it. Yeah. One minute when he gets up there. Yeah, one he's minute super nonchalant. That. And even yeah, even yeah. with Saturn, like Saturn has one minute left. Damn, like they all you know have one we... minute. Like, what, like if you have one minute and you just arrived at the Labo phase, you're not gonna make it up there. It took Mars like what, presumably three minutes to get up to the Punk Hazard or to Punk Records. Punk Records, yeah. So like, yeah, you're like, right because yeah, like they don't have a lot of time. Wait, so maybe he did do other things? Because now I think about it, three. He blew up the lab. It said three minutes. It doesn't take two minutes for him to or three minutes for him to fly. Unless it's it's big, I I don't know. I mean, time has been kind of yeah, strange. Let me see. Yeah, but like he flew up all the way up to Labo phase within like seconds. Oh right? wait, 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 wait. So there were only four minutes left before he blew up the thing. So okay. he okay, so he so blew he it, up. Blows it up. So four minutes, they he talk. blows it up. He talks to York. You know, he has this whole like dialogue discussion with York. Which here, you know what? We can we can we can do this here. Let me let me move out the timer. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna yeah, go yeah. through. Oh, all you want to act it out? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who, who do you want to be? Okay, who do you want? Oh, uh, okay. I'll, I'll be, I'll be. Uh, oh, who has the better? Ah, who has the better? That you have to do that part if you're gonna be Mars. I don't know. You do it. You do Mars. I want to see okay. your rendition of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So <clears throat> Vegapunk says, "I'll start right now." There's only four minutes left now, Shaka or Stella. Sip, sip. Ah. And this then, is definitely yeah. the same room. There is no doubt this was where it was filmed, but... Ah! Oh. Wait a second, don't do anything crazy. Stella, Stella there's, there's not there's enough not time, time left. And See, you didn't stop diddly squat. But we can but cool we... the coffee down if we use a th thermoelectric device to alternate the... If I were Stella, I'd have made sure the broadcast nail w was well hidden. Then I shall continue until the entire lab is vaporized. That'd be a mistake. The second floor of Building B is dedicated to weapons development, and the first floor houses the power station. Not only that, but the third floor of Building C stores a number of high-pressure gas cylinders, which is really important to know. But if you damage any of those, the resulting explosion will blow punk records to smithereens. Then, think of a solution. You satellites all share an identical thought process, correct? Of course, I know exactly how to stop this. Besides, we don't want to rack up any more sins. Our relationship is already troubled enough. <laughs> I sense the voice of a small life form above. You mean from punk records? Don't tell me he hid the snail there. It'll be one of the broadcast snails we finished. We recently finished developing. They're shaped like this with a sort of triangular shell. Huh. Where is the entrance? All right. So Fancy. right there. A minute 40. Okay. Okay. So four minutes. Then we're down to three minutes. We're down to two minutes, about 30 seconds. So it takes he a minute for him to up. fly up. Yeah. 
minute. Okay, all right. So all yeah, right. see, yeah. it all it all makes sense. It all makes sense. Oda is. Go I I swear, Oda's. <laughs> you, using think did you, you think he did yeah, that? You think he did that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but see, but, but, yeah, yeah. No, logically though, that makes a lot of sense. Where like those four minutes were eaten up. Two minutes talking to York and you know finding out where the thing is, and then one minute flying to Punk Records. Yeah. 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 It's very dang. Fair. Oda's a genius, dude. He he was using action figures for sure. I think he probably used an airplane for Mars. He probably has a toy airplane somewhere, and then just like a little Sailor Moon figure for York. I was gonna say like, like the Ro he uses the Robin figure. He's like, oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, just yeah. playing around with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, it all yeah, makes yeah. sense. So I don't think they had time to like do too much else yet. Especially not like with the Seraphim. Like the Seraphim, dude, you have to go underground for them. Like you can't, you can't true. be in a transfer state. You'd have to true, walk true, that. True. Yeah, I forgot they're in the basement of a sky cloud lab. It's such a weird predicament to be in. You're like yeah. underground in the sky. It's kind of like in family. the clouds. Yeah. yeah. And that dude, yeah. those clouds, man, they got moisture. Mm, yeah, they, super got, they, got, moist. they got water, dude. That pyro blowing, bro. Yeah. Yeah. That but yeah, dude, I mean, dude. that's that's very fair. Um, Where were we still? We were still talking about Kaku and Stussy. Yeah. Dude, yeah. One thing I hope that happens is that the Zoro and Kaku fight gets expanded upon in the anime because dude Rob Luchi versus Luffy they're adding a lot mm -hmm, they're even mm -hmm. they're even adding in scenes where Luchi lends blows on Luffy too which I'm yeah, like damn gear, dude uh, pre yeah they, they like it was no no, no in gear fifth oh in gear fifth I, I was yeah I, I didn't see the in gear fifth all, yeah the entire fight, it's uh, it's this next episode that comes out tonight they uh gotcha. they, they released some screenshots and there's a screenshot where rob lucci's like straight up hitting luffy with the with the chest hit i was like dang dude okay dang. Yeah, they're, they're they're showing lucci a lot of love i mean we agree anime lucci over manga lucci right yeah yeah i agree i agree but yeah. i mean you know people people always say like oh like this this isn't canon but at the same time it's like i wonder how oda feels about it you know like when Oda watches the anime, do you think he's like, "Oh, that didn't, that didn't happen in the manga"? Ah! Do you think Oda's like that? Like he's calling up Toei, like, "Guys, why did, why did you do this to Luchi? Luchi didn't nah. lay these attacks." If anything, I could see him be like, "Tone it down a little bit." Like, like I could you see so? him say that. Like, if a, maybe a certain character is like, "Tone it down." Like, if they gassed up, like maybe they look. Yeah. Like well, okay. The, this is like uh, Batman. Van Auger. No, no, like the Van Auger thing. Like maybe. Like, because Henry Thurlow explained his situation on Twitter. He said he just pitched it. He didn't think it'd get accepted. It did. It's a non sort of non canon canon like thing because, yeah, like, it's a cover story. So, like, he had full reins on that. He went traditional hand art with that, too. And I could see Oda being like, all right, Van Auger's not built like that. that please, please don't make Van Auger that crazy. Please, please, please. The story won't make sense if he's that strong. <laughs> I don't know. So, like, like, imagine like, Oda's at the top of the list. Like, they contacted Oda, like, hey, is this approved? And he's like, yeah. I can, I, full send Like, it, I'm not mad at it. I just think that it's... I just think that it's hard to look at anime Luchi and make sense of like later Luchi. You know what I mean? Like oh, oh, in the manga. So I think it's just healthier to just like, okay, this is an anime Luchi and this is a manga Luchi. It's not that it's not canon. It's just that we may not see this level of Luchi in the manga. And if I don't create that barrier, then I'm expecting Luchi to be able to box gear five opponents at minimum and clean house them. And then that's where it gets a little hairy because people are like, wait, Zoro took him out in one hit and Luffy took him out in five or some bullshit. Yeah. And then say like, now, oh, Luchi also land hits, but none on Zoro. And it's like, all right. What a, what a you know. crazy situation. No, I love this, dude. Yeah, yeah. It's, you know, it, it's for the conversation. I think Oda wouldn't shut it down, just be like, hey, let's see what people think Luchi's capable of, right? Because we know at least yeah. Oda has like that part of the, the temperature of the community. Like what we... Like, what we like. That's why Law stayed in the story. He was a fan favorite, right? So people like Luchi. I was like, oh, shit, Luchi is scary. And then I was like, S you said scary? Okay, okay. I'm going to gonna make him fight some holy knights? Uh, who else can I make him scary against, you know? Like, that's what Oda's thinking. He's going to, later on in, in, in another arc or later down the line, he's going to think, like, oh, I need something scary in this, in this arc. All right, let's bring Luchi in, you know? Like, he could do something like that. That's kind of, I could see him doing that, and it would go off well. Yeah, I think Luchi stocks have been consistently going up. They've been looking good, history. man. Yeah, yeah. The uh, a few people saying Luchi was admiral level prior 
to all of these things, the Zoro defeat and like all the stuff, they've been eating well. They've been brazenly speaking out on their Luchi is Admiral agenda, Admiral level agenda on Twitter, everywhere else because the anime, you know, and I don't, I, I don't blame them, you know, but... I don't blame them. I mean, then, and then even like Manga Luchi, I think looks pretty solid too. I mean, not like Admiral level. I mean, I, I don't know. He, he's there. He's like Green Bull level. Yeah. And then the, the yeah. thing with Luchi too is that even with the Zoro fight, I think I think Luchi looked really good in there in the manga. Zoro, oh yeah, 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 for yeah. sure. That's what I'm saying. He's gone up ever since we got the. It's been what thirty chapter gap, right, or something. Yeah, Zoro, like Luchi I think so I think we got the what hap- what we saw in the anime, I think, is very believable mm-hmm. when it comes to Luchi, and I think that just hypes up Zoro even more too, which is pretty cool. Like, and the, the whole it all comes back to Kaku. Like, I wonder. Cause you know they can't they can't like put Kaku like at that tier as Luchi, but Kaku's still awakened. He's still gonna do some stuff. So I wonder if the anime nah. will respect that and give us a really cool like Kaku Zoro moment, which I feel like yeah. they might. Cause like you know Luffy and Luchi, maybe eight panels in the manga, eight nine panels. Yeah. Zoro and Kaku, I think it was like three four panels. Mm-hmm. So it's like yo like if we just get one ep- like because we're getting two episodes of uh, Luffy and Luchi, but. For Kaku and Zoro, if we get like one episode of just them, oh my god. Yeah. They're oh, gonna throw damn. in Annie's lobby flashback too a little bit, right? Like, cause it's not Luffy Luchi, so they're gonna use a little bit of filler rather than I, I don't think they even did that in the Luffy Luchi fight. They in didn't Luffy Luchi, in, no, no filler. Yeah, so I'm saying if for a Zoro fight, they might pad a little bit with some Annie's lobby. I don't think throwbacks. they will. It, they I, they've been going they've been doing really well in this last arc like whenever there's a filler yeah, I would like episode that. i would like the that. filler episode gets its own little thing or it's brand new like ohar ohar was mm. a brand new sequence so it's yeah, like yeah, I, I think true, uh i think they're going pretty crazy on this man like yeah. final saga one piece it's not the same like people are like yo like i don't know if you've seen online too people are anime. like no not even that they're just like hey uh you know I, i've seen the last couple scenes of one piece when is when does the animation and the uh, pacing and everything get this good and it's like, oh, it's just Egghead. Like, if you want to start, start at Egghead. And I know, yeah, like, there's a lot of, like, you know, purists out there who are like, oh, like, you can't just skip all the arcs and go to Egghead. But it's like, dude, if somebody wants to watch an anime, like, who are you? You know, you can't, like, gatekeep that. No, like, have them start at Egghead. And if they like it, then they'll go back. Like, that's just how it is. And it's just a weird way to read it, but it's not a wrong way to read it. And yeah, I it's not a wrong way. That's, and even then, it's a, like, it's, solid... it's not like, you know, the spoilers are a bad thing. Like, you, you think the guy's going to, like, hop off the internet for like five years while he catches up to one piece no nah, dude he's gonna know spoilers he probably knows what gear fifth is and knows what it looks yeah. like yeah i mean there's some things. series there's some series i feel like there's one or two series i accidentally did that and it didn't bother me um i think that even like sometimes when these series do that right like oda literally put out a message saying like hey now's a good time to start yeah. and he also knows that even with the manga people don't read weekly like people tune in once every month or something and they're just like hmm let me see what this chapter is about and then they get interested and read the other chapters around it the ones before whatever like he knows that's a thing and it's probably more of a thing for the anime because it's a lot more casuals but it's like yeah egghead egghead is doing wonders and it's crazy because a lot of people don't like egghead like i'm not gonna say a lot of people but a lot of vocal people like someone on my shorts like like a few people we're like, ew, I can never watch this trash animation. And I don't even know if they were like, they weren't like Boruto fans like on Twitter. I feel like they were just trolling. Up, it, was, it was like people who read the manga and they were like referencing things. In, like they were saying like, that's a great idea. Ew, the animation. And I'm like, huh? I Like I want, one of the comments, it's it, like, ah, oh, this shitty animation. He said in a way, like, I was like, oh, I'm so sorry. I'll improve my editing, right? Because yeah. um, I edited that one on my own. He's like, no, not you, the One Piece anime. And I just didn't respond. I was like, Ew. It's bait. I was just it's, like, just, it's just bait. Yeah, yeah. I was just like, I could, like, spin this out for the algo thing. But, like, I just can't see it. I just don't get it. Like, there's people grasping at straws and, like, comparing. I'm like, dude look at this and tell me you can't enjoy this like this is sick it's a seven deadly <sighs> sins enjoyer dude that's all it seven is seven deadly sins enjoyer is criminal i think yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i think that's I feel a like crime. the story to it that's fine but you, you can't you can't you can't tell me that the the art style is good. yeah but um i don't i yeah, think I don't know. no one would call themselves in a seven deadly sins enjoyer i feel like that's criminal like, yeah it's a title nobody wants yeah, yeah. it's a title Please nobody no. wants but um yeah i don't know like 
if people want to hop in here to Egghead Island and enjoy the story this way and then go back later, I, th I think there's nothing wrong with that. Everybody enjoys things differently. Like, I remember I, I did like an, like an episode reaction to Luffy versus Lucci. And yeah. in between the fight, I paused it. I was like, yo, like, that's that's awesome. And then some mm -hmm. people are like, oh, like, how, do, how could you pause it here? You're ruining the episode for yourself. I'm like, what? <laughs> like, do you think I'm so dumb where like, I'm like, oh, my God, but the episode's ruined. Like, because I paused yeah. it when, um, what, like, during the battle, and I also paused it at the very beginning where Luffy, like, jumps in front of Lucci. I'm like, I was mm -hmm. like, whoa, that's, that is, like, super sick. And then, like, oh, yeah. you ruined the impact of the scene for yourself. And I was like, no, I did Like, what, what are you talking, like, dude, you, you think in my brain I can't just put this all together and, you know, experience it? No. Like, I'm not yeah. like a monkey. Like, I don't think most humans are monkeys where, you know, they, they just, they have like a little gap right there and they're like, oh, I can't piece it together. Oh my God, <laughs> the impact is gone. It's, it's like, you know, it's like how I read spoilers for everything I watch. Like, uh, yeah. I think at least like 80% of the animes I watch, I look up spoilers. I, I look at the final mm. episode and then I go through to episode one. It doesn't ruin anything. If it's a good story, if it's well animated, nothing changes in my opinion. Yeah. I do hey. something similar, but I just asked my best friend, hey, have you yeah. heard of this? Is it worth watching? And he's just like, and there's like something that happens at the yeah, end. Yeah, let me tell like you the ending. It. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like sometimes yeah. for these other things, um, which is uh, interesting because uh, he he's there's just a, like he he when I started my channel or closer to I started, he would only read officials. But once yeah. I started my channel, he knew I started my channel. I think he slowly got into our community. But my guy at one point was fiending the spoilers. Like, yo, did you read the spoilers? Fiending I'm the like, spoilers. That's so yeah. funny. Like, we were sitting down at K Barbecue and he was like asking me, I forgot what chapter it was. I think if I thought about it, I could think of it. But he was asking me what, um, Oh, it might have been during Garp stuff. It might be during that. And he was like, did you read the spoilers? I was like, I thought you were officials only. He's like, nah, I kind of got into that shit. Once That's he, how it is, he dude. He told me. I think I told him about like uh, like some places on Twitter or something like that. Or no, he was on Reddit. But then I guess he just like went more in. And he's been hopping into my streams recently. I'm like, damn, that's crazy. Because, you know, he can read the officials. He can also read the Raws, too, if he wanted to, obviously. But, um... You know, he has to wait to the fish. That's how the spoilers America. get you, man. Yeah. I yeah. remember, like, growing up, like, I used to do that for Naruto and Bleach in One Piece 2. I never Damn. waited for the official, bro. Like, I remember everybody I knew at the time, chapter, it drops on Wednesdays. That's it. It was I a was different like, era. I, I was a different kind of uh, rebel pirate person. Uh, so me, like, it, this awoken, uh, I think, with uh, Joy Boy Theories in my stream with him. Where I remembered, like, because it was right after Akira Toriyama's uh, passing away. Yeah. And um, I remembered, I mean, I still have them. I have, like, every, like, some of them I don't even think are movies. I don't know if they're released, but there's some Dragon Ball Z. I have, like, 20, like, or 40 discs. And they're just from, like, Bangladesh. And I would just, like, watch them. And that's just, that's, like, I had One Piece stuff, too. Man, it's such a crazy time. But Just like, a bunch of bootleg DVDs. Yeah, 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 yeah. I used to buy Dang. um I used to buy uh dr so funny enough, they sold Yu-Gi-Oh and Dragon Ball DVDs at Ross. Ooh, I used to, I used to buy that up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that's how I um saw I didn't see all the GT because I only saw like bits and pieces, but I remember I had a GT Dragon Ball uh Dragon Ball DVD from Ross. And it yeah, was when yeah, uh, yeah. Frieza and Cell come back, and I was like, that's so funny. Oh yeah, so yeah. Dragon Ball too. GT, I had like everything. I had a Game Boy Advance cartridge, so I'd watch the episodes on my Game Boy, like as a portable DVD player. But it was just a cartridge. Yeah, and, what like, strange times, man. Yeah, now we're in such a like cookie cutter world, bro. And like these dudes are getting arrested. It's crazy because like this industry of the spoiler stuff has always existed. And but soon there's gonna be a new version of spoilers. Just watch. It's gonna be on that um. What is it? That, that little thing you attach to your chest, that AI bot? It's going to start oh, reading out spoilers to you. I didn't look into that, the MKBHD thing. Yeah, he said. that drama is so funny. Every, that, yeah, I looked a little bit into it. I'm like, wait, everybody said it's bad. Why yeah, so to give, to give people context on what we're talking about, MKHB, MKBHD is a popular tech YouTuber. He does reviews on a lot of new tech. And there's this AI chip, not AI chip. It's like an AI camera bot thing that you attach to your pocket. Or pocket humane. protector. Humane AI. Humane AI is what it's called, yeah. And then you you essentially, like, whip out your palm and it, like, scans things. It tells you things. 
it's like really it's supposed to be really smart it reads your messages and it does it does all that good ai stuff right yeah. And he released a review saying that it's awful. Like right now, it's the bad. worst product he's ever. Used. Yeah, he said it's one of the worst things he's ever reviewed. But he did, you know, he put in the caveat that said, "Hey, but there's some good ideas here." He said, "Like, oh, in the future, you know, give it a lot of years, it's probably gonna be amazing." And yeah. one guy, I don't even know who it is, just some random guy, some you know, influencer, whatever. He came out and he was like, "Oh, like." MKHB, MKBHD, um, you know, he's abusing his power. He has 18 million followers, you know, like how dare he do this to a company like this? You know, like this is a death sentence to this, to this, to the tech industry. Like he, yeah. he, he should know that uh, his words have weight. And it's like, yeah, that's exactly why people like him. Like well, yeah. what, what you want him to give out an unhonest review? Like, what are you talking about? You know? Yeah. 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 Like, like that, that's and, if yeah. we can never criticize any media, right? Like that doesn't make any yeah. sense. It's such yeah. a bad take. Yeah, I mean, we experienced that in One Piece thing where it's like if you were critical about the chapter like a little too harshly or anything in your reaction, you're guillotined for some reason. It's like, bro, it's a reaction. Like, chill. But his thing was a full-fledged review and he gave, backed up his information. If people were pulling apart that stuff, that's different, right? But they weren't. They were just like, his thumbnail, his his conclusion is all bad. It's going to kill this and company. Whereas, like, you could have went the other route because I've always aware of this company, but then I was like, wait, they're in AI? Like, what? They were doing some crazy other things before, but that's the reality. They just randomly got, like, $100 million of investment and pivoted their company to AI and made this thing. And I don't know. I think they were biotech before. I don't remember. I, I think maybe it's a different company. And it was a but... $700 chip, too. So it's like he saved a lot of people money. I don't know. But but yeah, the, but yeah. but the guy who commented was like, oh, like... Like, people could have just bought it and then refunded it if they didn't like it. It's like, no, like, that's a waste of time. Like, that's a waste <laughs> of time, waste of money. Like, just, no, if I could just yeah. watch a review of a guy I trust and he says it's bad, it's probably bad. Hey. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. it. And yeah, fair enough. It, uh, bias, I'll put my bias in there. I like MKBHD. Me I've too. I think I think he does really good reviews on YouTube. I'm sure a lot of people know who he is. I feel like everybody who's watching this video is probably like, yeah. I know they who that should. guy is. Yeah. Marquis Brownlee. Buy, yeah. He was in Fortnite. If you buy technology, you should check up your technology it, your intended purchase just look up that and then his name he's probably reviewed it yeah him or lioness I, I feel like there's a lot of yeah. trustworthy tech reviewers out there yeah lioness has been going through the dirt but yeah it is, it is. <laughs> yeah, it's a different story but um yeah yeah speaking of dirt uh stussy she's about to kick the dirt because she is staying behind to open the labo phase barrier uh that's cool uh we only have an hour left before my camera dies so we gotta speed this up a little bit so stussy oh, you know oh, okay. she's sacrificing herself she's gonna be gone uh, i think she'll live but she might be yeah. captured by the world government i could see cp0 capturing her like mars comes back to the room saves kaku he says stussy you betrayed us we're gonna kill you or hold you hostage or something. Famously, she will suffer from the famous trope of she's too hot to die. And we yeah. know how Stussy's minimum like 80 years old. <laughs> like, yeah, and Stussy's this, gonna live. Yeah, and so she's she's that, but then also I think about this like in the Shinobu way where it's like Raizo, he's just dead. Like Green Bull sucked him, he's dead. Shinobu got sucked the same way. She gets liposuction, plastic surgery, loses the 20 years that she lost and turns back to her prime, right? Like, Stussy's in a boat like that right now where it's like, yeah, yeah, Stussy. You got, she gone point blank by Luchi who was trying to kill Vegapunk and like, you were like, oh, and we thought you were going to die. And then you're just fine. You're bandaged up and you're cool. Uh, I guess Chopper and all the doctors, the best doctor in the world save your life. Cool. Um, but like, I... I feel like there's no reason to kill her except the one thing that I did notice yesterday, but like it, I don't know how big of it. It looks like, at least in this version, it looks like there's tremble lines. It looks like she's, it, if we were to put emotions on this thing, it feels like when she's saying, I decided to stay on my own volition. It's like, she's trembling and dying. As yeah. She's imagine saying. she's being like brain controlled by Vegapunk. She's like, please get me out of here. But she's like, no, oh. I, I am having a great time. I want to stay. And then deep inside, she's like, no, <laughs> please. I want to live. Yeah. Yeah. Be good. It's like Reiju. It's like Reiju, the prototype Vince Smoke who, who has their own emotions but for some reason cannot disagree with judge like that was something that she said like she yeah. cannot refuse his orders whereas like the vin smokes and sanji or the other the brothers and the sanji can it's just that they don't have the emotions reiju has some emotions but can't listen to all of them because judge his orders so maybe because she's the first 
successful clone. Maybe she has something like that where she has like Ooh. these certain things, but like Vegapunk it's, has like it could a be weird like hold. um Detroit Become Human where like the AI robots they have to follow their master's orders, but deep inside uh -huh. like there's this giant wall and they're just banging on it. They're like, please no, I I want free will, <laughs> get me out. Could be it. Yeah, that'd be cool. Now they were. Now that I'm talking I mean, it would about suck it, for like, Stussy. I, I would start feeling bad for her, but... Maybe Stussy is the one who frees the, the Seraphims. Like, that's her last thing, because she had that strife in the Kuma flashback. Like, am I even human? Like, is this real humanity? And yeah. maybe she saw some of the humanity in the Seraphims. Like, that was being teased throughout the arc slowly. They went from not talking, like, literally nonverbal, to now, they like, when they were stuck in the bubbles in 1080. 1090 they were all like how dare you put me in a bubble ah this one you were never our targets like they each had some kind of line except for i think s bear but um it might be that maybe stussy sees herself in them and maybe she ends up freeing the 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 seraphim somehow i don't know I but she that. doesn't have the authority but like it could be something that the seraphims recognize stussy as like one of them you know because you know, maybe and then the gores they swoop in and then they're like hey get back to work <laughs> Yeah, was, that's yeah. how it would go. But you know what? Imagine Stussy dies though. Uh, imagine like this feels like a Monet sad. moment, where Monet like no. her her final thing. She was trembling too, and then she hits the button, and then she's like, "Sorry, Caesar, I'm dead." Nah, it would be crazy, dude. If Stussy dies, Monet was kind of good though. Dude, Monet was good, dude. If yeah, Stussy yeah. dies, bro, this would look great on Rob Lucci. Just one shotting Stussy for no reason. I I mean, not no reason, but you know, like. Just one she gone, boom, dead. Yeah. Base Lucci. And then if she dies, this would also make Chopper look bad. Cause Chopper was and tending Vegapunk. to her wounds. And yeah, and Vegapunk on the durability. But I he mean, he has a whole even organoid. Then, no, but he has like fake organs being farmed up. Like yeah, <laughs> stem like, cell surgery for Bonnie two dude, years ago. Dude, better not die. That would be so weird if she dies. I don't know. Why? But he, when you, okay, you're oh wow the monet thing i've never made that connection but like it's a winged girl kind of good looking different style than like a nami you know archetype but also she had the fight you know like yeah luchi zoro whatever right cool but monet bit somebody she bit she had that whole like you know on to shigi she yeah. bit her and then stussy also had that little bite bite thing and then it's maybe oda has like a like a like a like dang a and then zoro formula. also one shot monet and then yeah you know, the attack zoro did on monet shouldn't have even hurt her because it wasn't hockey like she was like yeah. i just can't put myself back together which we still don't really know like it's is that De zoro's demon aura like is that conquerors i we still yeah. have no concrete is that like, shusui clue yeah is it chusui we have no idea but after monet took that attack she was dying she was like she was like oh god <laughs> like, i need to press the button and that was it yeah. so i mean this yeah. could be stussy's moment you know zoro luchi they just fought maybe luchi yeah. just like zoro to monet Winged just one shot lady. stussy yeah so strange Damn. so strange huh i and hope stussy she does doesn't... survive though dang this is making miss bakken's like like, because eventually we're going to get Ms. Bakken's. Yeah. When we get Weevil, we're getting Ms. Bakken's. We're going to get her lore. And, like, you know, Monet was weird because we got introduced this, like, all of a sudden this green flying harpy girl is in the th series. And I don't know what people's situations were at the time, but I imagine she was enthralling for a lot of the community, given their discussions about Carrot, for example, right? Yeah. So Monet is probably in a similar boat. And she was a standalone girl. We didn't know much about her. She was, like, sort of seductive to Law, biting, you know, uh, 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 Tashigi. Ooh, ooh, fan service. Cool, right? Stussy's gonna get that. She's already been getting that. But then also, later on, we found out Monet's sister was, like, the linchpin in Dressrosa, who a lot of people look at Sugar and it's like, maybe that's what Emu's like. And now I'm thinking, like, damn, wonder what Miss Bakken's story is like. Because Miss Bakken's is such a weird character because Miss Bakken's is, like, Whitebeard's wife or whatever, baby mama, Weevil's the bastard child. We don't know from where, from what. Connected to Vegapunk, who knows? I don't know. But then she's the clone of her. This is it's like it's like a weird sci-fi rom-com op like a soap opera. It's like such a random net like a uh, web of people connections for Stussy that the reason why I went through all that is like 
it's because when I brought in the Miss Bakken's ideas, like maybe we don't need her anymore. But then I'm thinking, okay, Miss Bakken's is in a bad timeline. Maybe Stussy goes in the good timeline, and that's why she stayed like they look very different. But also that line that Vegapunk said, and like you know the value of your humanity. Like Stussy's like you know she's kind of like not valuing that, and then so Vegapunk's like reassuring her and. I would imagine there's a character arc behind that. And it's a similar character arc to the Seraphim. So I'm I'm gonna lock it in, ending it here. Uh she's living. She's living. There's no there's no sussy down. I think she's 100%. living because of her devil fruit is or not devil fruit, her powers as well. Ooh, I didn't even think about that. So You're a right. part a part of my like the, the video will be out tomorrow, but I'm doing the Shanks and Werewolf, the Shanks yeah. Werewolf Mihawk vampire video. And yeah. I'm like, guys, like I think Sussy is an actual vampire. Yeah, like like like, like, a, like a real I, vampire that got transformed into one by the like head vampire. Ooh, ooh, that's my that's okay. like a part of my theory too. I'm saying ooh, not because like we people have talked about Stussy and the vampire stuff, but your full theory you've told me, and I think you teased a little bit on streams before. It's nothing but, that um, deep, but yeah, yeah, yeah. But like I'd never, I didn't didn't think you. Dang, you really are a theorist now, Sai. On the weirdest things, I mean, yeah, uh, small things, small things, but. All right, guys, make sure to go like that video. <laughs> it's, it's not even out yet. Theories. It's out tomorrow. We need a new channel, Psy slash Theories. Oh, my God. That's what I'm turning <laughs> my uh, my retcon channel into, my, my second channel. Yeah, the T stands for Theories in that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm starting yeah. to put, like, more, like, well-edited thought pieces over there. Yeah, yeah, I got it. R reading, uh uh entertainment oh. theories uh connection oh there we go there we go there we go uh so we go down on the chapter we see the straw hats we kind of talked about them already they don't really add too much here you know edison's like hey i'm gonna get you something i don't believe in miracles edison no and then <laughs> you know like <laughs> that's pretty much it you know the, the coup de bros is ready they're waiting on zoro and jimbe that's cool and all uh you know yeah. that's that's pretty much it and then we go down to Luffy. Big suck. Got Jew Peter. He's sucking in everything with his uh, giant vortex. It's pretty cool. I, I I think this might be one of my favorite attacks in the series. It's A1. <laughs> and it's so strong that, you know, people from off the coast are saying, hey, like, watch out for this uh, this wind. It's it's insane. The giants are trying to run. And then Luffy's like, yo, like, we got we to gotta throw a building at him. Eat this. And honestly, I'm a little bit disappointed in Oda. I'll, I'll say it right here. So last chapter, Oda did the Red Sox thing, right? You know, Luffy, yeah. Red Sox collaboration, boom. Luffy has a baseball bat. Uh -huh. I was really disappointed because One Piece also has a McDonald's collaboration going on right now, too. I was expecting Luffy to turn the building into a burger. Didn't happen, it's, man. Oda, what are you doing? Because Oda's boycotting McDonald's. That's why. He's boycotting it by, uh, by collaborating with them. Yeah, yeah, sadly. I mean, that that's not his decision, technically. That's the unfortunate part about going getting Hollywood is that you got to make some deals with the devil, you know? Oda's, Oda's dealing with the devils. That's, I think in, in my... I think a lot of people have said this in on the low low, but the reason why he's able to depict, like, the Gorosei or, like, these world atrocities is because, like, he has some insight on them, dude. Like, he's seen some shit, I feel like. You think like. so? I... He, we, I mean, off the call, we talked about a certain One Piece mega fan uh, that exists in this world. They're kind of, you know, if we were, if you, I think in the modern 2024, if we were to draw a Gorosei member, I think I know exactly what they would look like, is all I'm going to say. I draw, if I had to draw a Gorosei member based on a real you life may or person, may not have introduced me. Man, let me tell you, man. Genghis Khan. No, oh, Genghis Khan is like Nika, though, isn't he? No, no, what? Well, then again, yeah, I guess like a liberator. Genghis Khan? Yeah, I don't like him though. Yeah, but that's because you're on the loser side. Yeah, I always, I always vote for the losing sides. But yeah, um, yeah, if, yeah. Like I'm not a big the... Genghis Khan fan, dude. Well, we're all the losers because we don't have the uh, the butt stamp. You know about yeah. that, right? Yeah, we don't have yeah, the yeah, butt the... stamp birthmark. Yeah, the birthmark. If you guys don't know, uh, it Genghis Khan's lineage gives a blue-ish birthmark on your left butt cheek, I think. So yeah, that's a that's a thing. Yeah, check Go the Google. mirror. Yeah, some people found out in their early their their early thirties that they're like, oh my god, I'm white and I'm related to Genghis Khan. And I was like, hey, 
any you could be anything <laughs> anything you set your mind to <laughs> genghis khan was putting in work dude yeah yeah so like that's why i don't like the gorsei comparison you made there he's not gorsei he's like he's like the nolan that they tried to stop you know but he went, made it too far no i i still like genghis khan as a i i feel like my gorsei my my gorsei lineup would be it would definitely include genghis khan genghis khan alexander the great um no. what's up nah that's not the the gorsei are like joe biden and like uh, and Putin and like no, well, Oda Joe Biden drew would be them like after father. Gorbachev. He, I mean, Oda actually drew some of these guys looking like these current leaders that have been sitting on their pedestals and and their thrones. They're not the the conquerors, you know. They're not. Hey, the, hey but they got the, the conquerors hockey man, dude. Oh, Drew Peter should have put conquerors yeah, hockey behind this suck. Um, imagine the <laughs> imagine the vortex is you know happening with Drew Peter's mouth and then conquerors hockey's coming out of it too. That'd be sick. Would it come out or would it go in? What if he could suck conquerors hockey? Ooh, that would be nice. Yeah. Yeah. See, but oh, the problem is he's not. You know what would be huge? If, okay, what would be huge? It would be huge if <laughs> if you got inside of Jupiter's mouth, it's a hockeyless mm -hmm. zone. Like, like what, what if all hockey is null and void in Jupiter's mouth? And that's why he tries to swallow Luffy. You're giving him a domain expansion, okay? You, yeah, you're too I'm, much I'm, with yeah. <laughs> Inky spell fragrance. Banned you're card, but let me tell you, he, he has it. Simple domain expansion. Like, that's what you just did right there. It's yeah, like, hey, he it's... needs something. I mean, if not, I mean, th there's no digestive fluids in there when he ate Luffy. You know, Luffy didn't come out saying, oh my god, my skin burns, you know? Like, he really just oh, swallowed Luffy and quick. just, that's it. He didn't even bite you him. You said it was a quickie. You said it was a quickie, though. Yeah, it wasn't I mean, like Nola in Sky Island, right? That was different. well, but even then, like you know, if if this is a high tier power, man, it, he better work fast. What if this is like Laboon, and there's actually the real Gorosei members inside Ooh, controlling that would be cool. him? Yeah, you know what yeah, I think would be really is, sick. You know how what? like um Nasujiro like half half man half horse. It would be cool if Jupiter's like a real body was inside the worm. And he's he it's like a giant head and he's like ha, 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 you know like Orochimaru. He's the he's the tongue. He's sick. on the tongue of yeah, the Yeah, yeah, he thing. is the tongue. Or the, he's, he's like the Rikar from Elden Ring. He's the he's the punching bag in the back of the throat. He's Ooh, just yeah, say, yeah. Say. Or he could be like um I forgot his name now. Uh Hector from Resident Evil Five. Oh, I know what it looks like. I know. Sorry, his Wait, name's did, like did I watch you play it? His name's not I, Hector. I think I watch you Maybe. Play it though, right? Resident yeah, yeah. Play there was like shoot. this one guy. Uh, he he's like a giant fish monster, but the real body's inside the mouth, and then that's that's yeah, that's pretty much it. Maybe I skipped that stream. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. but uh, I either way, I mean, Jew Peter, man, I don't know what's going on with them. He just eats a building and then he starts wiggling in the background, and that's it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Luffy goes out of gear fifth. You know, I guess picking up the building was too much. And plus, you, you know, he's been doing this for like nine minutes. Sideways, Tired. you came out of my stream defending his ass. You said this is the most impressive thing you goddamn near seen. Oh no, no, no! Movie. It is impressive. No, no, don't don't get me wrong. It's impressive. <laughs> I, I, no, I still like Drew Peter. Scooted by it. You just skated by it, and you just you ended with the part, my favorite well, part, where Oda gave us the depiction of him wiggling, choking. No, no. The here's the thing, though. though. Like, I think Drew Peter is so impressive. I don't need to defend him. Oh, yeah, oh exactly. Oh. You know, I'll, it's understood. I'll add to it. When he swallows that thing, it looks like a crown. It does. I mean, he is king. He's king. Oh, he yeah, is yeah, king. yep, yep, yep. Well, yep. it's and more like unlike... a rook, right? Eh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah, more yeah, rookish. Yeah. It, it could be a crown. It could be a rook. Whatever you know. It's it. But at the end of the day, like he's kingly, and unlike the actual king named character in the series, he has conquers hockey. I would imagine, right? Because like everybody has conquered. All the Gorsei have conquers hockey, right? Yeah. People are saying it's yeah. not confirmed yet. They're like, oh, only Warcody has it, but I mean, it's like the same black lightning that everybody else had when they came down here and, you know, are doing things. I like to think they all have it. It would be weird yeah. if number three has it. He's number three, number right? One. Jupiter's number one. Yeah, yeah, Jupiter's number one. Warcody is number three. Yeah, three. Four. No. Four. No, Wait. no, he's three. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. J Jupiter's Wait, one. Bokotsu's two. Three is Warkity, four is Itsumari, and five is Saturn. No, wait, Mars is three. Right? Is he? All right, here, I'm, I'm going to go back. Wait. I'm just going to check. Yeah. What is yeah, it? One, check. 11, 10? 11, 10. Oh, let's see. Yeah. 
Uh, nope. Warkity's three. Warkity's three? Yeah. Ew. Yeah, Wait, Warkity's number four? three. Itsumare is four? Yeah. What? Yeah, you so laser Sandworm, beam Bakotsu, Warkuri, Itsumare, and then Saturn, the little brother in the middle. The one that we said was a the, gives us the joy of beam blast. Like, do you think all of them could do the beam blast? If it's a magic sigil, then yeah, I I I, I think so. If it's if okay, it's what the if it's form. Not? Well, what if it's not? What if it's then like, just it, they all just can open their mouth and have burrow breaths. Uh, I'd rather them have something unique. Like I think Jupiter yeah. having the the vortex here instead of that would be nice. It's a good trade off. I guess so. I guess so. They need to combo their moves. You know, like like Venus freezes everybody. He, he this uh, Jupiter brings them all into one place. He eats them. He is the target now. And he yeah. can regenerate, but nobody inside him can. Yeah, they just blast when, him away. Yeah, yeah, that's when, uh, because he's long, so that's when. Oh, ooh, no. ooh, imagine, and then Saturn does like the little poison balls, and then Jupiter also swallows those as well. So it's like a gas chamber inside of his body. Okay, you went in a better direction. I think we should stay there because uh, I was imagining we combine the two attacks debut here, where Mars vomits Boro breath, and it goes straight into his like oh yeah <laughs> yeah yeah I, I, I see what you're doing <laughs> yeah 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 then i wanted to stop myself but i had to explain it because you explained yours so uh so I have regrets luffy's out of gear fifth he gets hakarl which is oh, uh you know my God. a nice what's up <laughs> just the fermented shark thing we were laughing about that the yesterday. shark thing's cool yeah yeah someone said hot take barracuda is really good no, I agree. Yeah, I saw that. Uh, okay, yeah, yeah. I've never tried it. Now I want to. Yeah, Damn. Barracuda, Red Snapper, amazing. Shark, I, I don't know. I've never had shark before, but Luffy, it, it looks like he likes it, but he just doesn't like the smell of it. Yeah, yeah. Maybe that's important, though. Maybe, yeah, like, so Brody because says he didn't it get the stinks, smell. But it stinks, but it's tasty. And then Luffy does yeah. say that hits the spot. Which is interesting, because most of taste is smell, interestingly enough. Imagine if Luffy didn't have a nose, though. Yeah, but maybe it not being a good smell is why he didn't jump back into Gear 5. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's not like the perfect food for him. Which yeah. also, the Hakaro thing. They said it's a traditional dif dish from Elbath. I mean, is it just like a regular dish? Or are we talking about like traditional, like how they have the Winter Solstice Festival, you know? Like, well, like it at is... this point, I try to tie everything back to like the Sun God or Joy Boy now. Yeah. It is fermented, which means it's prepared, like yeah, like dry aged steak that people hold for like forty days, or or kimchi, like it's, it's yeah. like kimchi. Kimchi is pretty. I'm not gonna say holy. I'm not gonna put that into someone else's culture, but I it, hate kimchi. A lot of eight. I don't like kimchi either. My wife likes it. I, I I I can eat some kimchi, but like some kimchi just doesn't work with me. Um, but across a lot of Asian countries, I mean European countries, their fermentation is alcohol. But um, I feel like there's dishes like in Bangladesh, it's achar that's fermented like fruits. And then Japan has fermented something. And then Soy. Korea has, yeah. And then Korea has uh, kimchi. China has another, fer they ferment everything, I think, in China. So that's different. Yeah. But, uh, China's all about the fermentation. But yeah, yeah I mean, shark meat's pretty cool. Eggs. Yeah, 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 yeah. Eggs, I mean, I mean, sharks is interesting. Definitely yeah. Interesting. It's, I wonder if there's like some racism in there, you know, like, oh, those shark people, man. Yeah, but, um, we also, talked like, about that on the stream, but you yeah. brought up a really interesting point. Uh, like the racism things aside, that's a whole separate discussion. It's like a gag more than anything. I was mind blown about that thing you said about Roger. Yeah, Roger. Uh, in in the Vivri card that Oda wrote out, Roger's favorite food is uh, shark meat. So I feel like that it, has to mean something. Yeah, it, I feel like it means something. Um, whether or not like this ties in directly to Roger, I don't know. But I think this does tie into Joy Boy, though. I, I feel like if we go to the Void Century and Joy Boy's eating something, he's going to be like, wow, this is delicious. It could even be a gag. Like, what if what if Joy Boy loves shark meat, but the giants just keep on fermenting it? And then he's like, he's like, guys, this smells awful, but I love it, though. Like, stop doing this. It could be like a good old meme, you know? Oh, okay. It, I think it's a meme, but you know, it's it's yeah. I th I think it could be a really good plot point. It's like a small thing. We'll laugh at it. 
Give give Joy Boy some personality. Make the Giants seem as dumb as they're supposed to be. Because, you know, they're kind of brutes. They don't really think things through that often. Saul calls them savages. That could be it. I'm going to tell you something off stream. I was just now, I was trying to think of a way to cryptically tell you it. But something that you just said just now sparked, like, an explosion in my, uh, one of my theories that I told you last year. Oh my god, wait a second. I think, okay, okay, let's, whoo, sorry, what, well, I'm sorry. It's I the had gags. Uh, so, Warcody's is charging at them. Oh, uh, the best part of the chapter. Yeah, best part. Luffy uses gear third red rock, hits him dead in the head, and then boom, Luffy's hand hurts. Yep, How hard yep. is this guy's skin? How hard is that boar hide? And it's impressive, man. It is. It is. I would imagine that means that the black marking... Like, we didn't know the context of these black markings, but I think now, the more and more I think about it, it's akin to Gear 4 Luffy, where that is hockey. I think we now have two parts in the story where... At least the stream told me this is the only other time. There could be more times. The Katakuri moment, right? The Katakuri moment, chapter 887, I believe, or 883. It was one of those. I think it's 883. Yeah, 883. Luffy, it's in two different panels back to back, though, where Luffy clashes with Katakuri's armament, and he says there's levels to this shit. And so he goes back. His hands are swollen in armor mock. He's blowing on them. Hoo-hoo. And it's very similar to this, except this is, like, beyond that. He's gear three, uh, like, basically red rock, elephant gun, whatever. Uh, big fist, armor mahaki, and it's on fire, which is odd for Luffy because and he's Rio. rubber. Yeah, yeah. It's, and, and Rio. Yeah, exactly. And so this is, like, really interesting, but it seemed like Katakuri was able to get that same effect. So the minimum I think we can gather is that Warkuri has that passive armor mount hockey on his head but i wish i wish you know when when luffy was like ow my hands they hurt what is this katakuri opened his mouth and said hey your hands hurt because i have armor oh no hockey. i know i know where this is going because <laughs> warkuri is the exact opposite huh <laughs> yeah. instead of warkuri saying anything not ow ooh, that you know oh nice try no, dude. He <laughs> can we have a moment of silence and join Warkerty? Just like let's just like not say anything for like a solid ten seconds because that is what Warkerty does here. You see that, guys? That's us tanking a red rock. You know that is what we say after did... we tank a really powerful attack. Did you Nothing. hear the stare? Silence. Did you hear my stare? Because he his stare is audible. In the, it has an SFX. Oh, yeah, his stare is <laughs> audible. It's crazy, man. Like, I, I don't I know to... what's up with them. Like, I mean, of course he tanked it, but if you want to, like, meme about it, if you want to joke about it, you could say that Luffy just lobotomized them, you know? He gave him a concussion. To, like, it could be like Bluno. Remember Bluno? It was like, oh, Tekai. And then he tanks the blow, and then he smiles, and then two seconds later, he passes out. What if we yeah. come into the next chapter, and Warkity, like, is on the floor? <laughs> he's just, he's yeah. just gone. Like, That's like, goofy. or... Luno tanked Sandy's kick, and he was like, oh my god, he almost broke my tech guy. That's crazy, right? There's dialogue. We were talking about this on stream, where it's like, this is one of the first, like, actual feats against Luffy. This is the first time he's gotten hurt, technically, if you can call it that. Because, like, Luffy hurt himself on them. And, and he doesn't even, like do anything about this this is a success you know what's five funny? gorsays here they have not heard him yet this is the first time and he's just silent through it we can't even give him the aesthetic like like the image w there like his image doesn't get better because he doesn't say anything we don't even know if he knows what's happening like i i have a couple of different thoughts with this the, the first one is that maybe like deep down he had ptsd from joy boy he's like oh my yeah. god fire you know because loopy when he's in gear fifth, he doesn't use any fire-based attacks like Red Rock. I, I feel like that's going to be his next upgrade, like Luffy using gear f um, gear fifth with fire attacks. I think that's like the next level that Luffy's going to hit. So yeah. maybe Warkin is going through some PTSD right now. You know, he's thinking of flashbacks, thinking of how this guy could get stronger. But also, there's another way we could think about it too. Mm -hmm. I blanked. Go for it. What do you have? Oh. 
No, I'll I come back to say, it. I was hoping that yeah. I could like think of it during like the whole like build up, but I was like, no, I forgot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The I'll PTSD part, like that, that is the one copium I think is fair. We talked again. We talked about this with Zone, and where it's like they, like they, maybe their poor performance is because they're like it's like a Kainu and the samurai. Yeah. For some reason, the guy is terrified. We don't know why, but, like, we can assume, like, maybe he fought Odin and Odin scared him shitless. Like, maybe. And reasonably, if these Gorseis are from Joy Boy's era and they saw him, maybe they were just apprentices. Maybe they weren't even the Gorsei. Maybe they heard stories about how their forefathers were slapped across this field, turned into pizza, spun around, thrown into the water, whatever, with jump roped. Right? Like, we talked about this. Like, Kaido looks at another jump rope. He probably bans jump rope. Kaido starts another society. He's banning swordsmanship, karate, and jump roping. Those kids can no longer jump rope. Why? Because he just sees himself getting jump At that roped. point, just cut off their hands. Yeah, exactly. And that's probably what we're getting from the Gorosei. They're so oppressive because they're so traumatized about how much of a meme Joy Boy turned them into. And this is just, like, another example. He can't even... He's not even conscious in his one W. Like, this is the type of thing that happens, like, in Destiny Raid or, like, some kind of crazy game where you, you go... You, you log in on Discord. Yo, homie, I just damaged the final boss because Saturn's been here for, like, 30 chapters. Has not touched him. Saturn's like, I I, I think... I think Vegapunk's killed. Kizaru stabbed him. He didn't even know if he did it. This is definitely one of the things that you get on the phone call with your boys and you're just like, bro, I did it. I scratched the boss. I did you it. But what? no, he's just sitting there like, oh. Okay, I remember oh, what I was no. going to say now. I was about to say that this is actually very in line with Warkity and how he's performed so far. Because go back to chapter 1110 where he first transforms and we see, you know, Saturn. We, we see like everybody doing their thing, right? You have yeah. to remember, Warkuri was in the background, no dialogue, just... <laughs> and we we were joking, because we were like, oh, like, is he lobotomized? Like, what is, is, he, yeah. is he, you know, is he gone? Like, what, what's happening here? I think it's the same thing. I, I think it is just par for the course with Warkuri. Or we could go back to the whole telekinesis thing, and he's talking to the other Gorosei. I'd like that, but also, maybe it's like the Lunarians where when their flame is on their defense is highest so when his mouth is shut his defense oh, is highest yeah oh, oh or maybe when he yeah or maybe when he just doesn't move he's just like tekai. he freezes yeah, yeah it's his version of tekai. tekai yeah 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 oh the silence the silent bird no oh, damn what the silent mountain tekai hey, oh he can be like those chinese monks where like they take a bat and like hit you in the balls but yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he's like, "But I am standing still. <laughs> I, I, I have. I, I focus my chi on that one on my on my on my balls. I, I survived. I swear that's exactly what I was thinking. But my brain went to Kung Fu Panda, and I was trying to think which one was the silent one. Like, was it Cricket? Like, oh no, praying no. mantis. Silent. Mantis talks a lot. Ah, oh, damn it. They yeah, all talk but like a lot. I was trying to. I was trying to be racist and try to choose one of the animals and say they're silent. Man, Kung Fu but... Panda Four sucks, bro. I never watched it. Don't watch is it, it that man. Bad? It's Wait. I hate Aquafina, bro. I don't know what it is. <laughs> I hate Aquafina. I didn't know she was in the franchise. She's like the main character, dude, in, in Kung Fu Panda oh. Four. Yeah. Oh, iguana, the the chameleon thing. Uh, I forgot what she is. I, I I try to erase it from my memory. Like she turns into the uh Thai Thailon or whatever. That's what it is, right? I'm pretty sure she's a. That makes sense then. I mean, she kind of is a chameleon in acting, right? She kind of plays all these random characters. Zen. Zen. Ooh, Zen, my son? Z-H-E-N. That's just racist spelling. That's not a real name. <laughs> I've never seen Z. -E Zen is a fox. She's the fox. There we go. I forgot oh. what it, you, you said lizard. And I, I start picturing a lizard person. I was like, oh, damn. Yeah, uh, so Zen is Aquafina. And if you guys don't know who Aquafina is... You know, I, I can say it. I'm Asian, too. She's Asian. I don't like her voice, bro. She has, like, this... Damn. She... I don't know. It, it makes me want to scratch my ears. It's like a poo. It, it's it's like a poo showing up on scene. I, I can't handle... But not the, the dub. Not the dub of poo. We... we uh, uh, Brad Mukai, my my homie who voices a poo in the dub, he, he, makes, he makes a poo cool. But yeah. But would you say if you were in a room and you had two people shouting at you, one was Aquafina, Aquafina, and the other one is Warkery. 
Conqueror's Hockey! Which one would you, which one would you choose to be in? Which one's more damaging, actually? Aquafina. I think Aquafina's more <laughs> damaging. I think Aquafina damages like the the mind, the mental. Dang, dude, that's you need a meat canyon uh, depiction of what your your experience right now. <laughs> I I've seen a lot of movies that Aquafina's been in. I've seen I've seen some TV shows with Aquafina, and every single time, I'm I'm not even joking. She ruins it for me. I I can't Dang. handle it, dude. I really Dang. can't. And then I, I, I saw one post where people were like, oh, like, why don't people like Aquafina? They're just racist because they don't want Asians in Hollywood. And it's like, no, no, that's not it. No, it, it's not the Asian thing. I, I, I swear to God, please just get her out of here. man. Oh, man, I can't do it. I mean, I, I bet I bet people feel the same way about me. Like, oh, you know, just yeah, some yeah, people yeah. just don't like certain voices. Right. I'm sure people yeah. hate me. People hate you. Uh -huh. I hate Aquafina. Uh, that's all it is. Okay. She, yeah, she's probably yeah. a really lovely person. I just, I just can't handle the voice. I I, I can't. Yeah. Dang. I've seen co That's negative comments Fino about, rant. like, listening to me, but I haven't, like, across the spectrum, I haven't seen someone say, like, damn, I can't listen to that Psy guy, you know? Yeah, there was one episode where I used, like, a lot of Southern slang, like, a, like American slang, like hullabaloo and stuff like that, and uh -huh. some guy really hated it. So, some guy was just really? so upset. Yeah, it was funny. Dang, what they say, like, stay in your lane. Oh, wait, you can't drive, loser. No, no, like, <laughs> I, I forgot what they said. It's been so long. I just remember I was like, I was like, dang, dude, they, they don't like the word hullabaloo. That's crazy, <laughs> yeah, man. It's a, a weird word to, like, get, get triggered by. Yeah, it's yeah, It's like a yeah. word that your, like, dad said probably, and they, not your dad, their dad. Yeah, they probably, like, beat them, and they're like, how, how do you like this hullabaloo, and just start beating <laughs> them, yeah. I probably, like, re-trigger, like, all their bad memories. I think that's it. Yeah, I was, hullabaloo that's is such I a good word. I was like, no, what if we got it right? And he's like, that was his nickname growing up. And it's like a super traumatic thing. And we're just laughing about it on camera. Hey, hey, if they were <laughs> brave enough to like complain like publicly, I'm brave enough to like <laughs> make fun of them publicly. That's fine. All right. Fair enough. Cheers to fair that. Fair enough. Cheers to that. Uh, so end of the chapter now. Saturn's popping up in front of Nami's group. Venus is in front of Bonnie. We already talked about the, the Venus stuff. We don't have to go back to that. Uh, but yeah. Yeah. Saturn, though, versus the Straw Hats. We got Usopp, Nami, Brook, Chopper, Robin with Zoro and Jimbe on the way. Dude, you know, Sanji, I think is great. You know, Sanji showing up as backup on the, the Fabrio phase, huge. But if, dude, Zoro and Jimbe, two for one? Oh, my God. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I, Saturn's only yeah. hope is that Zoro's out of commission. Yeah, that, that's Saturn's only hope is that Zoro's out of commission. But even then, Jimbe is at full strength. <laughs> Jimbe yeah. has done nothing in this arc other than move boxes and what, like use a little blast against Rob Lucci. Yeah, no, J Jimbe is at full strength. Uh, we have a lot of straw hats here. And yeah. I, I think, uh, you know, I, I feel really confident coming into this fight. I, I don't know if I'm just crazy, but, you know, five straw hats plus Zoro and Jimbe. I, dude yeah i almost wonder I what good. saturn's doing here like the, i that's uh, like because because earlier you talked about like okay he's de being delegated out to stop the thousand sunny which implies the rest which is like in terms of like okay we're gonna stop the giant ship that implies giants and the people on the fabio phase that we've seen they have reports of them like saturn saw them if they're talking at all they're you know when mars did the whole call thing i'm sure he gave the update too hey hey saturn they're escaping i've got to take care of the broadcast you have to climb your ass up here and deal with the rest of them oh and by the way one of those rest of them is rora noah zoro and, and it's son like, of the sea jimbe <laughs> and then it's like bro what like Why i me, called dude? your asses in for gear five luffy and i got clowned on by kuma by the black Bear pirates by luffy sanji uh, frank please sanji frank let's throw that in. please and kizaru we don't know where that man is he's tired i don't know let him sleep it's fine now I have to fight those dudes, and it's like, oh my and God. and the thing is, even... like, even though we can't damage Saturn, I think we could still knock him back. Like, and and the thing is, he's on the clouds. Like, if we knock him back, he falls off the island. He's like the he's like what Zoro wishes he could spar against on the daily. Eight legs. Oh my God. Yeah, eight legs, That's nine crazy. sword style. You know, he regenerates. Like, oh my God. Yeah. What a, what Who's a great punching bag. A demon of hell. Yeah, like, and Zora has this weird, weird, like, fetish of being more demonic and more hellish as he goes on the series. So he looks at the spider. So, it's like, you trying to challenge me? Saturn versus seven straw hats. 
I don't think he's winning. You know, seven straw hats <laughs> versus Saturn. I don't think Saturn's winning. But here's the thing. I think that Saturn... Okay, I'm, I'm going to throw some headcanon your way. What if he realizes that he can't actually beat all of them? So instead, he destroys the Thousand Sunny. <laughs> Maybe this is it. Because because if, if you look at the panel where Saturn's climbing up, climbing up, you see the Thousand Sunny right there. Boom. One hit. Done. I, I don't know. Maybe that's it. And then imagine the Sunny, the Sunny Go, you know, figurehead falls down. Luffy looks up where the sun is usually at. And instead he sees the thousand sunny blocking out the sun. And it's ironic because obviously it's casting a shadow, but it's also a sun. But yeah, I so, think it'd be nice. I, Saturn, I please do it. You, Destroy the thousand I, sunny, buddy. I'm not going to say that the story so far has been illogical, but you and I have pointed out there's some goofy logical choices in here. Maybe we don't have all the info yet. Oda's going to cook. But some of the things we just kind of gl glaze by. All right, fine. This is cool. Cool scene. Whatever. We're bouncing around. It doesn't matter. It's not a Luffy scene. Whatever. What you just said, right? Him targeting the ship just sounded so logical that it doesn't... I don't think it's going to happen. For one, he just... He it's couldn't, too logical. If this, was, if this was like another series, right? What would have actually happened here was when Saturn climbed over, he would have already been over the Thousand Sunny and already like damaging it and destroying it. Instead, Oda positioned him out. Here's what he wants and here's where he came out. And it's like... And yeah, no one here can stop him, right? But like in this panel... Chopper can maybe, but the other problem is like Saturn went into this weird lobotomized mode, remember? And now his pincers are also venomous. So technically they have to fight him without touching. The only people who can, I think, do that is like Brooke for a little bit, Jinbei and Zoro, right? And well, Nami Zoro's out of with commission. Zeus and Usopp too. But not like in a prolonged way. You oh, know what I mean? oh, yeah, like, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Fair, fair. Yeah, fair. like they can get off one fight, but uh, one attack, but it's not a fight at that point. It's just Saturn tanking it and then walking up to them. And Chopper can't wrestle them. Oh, your camera turned off. Damn. Oh, no. no. Is it, oh, it's dead. No. No. All right. We'll, 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 click, we'll quickly wrap this up. Okay, okay. <laughs> it would be funny if you just mouthed, <laughs> you just recorded a separate thing where you're just like, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I'll probably put like a picture here or something. We'll see. We'll see. Yeah, yeah. But so, so like basically, what I was saying is that this the Saturn thing is really interesting, and I don't know what's coming out of it, other than that he's in he's like in the least uh, fortunate situation, I think, of all the uh, the the people, right? Because like Luffy's trying to run away, like you said. But, like, he's trying to do something that they need to stop. And so I think that Zoro and Jinbei are going to stop them. I, I'm, or or maybe this is where the Thousand Sunny gets damaged a little bit. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. Um. <sighs> one takeaway we can say, though, is uh, Chopper, Usopp, Nami. Well, we knew about Chopper. Chopper, Nami, they're all Vice Admiral rank. Yeah, I would say so. I mean, at this point, seeing how the Vice Admirals performed, yeah, of course. It would almost be but, an insult to say any Straw Hat isn't Vice Admiral rank. Except for maybe Usopp, I don't know. Uh, Usopp and, is uh, still up in the air. I need I need him to get an upgrade. Please, no, Usopp. No, but it'll be confirmed in next chapter. I'm 100%. Because if oh, he yeah, stares I mean, yeah. at Saturn and doesn't explode, we got a hard set cannon by Saturn's Gorosei standards. These guys, they're Vice Admiral. Either they're going to explode or maybe Saturn will just lock him down with his eye powers. True. There's the lockdown. You're yeah, there's right. the lockdown. And that worked on Sanji. Lockdown worked on Sanji. Damn, you're right. No, wait. And Sanji, he what? The eye powers even hurt Sanji too. It hit him and made Sanji bleed. So it's a, it's yeah. kind of interesting. Yeah, but then he didn't use it on the Blackbeard Pirates, which, you know, that's a good segue for the last, last maybe, part. If we maybe want to Saturn about. forgot he had eyes. I wouldn't put it past him. Let's be honest. He has telepathy now. He has his friends. Who needs eyes? He has yeah. eight legs and and a. I hope he webbed up here. I, that, that's I hope he's webbed. Wish. All right. So last part. I, Marcus Mars, yeah. Labo phase, uh, Punk Hazard, uh, Gurgle Gurgle, Blop Blop, Ploop Ploop. What mm -hmm. do you think this is? Um, I think we ran down a bunch of ideas, or or, or the main ones yesterday. And then we had like a, I think a novel idea. I, I don't think we, outside of our conversation, anyone really brought this up. So 
I think the most l- normal sane take is this Denden Mushi is just projecting something onto the screen. So he, maybe Mars is looking at the feed, and right now Vegapunk is doing something. There's a minute left, or maybe there's something that the the Denden Mushi is getting the information from that is a little scary because Mars has this weird countenance on him. He does seem a little bit more nonchalant. What's interesting is we're in punk records. We see the access door. It's all blacked out in the back, which is odd. We have never been here before, so we don't know what this room is like. But it's weird because, like, is this Den Den Mushi not guarded? Like, why is he able to just walk up? And is it this easy? Is he just, he destroys it? Because if it is that easy, then I see a world where he ends up letting the message play out. Kind of like in Ohara, that Clover went through his speech, went through his speech. And then once it got too far with the Ancient Kingdom name, they shot him. They told, they ordered him to die, right? So I could see him, if he's confident he could turn off the thing just with this, this Den Den Mushi. I could see the speech going on, but... There's a few other things. I think a few people are like, hmm, maybe maybe there's something else. Maybe the brain is something else. Maybe Stella's still alive. Or maybe there is there is a guard up here. Maybe it's the S. Weevil, S. S. like, uh, uh, you know, Whitebeard, whatever. Like, there's there's clones the of The seventh body. Here. I've seen, so, you know, we, we've talked about there being, like, another Vegapunk body. This no, could be, like, the perfect body. But somebody on Twitter said, yo, the seven kid. It's going to be Eustace Kid in there. Vegapunk pride. You know, that like, would be th- interesting. Th- wait, imagine if this I like that. Yeah, I liked it, but I don't agree with it. Wait, know? wait, wait, wait. Hear me out. So the theory that Kid is related to Vegapunk and, you know, because of the 07 thing. What if yeah. that is actually valid? And you're right. You know, I mean, I guess we're both right. Where When they die, they go to the cloud. Imagine mm-hmm. if Kid actually died to Shanks on Elbaf. And then what happened oh. is Kid's consciousness got sent back here to Punk Records, and they're cooking up the the new Kid body. I don't like what you just did there because I just said I don't agree with the theory, but that would be that would be so sick. If that was the case, yes, dying is the way you sync up, which wouldn't be an issue because they or grow organs if some of that's cybernetic. It doesn't matter for the satellites, but like it would be a fail safe for something like the Stella and Kid, which is why he could be as reckless as he is. That would be kind yep, of Kid crazy. actually dies and then he comes back over here. This is his new body. And then he's the one who stops Mars for like the 60 second. Dude, that would be kind of fire. Used this kid's new body. See, okay. I, I, some people might call me out on it because I was really mean about that theory. Not mean. I wasn't mean about the theory or the theorist. I just memed on it. I was like, yeah, Vega Punk stupidity. That's kid. Like, I was tweeting that and I doubled down on it. But when uh, I saw the uh, few tweets on it and I liked them, I liked them, even though I made fun of them. I like the idea and I like the tenacity that people have behind the idea. It feels it feels low key like my Bogart agenda, but like now you saying what you just said, oh man, I feel like it's rude to call it like the Bogart agenda. This is kind of hot. This is kind of hot fire right now. Ooh, but I will say I like I like okay. Truthfully, I don't think that's gonna be the play. But I liked our other idea, but I also feel like it's it's not it's not high probability. If anything, it's less or equal probability of the kid thing. The gurgle gurgle thing that, you know, you were saying, like, what if it's the coffee machine? What if Stella's just up here? Right. Yeah. Like uh, that was funny. But like the gurgle gurgle being caribou, which was like a hive mind idea that throughout the community Caribou was always used as a plot device to protect punk records, to absorb it. Whatever the ending was, some people were like, okay, I, how do we get punk records off? And I I guarantee you, people have thought about Caribou taking up punk records. We don't know in which context or how. It was just that that would be the case. And the interesting part is he's in a prime position to do that, considering he had Van Auger. And he, Caribou's the character who overhears everything. So who's to say he didn't... He over. He wasn't able to overhear that this punk records has like the brain in it when Van Auger's like doubting him in his capacity to be an asset to Blackbeard. Caribou offers like, hey, I could steal the brain. I bet that would be really useful for you guys or something. And so then Van Auger, who we know can't jump 
off the island can probably jump up here in a in, without anybody noticing and it could be that he's seeing that the black rear pirates are up here it could be that i like that idea that's a version of the thing like do i think that's gonna happen maybe not do i like the idea yeah the kid idea do i think it's gonna happen no do i like the idea no but am i do i think it's kind of cracked a little bit yeah you know so we could be anywhere with this with these last few panels i kind of like the way oda ended it but damn so, i have no idea where we're gonna go with it the options right now coming in at number one use this captain kid clone coming in at number two <laughs> no not really not really use this captain kid clone number two giant brain three new seraphim um four, four is caribou just looking. Or yeah, five, or yeah, like, five looking. I put five looking. Yeah, five is just like, it's not like, the, like he, what he's looking at is just him being serious and looking at what's being projected right now. Like it could just be yeah. nothing. You know? But the only reason I don't like that is that that would mean that the broadcast would be ended. Un unless like Mars gets curious and he's like, okay, I actually want to see what Vegapunk has. Yeah. Or, which... or this could be like, um, ooh, this could be like one of those uh, serial killer movies where... All of the Gora say, they're like, Mars, why didn't you stop the signal? You're in the room. And then Mars is like, my hands are tied. And then we get his POV, and it's a screen. And it says, if you kill the Denden Mushi, um, something else will happen. You know, like, oh, like, we'll kill your family. I don't, I don't know. Oh. <laughs> Could be something like that. I was, That'd be cool. I was confused where the serial kill part was going, but then you you locked me in. It's like more not the serial, like Saw, right? Like the, not yeah. Saw, like... Um, uh, saw, yeah, I yeah, mean, saw. Scream. Like, uh, it's a lot of movies that, and serial killers like do the, that. The game one, yeah, like the serial, yeah. yeah, like it's like the weird ransom, but it's not ransom, it's like a, a game. Yeah. Why aren't you and, doing this? It's because something else will happen. You don't understand. Yeah. If you do, if you destroy this Den Den Mushi, then... Uh, the revolutionaries will uh, expose, ex like maybe it ties to dragon, you know? Like if you get the signal that the Denden Mushi cuts out, like, cause that, that could be, because a lot of people think that the Denden Mushi signal could be broadcasted from Kamabaka Queendom, right? It yeah. could also be like, hey, there's going to be a broadcast going out. If on Ooh. the off chance it gets cut off, do this. And oh. that's when dragon comes Or. Out. What if this Denden Mushi is hooked up to like a bunch of uh, bombs? Like if you destroy the Denden Mushi, you're sacrificing yourself. And then it's a test of faith. Mars has to kill himself to stop the broadcast. And then it's like he's weighing it. He's, he's weighing like the loyalty to Emu and like, you know, whether or not this message should go out. And they're like, wait, Mars, why didn't you do it? He's like, if I do it, it's going to blow up and it's going to destroy the entire Labo phase. Like imagine that. Oh, Labo phase. Yeah, yeah like it destroys yeah. the entire Labo phase. Everything comes crashing down. It'll probably, you know, quote, kill Mars. It'll hurt the rest of the Gorsei. Like, so he has to weigh that. Mm. I think that'd be pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, so, it wouldn't explain the Gurgle Gurgle. Oh, what if the Gurgle Gurgle is like, um, it's like the, the Dyna eggs from uh, Film Z. Because mm. those were in like little test tubes. And then if you yeah. break them out and expose it to air, it explodes. Yeah, yeah. That could be like Dyna, like those things were like... They were multifaceted. They were extremely volatile energy sources, but they were also seen as like a fountain of youth type of thing. That's why the Celestial Dragons wanted them. They yeah. were one of those things that's like kind of like the Philosopher's Stones. Uh, they, there's a few of them, but yeah, Dyna Egg was definitely something that Oda... Dang, Dyna Egg. That's not bad. Yeah, Dyna Egg being connected here. I mean, there's a the whole egg motif, but then also Vegapunk, also those test tubes. Who's making those test tubes? Who's handling... If any... If... if Oda wanted to bring that concept into the canon story, and if someone were to be handling that, it would be Vegapunk, right? And not to mention, um, people were already saying that Red King, his right arm is kind of like Zephyr, but to like a, a smaller, a smaller Zephyr. Oh, true, 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 true. Also, wasn't the okay? Here's a here. I mean, this is like I feel like this is a fever dream, and I know your camera's dead, but it's a, I, f I feel like I only remember this thing every once in a while, and every time I remember, I'm like, damn it, why did I bring it up with Sai? It was in Film Z promo that kid with the with like the like arm thing like he was getting experimented on too. Was that supposed to be a smiles or was that something else? Because I feel like they I feel like from memory it was like it was kind of it felt like Naruto. It felt like Naruto's Karama rather than like like oh like, you're talking about um uh that, his name starts with a G. One yeah you know he's, he's in the Marines. Marine Growl is is that his name? All Hunt Grout. That's his name. 
grout? Yeah, like grout, like a... Like filler in the ground? Yeah, like filler in the ground, grout. Gotcha. All yeah. hunt grout. He's a marine That's... captain, worked under al Yeah, I, I think this is a Film Z promo. Yeah, I think it was Film Z promo. Um, marine rookie arc? No, maybe oh. not. I think this maybe is just, just filler. Like filler. Yeah, this huh. is actually just filler. But okay, the point is that like the his arm thing. I don't know why I was just thinking about. Oh, that. never mind. No, 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 no. He's a, he's stampede filler. He's stampede filler. Stan oh, stampede. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah I guess. So he actually fought against people who were going to the pirate festival. Yeah. He captured he captured pirates going to the pirate festival, Delta Island. So yeah, he's yeah. he's stampede filler. Mm, so that means Oda had some a little bit more touchy touch with this and mm -hmm. mm -hmm. round yeah like that i don't know like when we it's like it's kind of like that pilot stuff where it's like oda had magic in the pilot now we're getting magic and it's like some of these periphery periphery things they feel like they're meaning more things now and this is still one of those mystery ones a lot of people bring up it's like this is like a smile fruit but it also has the will in it it feels like maybe this was like go in a different direction i don't know and maybe like because stampede uh, i guess stampede was laugh tale so dang i thought it was uh uh z if it was z dina egg that would make more sense as a connection damn there's so much here bro there's so much yeah i can't wait i and that's what i think my favorite chapters are always the ones that are like huh but i just hope that this isn't there's no way it could be treated but like we need I think I'll be mad if the legendary Iron Giant does nothing next chapter too. <laughs> He's not going to, bro. Uh, I don't give it like two chap. I, I feel like the ancient giant will do something when the message is being played. So I, yeah. I, I don't think it's gonna happen next chapter, but the chapter after, I think I could see him doing something. But yeah, we'll see. I think we like, shall I see. Think, I think the weird part is like, because uh, chapter eleven eleven ended the break or started the break month. Uh, and it ended off as like whoa i don't know where this is going anymore yeah what's happening and then this chapter ended in the same way but it completely disregarded what i was just excited about and at the end of chapter 11 i was like oh my god i spent a month thinking about this legendary iron giant sort of i'm exaggerating but then now i'm like maybe maybe i shouldn't be excited about this like message thing and the next chapter has nothing to do with it but who knows who knows i doubt it because we have a minute left i doubt the minute's over by next chapter yes yeah okay i think right. next Last chapter page. we'll play out the whole minute and then uh what's gonna happen is uh, we might get like a weird you know 10 second 20 second 5 second 4 3 2 1 and then we end the chapter on zero i could see that oh that'd be pretty cool that'd be a good cliffhanger wait what's okay up? okay I, this this probably be the last thing to say because we can keep on cooking but next chapter what number is it uh 11 13. now let me hit you with something I think we all, all of everybody in the community, we were making bets on a specific chapter. First, first mistake, chapter 1000. We thought that that was drag or 1100. We thought that was Dragon's chapter. Then we were thinking, okay, 1111 is going to be Zoro's chapter. But what if the 1113, mm. so Zoro, the three slashes, we saw the mark on Luchi. Oda was telling us next week is Zoro's hey, chapter. Hey, I'm down for it. I think next chapter. Uh, so. I've talked about this before, but um, I think next chapter we could see Venus and Saturn attack the Straw Hats. But what happens is Zoro and Sanji get they they save their respective groups and they come in with this amazing double page spread. Ooh, yeah, you know how like, like um, mirrored? so you know how like a uh, Zoro and King and Sanji and Queen like when they first like started their fight, they came in yeah. double page spread, boom boom. I think we're gonna get the same thing here, but for the Gorosei. But like, but they're so separated, so it's gonna be like a mirrored attack. But oh yeah, 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 mirrored attack. Like, uh, what, what? When? When else did Oda do this? Um, for Kuro and Django. Damn, should, that's throwback. Yeah, throwback. Okay. He did both of their defeats in the same thing. Luffy lands uh, his bell. Usopp lands his uh, slingshot. Zero cuts the branch. Uh, or yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. I, I feel like uh, I feel like that's what we could get. Double page spread. Like... Zoro Sanji. Boom. I... I didn't know you roll like that. You're a double spread historian. That was kind of. <laughs> I, I like the double spreads, man. Spread them that cheeks. That was kind of. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Well, that's a great. That's a great word to end on. All right.
Yeah, yeah. Speaking of cheeks, guys. Speaking of make... cheeks, uh, we're going to turn the other cheek and head out of here. Smile cheek to cheek yep. with your face cheeks. No break next week. Uh, we'll we'll be back. Thank Yay. you guys for checking out this full uh, length video. Hopefully you enjoyed Conquers it. Conquerors hockey. Conquerors hockey. <laughs>